On day one, I spawned in as a normal guy. No wait, I'm a Navy SEAL. Awesome, I'm a trained warrior. But wait, what's this? I looked closer and saw I barely had any hearts and no armor. I was just a recruit. It looks like I haven't even been trusted with a weapon. Bummer. I guess I better take a look around and see what I can find. I took a peek around the deck and saw that the ship was pretty empty. This was a huge ship. It was kind of eerie, nothing seemed to be going on. And as I looked around, I noticed there wasn't any land nearby either. What do I do now? Well, I'm a Navy SEAL. I should know how to swim, right? I walked over to the edge of the ship and jumped into the water. I swam around the anchor for a bit, but didn't see anything else around. Suddenly, I heard some movement in the water behind me, and I was attacked by a shark. Shiver me timber! It's a great life! The shark bit at my ankles as I furiously swam toward the anchor. I grabbed onto the chain and clambered up as the shark snapped furiously below. Soon, I reached the top deck. Yikes, I guess I'll be staying out of the water for the time being. Sometime later, the sun was beginning to set. As I watched the sunset, there was suddenly a huge explosion. Whoa, what was that? I headed off in the direction of the blast. As I moved across the ship, I saw there was a huge hole blown in the top of the deck. As I got closer, I saw it was filled with zombies who attacked. There were zombies on this ship? Things just got interesting. The zombies were determined to eat my brains, but I was actually well trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so I managed to fight them off. One of them also had dropped a stone sword, which I made quick use of. As the last zombie disappeared, I noticed it had dropped something. What's this? It looks like a flashlight. I can use this to navigate the inside of the ship. I settled myself down for the night and couldn't help but think, where did all the zombies come from? Did they used to be seals too? On day two, I felt like I had no choice but to start exploring the hole left behind from the explosion. I didn't love the idea of going into a hole that was full of zombies before, but what other choice did I have? It's pretty dark down here. I better use that flashlight. The flashlight let out a little bit of light and I set off into the darkness. As I walked the corridors, I couldn't help but get the feeling something was watching me. What's that? I looked toward one of the doors. I could have sworn I saw something. This place is giving me the creeps. I kept moving through the maze of tunnels when I heard a squeaking up ahead. Okay, I definitely heard something that time. I got a little closer and was attacked by a bunch of rats. These were no ordinary rats though. Their flesh was rotted and their eyes glowed with a red hue. I quickly took them out. I've got a bad feeling about this. I continued down the hallway, but could hear another sound up ahead. It sounded like some heavy thuds. Maybe some kind of machinery? I kept going when suddenly the source of the noise came to the light. It was a giant zombie. Uh-oh. The zombie hit me as I ran away. There's no way I could take this guy on. Just ahead, there were some open doors, and I quickly ran inside. As the zombie chased me, he ran into the wall, smacking his head. This is the exact situation where a brain comes in handy. He let out a low groan and stumbled away from me. That's when I noticed he dropped something. I picked it up. Whoa, night vision goggles. These could not have come at a better time. I was getting really tired of being surprised in the dark. After I put them on, the whole ship was lit up. Nothing is going to sneak up on me now. On day three, the zombie threat had left, so I decided to do some more exploring. My new night vision goggles had made things much easier. As I ran through the hallways, I tried to open different doors, but everything was locked. This is going to be a tough 100 days if I can't get into anything. I continued through the maze until finally I found a door that was open. When I entered the room, I saw it was full of storage. Amazing! I hope I can find some good loot in here. I began rummaging through the boxes and saw that there were a ton of building supplies. I kept looking and soon came across a whole stash of food. I can't believe my luck. All this food looks good to eat too. I stuffed my pockets full. Who knows if there was any other food aboard. I managed to find another container full as well. Soon I had gone through all of the boxes except for one big one. I jumped up and was surprised to see what was inside. Hey, who are you? Uh, you, you're not a zombie. No, and neither are you. Who are you? My name is Marcus, but my friends call me Switchblade. Well, they used to call me that, I suppose. Yeah, what's going on around here? All I know is there was some kind of zombie infection that spread through the whole ship. I got separated from another group of sailors who were headed for the racks. They might still be alive. We decided we'd go look for more survivors. But first, we needed to get to the flight deck and regroup. On days four to five, Switchblade and I had made it back to the top of the ship. Using the materials I had gathered in the supply room, I started putting together a simple base. Nowhere on the base was 100% safe, but at least here, we could be near the edge, and we knew zombies wouldn't be able to attack during the day. Once the tent was set up, I got to work on the inside, filling it with all of the crafting tables we need, along with some beds for us to sleep in for the night. As a final safety measure, I put up a fence across the ship, so that even at night, zombies wouldn't be able to sneak up on us. When it was all done, Switchblade came and took a look. Nice work, Zozo. This base is top notch. With the base complete, I headed over to the crafting table and made a set of stone tools. I couldn't get through any of the doors, but maybe with some tools I could just break through the walls. With my new set of stone tools, I headed over to the ship wall and tried swinging my pickaxe. Huh, not even a dent. I tried a few surfaces, but no luck. At the very least, I now had some tools in case of an emergency. That night, I headed outside with my goggles on to see if the zombies would give us any issues. Looks like they're keeping their distance. This should be a safe place for us to work out of.
On day six to eight, Switchblade met me inside the tent to discuss our next move. Well, it's not the most detailed map, but take a look at this. Switchblade threw the map up on the wall. He was right. It's a good thing you chose the military and not art school. This should give you an idea of how to get to the bunk area, where I believe the other sailors had headed. There's no guarantee anyone is there, but more sailors is an invaluable asset at this juncture. I agreed, and so I headed out of the tent and into the hole. Using Switchblade's map as a guide, I made my way down a corridor I didn't notice before. By following that, I came across a staircase that took me even deeper into the ship. I can't help but have a sinking feeling about this. I reached the bottom and started moving ahead through the darkness. I could hear some shuffling up ahead. There was a small group of cave spiders. Spiders, 12 o'clock! I charged forward with my sword in hand and started hacking away. The spiders managed to land a few hits, but it wasn't anything I could handle. Soon enough, the small group was all destroyed. Time to get to those sailors. I pushed just a little farther ahead and came across the door. I tried to push it open, but it didn't budge. I had no idea if zombies were nearby, so I gave the door a small tap. Psst. Hey, is anyone in there? No response. Maybe I was being too quiet. I raised my voice a little more. Can anyone hear me? Do you copy? Is there anyone inside? This time I thought I heard a little bit of movement inside, but nobody was responding. Looks like I've only got one more option. I started banging on the door. Hey, wake up! Your buddy Switchblade sent me! The door flew open. Man, have you lost your mind? Don't you know there's zombies around? I was trying to be quiet, but no one was answering. We thought you were a zombie trying to sniff us out. You wouldn't have been the first, you know. I get that. I'm sorry. So, who are you guys? We're from Switchblade's crew. I'm actually the first mate on the ship. I suppose I'm the acting commander of the ship as well. If you're the acting commander, that means something must have happened to the captain. I'm sorry for your loss. I am too, although I don't know if I would call it a loss. The captain is technically still alive. You mean he's a zombie? Yeah. Before this all happened, we spotted a mysterious island offshore. The captain went to explore and returned with this mysterious artifact. That very night, a zombie outbreak occurred and we ran down here. That's awful. Well, maybe we can figure out how to stop everything. Do you have any more information about the captain that can help? Yes. Well, he is a zombie. He's not quite as far gone as the rest of them. In fact, I think the secret... But before he could share that secret, a zombie appeared over his shoulder and killed him. We had forgotten to lock the door! Oh no! Everyone get behind me! A zombie horde came pouring into the room, and I did my best to fight them off with my sword. The zombie with us shouted in fear as the zombies kept trying to rip us to pieces. Luckily, I was getting pretty good at fighting these guys, and I was able to take them all out. We better hurry and get out of here, guys. There could be more on the way. We took off running and headed back up towards the base. On days 9 through 10, I emerged from the boat with the two sailors. We were all still processing the loss of the first mate, but we had to focus on our own safety. I wonder what the first mate was going to tell us. We soon arrived back at the base, and I got right to work building them a tent of their own. They had mentioned having a background in medicine, so I decided to set them up in their own medical tent. We didn't have too much in medical supplies yet, but seeing the base double in size was giving me hope. We all felt like we could use a little bit of hope, so I offered to make a statue that could serve as inspiration to us all. There was a certain Navy SEAL I had read about that I found particularly inspiring. The interesting thing about him was that he wasn't from the past, he was actually from the future. After a bit, I was running low on supplies, so I stopped for the time being. Any guesses on who you think I'm building? Let me know in the comments. On days 11 to 13, I awoke to a strange noise. Is that barking? Something doesn't sound quite right about it. Down in the water, I could see a seal, and it was being chased by the shark from earlier. Can someone give me a hand down here? A seal can talk. That's interesting. Let's see if I've got anything that can help. I ran back to my tent and opened up one of the crates. Inside was a collection of rocks. I grabbed a handful and ran back over to the edge of the boat. Hey shark, suck on this. I started chucking rocks down into the water and managed to hit the shark a few times. He kept chasing the seal around, but I could tell it was bothering him. Eventually, it was enough to let the seal get away. Hey, climb on up! The seal swam up to the anchor and ascended the chain. When he reached the top, he plopped down in exhaustion. Oh, thank you! You really saved my life! No problem. You gotta look after my fellow seals, after all. Oh, because you're also a seal. I get it. Why was that shark chasing you, anyway? I have no idea. He's hungry, I guess. But have you seen what's going on under your ship? There's something down there that I think would blow your mind. What do you mean? There's this massive rocky column coming out of the earth and into your ship. I've never seen anything like it before. You should go down there and take a look. I'd love to, but I don't think I can just do that. I'm gonna need some scuba equipment to get down there. Suit yourself. I headed over to the other sailors and let them know what I had learned. They were just as confused as I was, but let me know there was an equipment room back down on the ship that should have the scuba gear I'm looking for. They also gave me a stash of iron they had collected. Thanks guys, this will be helpful for sure. I headed over to the crafting table and put together a new set of iron armor. I also took some time to make an iron sword. If I was heading back into the boat, I needed all the help I could get. On days 14 to 15, I took my new gear and headed back down into the ship. I always had a pit in my stomach when I went down here, but there's no way I'd be able to survive out here without searching for answers. After 
after a little bit of exploring, I could hear something up ahead. More spiders! Disgusting! I leapt into battle with my new iron sword and started hacking and slashing. With each kill, the spiders shriveled and faded away. As I cut my way through the spiders, I noticed there was a group of zombie rats watching too. Come and get some! The spiders had all been destroyed, but I guess the rats were feeling a little intimidated. They all ran away in fear. Yeah, that's what I thought. I pushed forward through the dark tunnels and eventually reached the dive room. Awesome! Now I can snag some scuba gear. I opened the door and saw the giant mutant zombie from earlier was inside. What the heck? How did you get in here? The zombie wasted no time attacking me. The joke was on him though. This time, I was prepared. How do you like me now? I bobbed and weaved as he tried to hit me with shockwaves and pound me into the ground. I was doing well, but this guy packed a punch. I still only had five hearts, so I needed to be careful. My new gear and experience was still too much for him though. He came out victorious. Not so tough anymore, are you? With the adrenaline still pumping through my veins, I felt an extra surge of energy and was promoted to the rank of seaman. And check it out! Now I have 10 hearts! Feeling stronger than ever, I took a look around the room. Hanging up was a full scuba suit, so I grabbed each piece and placed it in my inventory. Then I saw something laying in the corner of the room. Awesome! A harpoon gun! Now I can protect myself from any underwater threats I come across. I checked the nearby crates and saw they were full of harpoons. I gathered them all up and headed back up to the flight deck. On day 16 to 19, I had arrived back on the flight deck, and I noticed that the seal was still there. Hey, how's it going? To be honest, not great. That shark is still down there, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get away from him. I was hoping I could stay here for a bit. Yeah, that should be fine. But you do know this ship is infested with zombies, right? I'll take zombies over sharks any day. <laughs> okay, but what about water? Don't you need it at least a little bit? I do. I was hoping you might have an idea about that. You know what? I think I do. Hang tight and let me get something set up. I grabbed some building supplies and started working on a tent for the seal to stay in. Once I got the outside set up, I got to work making him a tank to live in. This way he'll have some water he can easily access, even though he's not in the ocean. Once that was finished, I headed over to do some more work on the statue. I managed to get a decent amount done, but still had a long way to go. There was certainly a good shape taking place, but can you tell what it is yet? On days 20 to 22, I headed into my tent to get geared up. I grabbed my scuba gear off the armor rack and put it on. Then I opened up the nearby crate and took out my harpoon gun and harpoons. I know that shark is still out there, so I have to take him down before I can even start looking at that column the seal mentioned. But before I jump in, could you help me out? Over 40,000 of you have joined the Zozo Navy, and we'd love to have even more join up with us for even bigger adventures. So hit the subscribe button, and let's do this. I put on my scuba helmet and got ready to jump over the edge of the boat. Here goes nothing. On days 23 to 26, I got a running start and leapt off the side of the boat, landing in the ocean below. Alright, let's find this shark and take him out. With my harpoon gun in hand, I swam out from the boat, scanning the scenery for a glimpse of the aquatic monster. I swam and swam, but nothing. Maybe the shark left after all. I didn't see any sign of him anyway. Just when I was starting to feel safe, the shark was Ouch! You're gonna pay for that! I took aim with my harpoon gun and fired! I was able to hit him, but he showed no signs of slowing his attack. Oh man, I'm really starting to feel out of my element down here. The fight was intense. I kept firing my harpoons as the shark kept trying to take chunks out of my arm. Our fight had moved under the boat, and suddenly the shark got a hold of me and started pulling me deeper and deeper. If I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. As the shark pulled me deeper and deeper, I hit him with harpoons. He managed to get several hits in, but suddenly I heard a hissing noise as one of his teeth punctured the oxygen flow in my helmet. I'm too deep to go without oxygen. What am I going to do? I had an idea. If I could time this right, I could ignite the oxygen coming from my helmet. Helmet and use it like a grenade. Catch this! Through my helmet and it exploded on impact, killing the shark. There was no time to celebrate though. I couldn't hold my breath forever. I looked around and saw a cave nearby. Maybe there's an air pocket. I swam as my oxygen levels continued to drop, bursting through the wall of water and found the dry ground. Whew, that was way too close. But what am I supposed to do now? On days 27 to 29, I decided my only option was to head deeper into the cave and see what I could find. What I saw next was totally unexpected. Is that an octopus? Sitting at the bottom of the cave was a giant octopus. As I got closer, he started talking to me. Hello there. I can't help but think you're a little lost. That's one way of putting it. Do you know a way back up to the surface? There's only one way, which is back the way you came. But breathing is the problem, right? All you need is a scuba mask I have. It will give you all the oxygen you need. Great. So... Can I have it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Are you going to give it to me? I will. I can help me first. You should have just said that in the first place. What can I do to help? My wife was kidnapped by a horrible giant squid, and I need someone to rescue her. He's hiding out in a sunken pirate ship. I need you to take him out. But don't ask him any questions. He will try to trick you. Okay, I can probably manage that, except for one big problem. What's that? I can't breathe underwater. Oh, yes, yes, that's simple. As you swim toward the ship, you'll see some clams lying along the seafloor. Give them a knock with your fist, and they'll let out oxygen bubbles. And now you need to breathe. 
really hope you're right about that. I started making my way out of the cave, but stopped to mine all the various ores. That way I'd have more supplies for later. Once I had collected as much as I could, I left the cave and started swimming in the direction of the pirate ship. As my oxygen levels started to run low, I swam up to a plant and gave it a tap. Sure enough, a stream of bubbles came out. Okay, it looks like he was right. They didn't teach me that one in SEAL training. As I was starting to swim away though, I felt something brush along my back. It was a school of piranhas. Get your teethy grins away from me. I was so distracted by the fight, I nearly ran out of oxygen and drowned. Luckily, I was able to hit the clam before it was too late. At long last, I managed to fillet the rest of the fish. That was exhausting and it's getting late. I should try and find a cave to rest in. I swam a little further and soon saw a cave along the seafloor. I swam in and saw I had a nice pocket of air. The cave was also full of resources, so I made sure to grab those before settling in for the night. On days 30 to 35, I left the cave and continued to search for the pirate ship, grabbing oxygen from clams along the way. I soon found myself in a colorful coral reef, and eventually saw the pirate ship lodged in the middle. I swam up to the ship and started to take a look around. As far as I could tell, the ship looked deserted. Might as well check the chest for anything good. I opened the crates and found some gold and gunpowder. One of the crates even had an enchanted infinity book inside. Just then, I saw something moving on the other side of the boat. It was the giant squid! Get away from my ship! Oh, someone thinks they're a real tough guy. I swam over to the squid as he hit me with his tentacles, knocking me back. Why'd you kidnap an innocent octopus's wife? The giant squid stopped fighting. Kidnap? Innocent? Wait a second, I think you have the wrong idea. The octopus told me you would try to trick me. Nothing you say can change my mind. Just then, the octopus's wife popped up. Wait, hear us out. My ex-husband was lying to you. Okay, this was definitely a plot twist. What was going on? First things first though, I had nearly run out of oxygen. I quickly punched a clam as the octopus's wife began to explain. My ex-husband was so evil. He was mean and killed humans for fun. That's where he got that scuba mask he has. My squid friend here helped me to escape. Friend? I mean, yeah, we're friends, but Holly, I thought it was more than that. Not now, Jerry. Look, let's all head back. I think together we can teach Chad a lesson. His name is Chad? Say no more. Let's go. Without delay, we all took off for Chad's cave. We soon arrived after a bit of swimming. I'll go in there and draw him out, then you guys can do your thing. I made my way back inside the cave and talked to Chad. Good news, your wife is just outside and is waiting for you. Oh, could it be? Well done, well done. I sure hope that nasty swim. As we swam out of the cave, Jerry was waiting for me. You've messed with her for the last time. Oh, you're still alive? You hurt me. I watched as Jerry smacked the octopus and swam away. The guy was squirting ink all over the place. How embarrassing. As those two swam off, Molly headed inside the cave and grabbed the squirrel mask out of the chest. Here you go, Zozo. I think you burned this. She tossed out the mask, which I quickly grabbed and put on. Just in time, too. I was nearly out of oxygen. Thanks, Molly. You guys take it easy down here. On days 36 to 40, I was planning on heading up to the surface, but took a moment to check out the column attached to the ship. This column doesn't look like something the ship ran into. It looks like the column grew and ran into the ship. Something fishy was definitely going on, but I needed to get back up to the ship to talk to the crew. As I climbed aboard, I saw the base was under attack. The sun hasn't set yet. How are zombies attacking now? As I got closer though, I saw these weren't zombies at all. They were some kind of aquatic humanoid monsters. They were much stronger than the zombies too. Look, you guys stink. But more importantly, where did you come from? I was able to keep myself from taking too much damage and noticed that some of them had dropped sapphires. But at long last, the monsters were all defeated. I went and took a closer look at the fence and saw they had broken right through. Looks like we've got some work to do. But before then, I had to get out of the scuba suit. I hung the suit back up and stashed the loot I had found at the base. The next day had rolled around and I decided to upgrade my gear just in case the monsters tried to attack again. I quickly smelted down all the iron I collected, then used that iron to make an anvil. I placed the anvil down, then used the infinity enchantment I had found to enchant my harpoon gun. Now I'll have unlimited ammo. Next up, I had an idea for what I wanted to make with the sapphires the monsters had dropped. I grabbed a hammer and used it to shape the sapphires into a blade. With my gear upgraded, I headed over to talk to Switchblade about how things had been going and fill him in on what I had discovered. It's been rough, to be honest. We have been fighting off wave after wave of monsters. It's a good thing you showed up when you did, because we didn't think we were going to make it. I'm just glad everyone is okay. So what are you thinking for our next move? Switchblade led me outside. Well, as you can see, they were able to break right through our wooden fence. The best bet is to upgrade the wall, and we'll do well to get a proper HQ set up. Sounds like a plan. Let's gather some supplies and get right to it. On days 41 to 43, we had finished gathering the supplies we needed, so I started by tearing down one of the old planes on the deck. The new fence was going to be a bit bigger, so we'd need a little bit of extra room. 
The plane was soon cleared, and I got to work building a metal security fence across the deck. In addition to the fence, I also put up a guard tower so we could have some leverage on any attacking monsters. They would have a heck of a time getting through this. After I finished the fence, I got to work on the headquarters. Having a sturdy building to store and plan from was going to be much more reliable than something a horde of zombies could tear through in a matter of minutes. Once the exterior was complete, I went ahead and filled the inside with everything we were going to need. I decided to get to work on the next part of the statue. I only had a little bit of materials on hand, so I just did a little bit of work on the one side. Just as I was finishing up, I heard a loud crash outside. What in the world was that? I ran outside and took a look over the edge of the ship. A submarine had crashed into the side of the boat. Where did this come from? As I was looking down, the sub's hatch opened and a dazed officer stuck their head out. Hello down there. Can we help you? She looked around confused. I think so. She didn't seem like she was alright, so I quickly jumped off the side of the boat, swam over to the sub, and climbed aboard next to her. Where did you come from? Uh, sorry, I'm a little frazzled. My name is Alice. I've been tracking this ship for weeks without rest. Funny enough, it wasn't until I fell asleep that I finally found it. Well here, let's get on board and we can chat more. We jumped into the water and climbed up the boat. Once we were on the deck, we continued our conversation. So why were you tracking the ship? Some time ago, I was searching for an ancient artifact. The same one that the captain of the ship came into contact with recently. He beat me to it, but I don't think he understood what it was. I've been desperately trying to find this ship. Not because the artifact is valuable, which it is, but because we need to destroy it, and I'm the only one who knows how to do that. Yeah, you're telling me. That artifact seems to be the source of all the problems here. We're more than happy to try and destroy it. Just then, the seal flopped over. Zozo, something about this all seems off to me. What do you know? You're just a seal. I'm a trained submariner. Yeah, a trained submariner who just crashed their sub. Okay, okay, you two, calm down. Look, we know there's something weird going on, and this could be a shot to fix it, or at least end it. What do we know about the artifact? Well, the captain probably has it near him, up in the control tower, so we should focus on getting to that. Okay, sounds good. The doors are all locked, but maybe the other sailors know a way around that. I headed over to talk to the sailors. There was good news. There was actually a master key to the entire ship. The bad news, though, was that the key was most likely in the armory, deep in the belly of the boat. Well, I figured I'd have to go back in there at some point. We'll get this done. On days 44 to 49, I headed back down into the ship. As I navigated the curving passageways, I could hear the shuffling of feet ahead of me. Here we go. The zombies came straight around the corner, but they were no match for my new sapphire sword. I was able to pretty quickly overpower these guys, but how would it hold up against a group of those monsters? With the zombies out of the way, I headed deeper still into the ship. Soon I found myself in a room full of different internal mechanisms. I could hear something in the room ahead. It sounds like more zombies, but something is different. I poked my head through the doorway and could see one of those monsters leaving a group of zombies around. Is he commanding them? I very quickly found the answer to that question, because the monster caught sight of me, let out a growl, and all the zombies charged. Don't listen to him! He's the one, not me! I tried to get at the monster, but the zombies moved almost like they were protected. I had no choice but to fight them off first. Get back, you flesh heads! Soon enough, the zombies were all destroyed, and I was able to engage the monster. He was strong, but he couldn't do much all by himself. Soon enough, he was taken down too. A familiar rush of adrenaline came pouring in, and I could feel myself getting stronger. I suddenly gained four more hearts, and was promoted to a petty officer. For more health and strength. Nice! On days 50 to 53, I kept making my way to the armory. Soon, I could see the door, but outside of it was another one of those monsters. It was walking down the hallway behind a larger group. What are these guys doing? I should follow them and see where they're headed. I should probably give these guys a name too. I'll call them blobs. These blobs certainly seem to have some level of intelligence. They weren't like the zombies who would mindlessly attack anyone nearby. The blobs seemed to be up to something. I followed them through the winding hallways and even had some close calls. I think they may have suspected they were being followed, as I had to duck into a side room to avoid being detected at times. Feels like we've gone down several floors. We've got to be close to the bottom of the ship at this point. Soon enough, I followed them into a room and couldn't believe what I was seeing. There were several blobs roaming around, but more concerning were the cages hanging from the ceiling. There's sailors in some of those cages. Something is turning them into zombies. That something must have had to do with what I saw on the ground. There was a massive hole with pink goo dripping into it. This must be where the column meets the ship. So the column must be hollow. It's a tunnel of some sort. Before I could get any closer though, one of the blobs noticed me and attacked. I managed to fight him off, but can see I had all of their attention now. I don't know what's going on here, but I don't want to end up in one of those cages. I booked it out of there. On days 54 to 57, I was running for my life. The blobs were hot on my tail, but I was starting to put distance between us. I'm not going to be your next experiment. I was a pretty speedy guy and was able to get away. Oh, what was I doing again? Oh yeah, the armory. Soon enough, I found my way back to the armory and headed inside. Oh man, why did they tell me about this place before? The armory was full of all kinds of good stuff. 
I walked up to the center table and took a look at everything. Glittering in the middle of the table was a brand new shotgun. Oh ho ho, now we're packing. The blobs won't want to meet me around a dark corner. The next thing I picked up was the master key. Now I'll be able to get into any part of the ship. I checked out some of the crates and managed to scrounge up some ammo for the shotgun. Then I took a look at the armor hanging up. Is this special ops gear? It is! I pulled it off the rack and put it on. With everything equipped, I saw that my armor was maxed out. Oh yeah, now I'm ready for a fight. After I had grabbed everything else I could, I headed out back to the flight deck. On days 58 to 62, I arrived back on the flight deck and went to talk to the SEAL about everything I had seen. Hey bud, you'll never guess what I found down there. Oh no, don't tell me. More monsters? Even worse, that column you saw is a tunnel of some kind, and they're turning the sailors into zombies. Just then, Alice walked up. They're probably just summoning an ancient god. Ancient god? What? Oh yes, the ancient artifact is like a beacon. It calls to the disciples of the god Aquino to begin preparing for his arrival. You can't be serious. Oh, I am. By harvesting the souls of men, they give him the power to travel from his prison below, up and into our world. It's incredible. Incredible? Don't you mean horrible? Um, yes, it's horrible. Um, by incredible, I just mean, like, insane. How do you know all of this, anyway? Oh, uh, I read about it in a book. I'm a very learned explorer. Right. I was going to have to keep my eye on Alice, but in the meantime, I thought it'd be best to get to work on the statue. If we couldn't stop Akuno from coming to this world, at least there'd be an intimidating statue he'll have to look at. Yeah, I'm not feeling too good about it at all, but at least the next phase of the statue was complete. On days 63 to 66, I decided to dive into the water and try and get more supplies for the statue. I swam deep and saw just what I was looking for. Perfect, I'll just collect these and be on my way. I took out my pickaxe and quickly mined up everything I was going to need. It was hard work mining underwater, but having a mask that let me breathe made everything much easier. Speaking of which, I should check in on Molly and Jerry. Maybe they noticed anything with the tunnel. As I swam near the cave, Jerry came swimming over and Molly came out to greet me. Hey guys, I was just checking in. Have you noticed anything weird about the tunnel over there? We were hoping you'd come by. We've been noticing some strange vibrations coming out of it. What's going on? Well, it's bad news, unfortunately. Apparently, there's an ancient god ritual in the works. There's an ancient artifact that we need to destroy to stop it, but I have no idea what I'm going to be up against. I think I know something that could help, actually. The pirate ship we were living in before had remnants of something that looked very similar to the tunnel here. I think it may have had something to do with why the boat sunk. Oh, no way! Yeah, and there were some books buried in the crates. I can't read, but maybe they will contain some helpful information. That's an awesome tip. I'll go take a look. I took off in the direction of the ship and arrived soon after. Before I head in there though, have you hit the sub button yet? The more subs we have, the stronger our navy will be. On day 67 to 70, I swam down into the pirate ship and decided to take a look around. I grabbed some gold and gunpowder from the crates before opening a crate that contained the captain's journal. I opened it up and started to read. Day 75, we spotted an island, island full of zombies. We lost a lot of men fighting on this island, but it was worth it, I think. This captain's crew had to fight zombies too. They must have been near the artifact. I'll keep reading. We found this strange, mysterious book. So the artifact must be a book. I'm not comfortable holding it, so I gave it to one of my mates. I couldn't believe what I was reading. Why did their boat sink? Did the blobs attack them too? I read on. Day 78. There is a submarine behind us. We are under attack. Taking on water. A submarine took them out. I've got a sneaking suspicion I know who was driving it. I better get back to the ship. Alice knows more than she's letting us think. I swam out of the ship, but before I could get anywhere, I was attacked by Chad! I'll make you pay for tricking me. Tricking you? It's not my fault you're a jerk. Chad was surprisingly strong, but he didn't know I had gotten stronger too. Jerry should have finished you when he had the chance. I swung my sword and finished him off. He wasn't going to be bugging anyone now. On day 71 to 74, I returned back to the ship and climbed back up on board. As I climbed aboard, Alice came running up to me. You're back. I'm so happy to see you're okay. Did you find anything interesting? I wanted to confront her about everything, but we didn't know what she was trying to do. There was still a chance her intentions were good, even if she took down a ship. No, unfortunately, I didn't find anything. Looks like our best bet is to try and confront the captain. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear it. Best of luck fighting the captain. Just remember, grab the artifact and bring it to me so I can destroy it. I headed over to the command tower and unlocked the door with the master key. As I entered the tower, I was immediately attacked by a group of blobs. These guys have been here so close to our base, I had no idea. Using my shotgun, I was able to mow them down pretty quick. They didn't stand a chance against a ranged weapon. I then made my way to the next level and was met by another pack of blobs. It was a tight space, so they managed to get some hits in, but by using the table, I was able to get a little bit of space them up. That was a close one. Now to find the captain. Maybe these guys were just holding him prisoner. On day 75 to 78, I reached the top floor and saw the captain looking out over the base. There was a strange glow about him, but he looked okay. Captain, I'm here to risk 
Oh no. The captain had turned around, and I could see he was mutated like the other sailors. The glow must have been coming from the artifact. Akuno will return. Akuno is master. Akuno will rule this world. Captain, you've got to break free. We can stop him. The captain was too far gone. He wasn't hearing a word I was saying. Akuno requires your soul. Just then, the captain pulled his gun and started firing. No, I don't want to fight you. I didn't have a choice. If I didn't fight, he would kill me and use me to attack all my friends. The captain was a good shot, but I was a trained seal. Sorry, but this is gonna hurt. I noticed that the captain had started throwing some kind of energy ball at me. It must be a power he got from Akuno. We can't allow this kind of dark magic in our world. Hang on to your hat. I'm sending you to the underworld. I took aim and blasted my shotgun one final time, sending the captain to oblivion. After he disappeared, I saw a book laying on the ground. It had to be the artifact, the Necronomicon. Now that just sounds evil. I'm not opening this thing. I can't risk getting sucked into all this madness. Let's see if Alice can actually destroy this thing, or if she's up to something else entirely. On day 79 to 84, I made my way down the tower and headed into the HQ building to meet with Alice. She could barely contain her excitement when she saw me walking up. Zozo, you must have it. I can feel its energy. Quickly, give it to me. Hang on a second. I can't give this to you until you explain to me exactly how you plan to destroy it. Don't worry about that. Just give me the book. Suddenly, a glow appeared around Alice. She was possessed by the book, too. Alice leapt forward and tried to grab the book from me. Alice, get a hold of yourself. This book will destroy the world. Akuno promised me power to protect his book. I won't let you stop me. Looks like she was pretty determined, but the seal and I were ready. Pull it! The seal flipped the switch on the wall, which dropped a cage on Alice, trapping her inside. Now listen, you're gonna have to stay here until we can figure out how to destroy this thing. You'll never destroy it. The only thing that can destroy it is Akuno himself. You'll never win. Akuno himself? I ran outside to chat with the seal. Well, it's not looking good. I think the only option is to enter the tunnel and find this Akuno. I'll have to try and trick him into destroying the book somehow. It looks like it's our only option. The seal agreed. On days 85 to 89, I started tearing down the security fence so I could replace it with an even better one. If I failed in my mission, it meant Akuno was headed for this world, and my friends were going to need a fighting chance. After a bit, the new fence was finished. I also needed to finish the statue, so I dove off the ship to go and mine out the remaining supplies I would need. I swam to the bottom and found a deposit of materials I could use. I mined them out, then brought them back to the ship. Then I headed into my camp to grab some supplies to upgrade my weapons. First, I crafted a workbench and set that down. Then, by using the workbench, I crafted some additional shells for my shotgun. To finish up, I then crafted a stock for it as well. Well, I'm about as powered up as I can be. Now I just need to finish that statue, and we'll be on our way. On days 90 to 94, I got started on the last section of the statue. By now, I'm sure you can tell who it is. So, what do you think? Did you guess it correctly? He's a big hero of mine, and hopefully he can inspire the next batch of recruits. With the statue complete, I headed down to have a quick chat with the seal. Hey buddy, I just wanted to say thanks for all your help. And here's something to show my appreciation. You're an honorary Navy SEAL too. On days 95 to 97, I headed out of the base, through the security tower, and made my way toward the hole. This could be the last time I ever see the light of day. I descended into the boat and started making my way through the ship corridors, and was immediately attacked by zombies and blobs. Whoa, these guys were ready for me. Akuno must know I'm coming for him. By using the shotgun, I blasted my way through the first level of the boat. I was having some close calls, but managed to get through relatively unharmed. These poor sailors, I don't want to hurt them, but they give me no choice. I continued down to the next level and started facing off against some more blobs. Be gone, fish face! These monsters were something I could never get used to. I had to banish them from this world. Soon I had made it to the lowest level of the ship and was getting close to the tunnel room. As I approached, I saw another blob. He was bigger than the others and had a strong glow around him. He must be their leader. By using my sapphire sword, I managed to get some hits in, but he was hitting back too. Oof, yeah, this guy is way more powerful than the other ones. He was using a trident that was stronger than anything I had faced yet. It might be time to try something new. I pulled out my shotgun and worked on creating some distance between us, but it was difficult in tight space. Get a load of this. I kept firing away, and finally all of the zombies were gone. I kept on him until at long last, he was defeated. As he disappeared, I got that familiar surge of adrenaline and grew in size. Check it out, now I have 20 hearts. Feeling better than ever, I entered the room and was immediately sworn. I started fighting off all of the enemies, but there was a lot of them. I had no choice but to hurry and jump into the hole. Here goes nothing. I jumped into the hole, falling for what felt like forever. But eventually I hit the ground with a thud and blacked out. On day 98, I woke up laying at the bottom of the hole. Oh, that didn't feel so good. Where am I? I took in my surroundings and saw I had fallen into some kind of deep cavern. Just ahead, there is a portal. That must take me to Akuno. I don't like the look of that, but I know that with support from you and my friends, we can do anything. I took a deep breath and ran headfirst into the portal. On day 99, I appeared in what looked to be an entirely different dimension. 
Whoa, this place is insane. It's almost like I'm underwater, but I'm not. Up ahead of me, I could see a huge otherworldly temple. That had to be where Akuno lived. With my gun in hand, I ran forward into the temple. As I ran into the building, I could see Akuno waiting for me. Akuno, you thought you could come to my world and destroy everyone, but instead it's me coming to yours to destroy you. Akuno didn't seem surprised at all. <laughs> Catch me off guard. Please, you've been a pawn in my plan this entire time. Just like all the other foolish humans. What did he mean, a pawn? That book can allow me to influence anyone who reads it. But I can't travel to your dimension without it. And now you've brought it straight to me. Just in time, too. I understand my minions have nearly completed preparing an army for you. Why are you doing this? What good does destroying another world do for you? man to this world, but for what? Not a soul roams here, and I'm kept bound by the limitations of this flesh. A human soul gives me freedom I can't get elsewhere. So I will take the souls of Earth, starting with you. If you want this book, you're gonna have to pry it off of me. That's just what I intend on doing. I immediately opened fire with my shotgun. It didn't seem to be doing anything. Pathetic. Your human weapons are no match for my magic. You'll never break my enchantments. I fired a few more shots, but he was right. This wasn't doing anything. Just then, I noticed there were two purple orbs hanging from the ceiling. They had an almost lifelike quality about them. Let's see what you think about this. I opened fire on one of the orbs, breaking it open and causing it to explode. No! He didn't like that and started attacking me. Clearly this was doing something. Ho ho, not so clever after all, are we? I fired on the other orb, which caused it to explode as well. You will pay for this. I fired off a few shots at him again. This time I could tell it was hurting. Well, let's see how you handle this. There was a flash of lightning and two blobs appeared at the end of them, attacking me. Jeez, you can summon these guys at will? There's no way we can let them into our world. The blobs converged on me and I quickly finished them off with my shotgun. As soon as I had defeated them, Kuno summoned two more. Dude, knock it off. This is just getting annoying. Kuno launched his purple fireballs at me as I continued to pick off more blobs and land shots on him. As I hit him more and more, I could tell he was getting desperate. Foolish mortal, you have only seen a fraction of my power. Suddenly, a ring of fire appeared around me and I was hit by lightning. He wasn't joking. Things were starting to get serious. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, that one is pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. I kept on him while trying to dodge his lightning attacks. But let me tell you, dodging lightning is as hard as you think it would be. Looks like it's the end for you, Soto. This couldn't be it. But then I remembered the secret to defeating him was destroying the book. I knew what I needed to do. Just then, a ring of fire appeared around me and I jumped back, throwing the book out. The lightning struck the book, destroying it. No, no! Kuno erupted in an explosion and was destroyed. I did it. I heard some rolling thunder and suddenly a bolt of lightning came out of the sky, teleporting me away. What now? On day 100, I appeared at the top of the hole, back on the ship. Inside of the cage in front of me, I saw one of the zombies start to change. But this time, he changed back into a sailor. Oh, hello? What's going on? Hang on, I'll help you. I jumped up to the cage and busted the sailor out. There were several other cages around the room, so I hurried and broke out all of the other trapped sailors as well. As I did so, I explained everything to them. They were all pretty confused, but I led them up to the flight deck so they could get some rest. With the sailors all safe in their bunks, I met back up with the seal and switchblade. You did it, Zozo. On behalf of the crew, I can't thank you enough. Alice is feeling better too. Just then, Alice walked up. The seal was right. She was looking normal. Oh, Zozo, I feel so awful for everything I've done. But I'm so glad you were here to save the day. Our seal friend here and I are going to go adventuring together. This time, I'm not going to be reading any scary books. I'm just glad everything is back to normal, and thanks for everyone's help. I can't wait to see where our adventures take us next. On day one, I spawned in as a pretty normal guy. But wow, look at this beautiful city. This is gonna be an easy 100 days. Just then, I heard the sound of something overhead. I looked up and saw a small plane flying by. Hmm, I wonder where they're going. They're probably just checking out the beautiful views of the city. As they got further away though, I saw them drop something from the plane, which left a string of black smoke behind it as it fell. Suddenly, there was a loud bang and everything got really bright. It was a nuclear bomb. There was an intense ringing in my ears and I felt like I was getting sick. Whoa, what's going on? The building beneath me started to shake, and there was a loud crash as the building started to collapse. I blacked out. When I woke up, I was laying beneath a pile of rubble. Somehow I had survived. Oh, my head. Where am I? I looked around and saw some light coming through the rubble. Nearby, I saw a wooden pickaxe and picked it up. Let's see if we can get ourselves out of here. I started breaking blocks and soon found myself outside. The entire city was in ruins. Hello? 
Is there anyone there? As I looked around, I heard a noise behind me. Something was watching me. It was a massive mutated dragon. Nice dragon, just don't come any closer. Just as I said that, the dragon took off and started flying toward me. I had to get out of there. I scrambled over the rubble as the dragon blew his fire breath. I gotta hide. Maybe I can find a safe place in this building. I ran inside the stairwell of the nearest building, leaving the dragon outside. I hadn't noticed it until now, but my hunger and thirst was really low. I needed to find some food and water. This looks like an old office building. Maybe they have a vending machine I can get some food or water from. I checked around the corner and sure enough, there was a vending machine there. I opened it up and found some canned soup and purified water. Oh, I'm so thirsty. This water is a real lifesaver. And I didn't know soup could taste this good. This is gonna be even harder than I thought. On day two, I woke up to the sound of gunshots. I snuck over to the edge of the window. What could this be about? Down below, I could see a group of wasteland raiders fighting off a horde of zombies. One of the raiders looked a little different than the others. He must be the leader. I watched as the raiders managed to fight them off. I was so distracted by what they were doing, I didn't notice one of them had snuck up behind me. Hey, put the knife down. I don't want any trouble. If you don't want any trouble, then empty your pockets. Uh, I don't have anything you'd want, just water bottles and canned soup. Why wouldn't I want that? Every water source in the city is contaminated with radioactive waste. Purified water is a luxury, one that I deserve, not you. Why are you doing this? Wouldn't it be better if we worked together? What, have you been living under a rock or something? We work for the Finkel, mob boss of this new world. And I don't know you, which means you don't work for him, which means you need to hand over anything you got. Things were getting heated. I had to get out of here, but he had me cornered. Maybe if I could push him hard enough, it'd give me enough time to escape. That's a really interesting offer, but no thanks. I gave him a shove and started sprinting for the stairs. Hey, get back here. He was starting to catch up to me when suddenly the floor gave way and the raider fell through the floor. Uh-oh, that didn't sound too good. I took a look over the edge and saw the raider lying on the floor. There was no way he survived that. I quickly ran downstairs. Well, I don't think he's going to be needing this hunter's knife anymore. Hey, who's over there? I peeked back out over the edge, and the raider leader was looking right at me. They started shooting. Get that guy. I'll find you. I ran away as fast as I could. Day two, and I was already starting to make enemies. I'm sure this isn't the last I've seen of them. On day three, I kept on running until I found a building to stop and catch my breath in. Okay, okay, so the city was hit by a nuclear bomb, the water sources are contaminated, and there are gangs of raiders roaming the streets. Not to mention the hordes of zombies and flying dragons. I think my best bet is to get out of the city. I ran back out onto the highway and started making my way out of town. I don't know how to deal with the mutated creatures, but maybe I could talk some sense into this mob boss guy. What was his name? The Finkel? Before I could do that though, I had to survive the day. As I was making my way across the desert, I soon found a farm. Check this place out. I wonder if anyone is home. As I got closer, I saw someone coming toward me, but it wasn't a friendly face, it was a zombie. Come and get it, mush brains. I was able to land a few good hits. Fighting zombies feels wrong, but I know it's the only way I'll survive. After the first zombie was down, I quickly started fighting another one. Sorry about your friend, but I'm not gonna be on the menu today. The knife I had picked up was proving useful, and I was able to land some good hits and survive another day. That was too close. Maybe I can set up a base in the barn. I headed to the barn, only to find more zombies. They reached out mindlessly as I struck them down to the ground. I wonder if these people used to live here. How many zombies are there? I really hope I don't get infected. I kept fighting my way through the horde, and at long last was able to clear them all out. With the zombies cleared, I headed into the loft to see if I could set up a makeshift camp. Oi, you up there. I looked down from the loft and could see a farmer looking up at me. Are you the one that cleared out those zombies? You may well have just saved my life. Why don't you come on down here? I headed down. His voice was friendly, but I could tell he was a little tense. We'll bring you around these parts. We don't get too many folks around here. I was in the city and got attacked by some wandering raiders. I kept running until I came across this farm. He seemed to relax a bit after I said that. Yeah, those raiders are causing some serious problems for us. They kill anything or anyone that gets in their way. All for some boss no one has seen. The Finkel, yeah. I, I heard them mention something about him. Yeah, he's trying to gather all the resources to hold power over all the other survivors. Speaking of, I'm sure you could use something to eat. He tossed some water and bread over to me, and I quickly started it down. Thank you, I really needed that. No problem. Say, why don't you stick around here for a while? I'll get a bed set up for you in the house. My name is John, by the way. John led me over and into his farmhouse. 
On days four to five, John and I got to work building me my own section of the farmhouse. It was nice to have a friendly face around. I was hoping that we could work together to locate the Finkel and put a stop to this madness. With the exterior complete, we then filled the inside with some of the basic essentials I would need. Thanks, John. I think I'm going to be really happy here. After a bit, I met John outside to ask him about fighting off the raiders. Apart from my knife, I didn't have any way to protect myself. If you're gonna survive out here, you need to have the gear to sustain you. There isn't much around, but I can help you get the little we have. Hang on a second. John headed inside and then returned a few moments later. Here, take my axe. Go on and cut down some of them there trees and bring the wood back on over. I grabbed the axe and headed over to the trees. I got to work cutting them down. While I worked, I couldn't stop replaying what had happened with those wasteland raiders in my hand. Did he really find me all the way out here? I finished cutting down the wood and headed back over to John. John tossed some of the wood back to me and instructed me on how to build a crafting table. He then showed me how to make a stone axe using some of the cobblestone I had collected earlier. Nice work. There's another thing I want to show you. Head on over to the barn and look in some of the barrels. There should be some leather in there you can use for our next project. I set off in the direction of the barn to get the leather. I couldn't believe how lucky I was to have found a friend. John was like an older brother to me, and I couldn't wait to see what else he would be able to teach me. Okay, I got all the leather I could find. What are we doing with it? I started laying out all the leather as John explained. Now, this isn't the strongest armor, but it will keep you safe if you find yourself in a tight spot. You can use these skills to make armor out of all kinds of materials. You'll be happy to have it in case those raiders show up. With the armor all done, I quickly equipped it. I feel safer already. On day six to eight, I woke up early to go gather some more supplies. We were hoping the Finkel would be willing to work something out, but just in case, we would need to be prepared. Soon, I saw a small settlement in the distance. When I got closer, I was immediately attacked by zombies. Ugh, you guys reek. I don't even feel bad about this. There was a pretty big horde here, and the zombies were relentless. Where are you guys coming from? After a while, I managed to cut my way through using my knife. I headed into the first building and found some iron and flints inside. Awesome! As I headed back outside, another group of zombies attacked. Oh geez, not more of you. These zombies were quicker than most, but I was able to hold them off. As I fought my way toward the next structure, I could see a couple of zombies were stuck in the windows. Yeah, you guys aren't very smart, are you? I knocked down the rest of the horde and made easy work with the dum-dum stuck in the window. I checked the chest and managed to find some more iron and some more leather. One of the chests even had a blade inside. Hmm, I wonder what I can do with this. I then checked behind the counter and found a medicine cabinet with a first aid kit inside. Nice, hopefully I'll never need it, but this is good to have in your pocket. I then checked out the storage room and got my hands on some copper wire and a battery. A nearby box had some rubber inside of it too. I made my way out of the building and headed into the last structure. This building had a kitchen and in the chest there was some water and more canned soup. Now I really isn't the time to be a picky eater, that's for sure. Suddenly there was a banging sound in the storage closet behind me. Oh no, maybe someone is trapped inside. I quickly opened the door just to find more zombies. Why did I think there would be anything else in here? The zombies caught me by surprise, but I was able to clear them all out. Once inside, I managed to scrounge up some more batteries and bandages. This seems like plenty of supplies. I bet John can show me all kinds of cool things to make with this. With my pockets full, I headed back to the farm. As I returned to the base though, something seemed off. Suddenly, the whole place started to explode. Oh no, John! Just then I saw who had caused all of the destruction. It was the raiders from before. We told you we'd find you. You're gonna pay for what you did to our friend. You don't understand. It was an accident and he attacked me. Where's John? It's an eye for an eye out here, bucko. The only person you need to worry about is yourself. What did you do with him? In my rage, I started charging at the raiders, completely forgetting that they had guns. As I charged, I took a couple of bullets, but my armor protected me from taking too much damage. Take this! I managed to get one hit on them, but the shots had been too much, and they quickly knocked me out. Oh, my head. Where's John? I was starting to black out when I heard a voice in the distance. Run! Everyone run! An old woman came tearing into the camp. The Skylarker is coming. Skylarker? She must be talking about that mutant dragon. Leave him, boys. Let's get out of here. The raiders took off running, but I couldn't move. As I was blacking out, I could see the face of the woman standing above me. On day nine, I woke up in a small hut with the old woman nearby. She was stitching up my wounds. What happened? How did we escape the Skylurker? A smile flashed across the woman's face. There was no Skylurker. I just did that to save your skin. My name is Maggie. Wow, thank you, Maggie. I don't think I could have gotten out of there without you. Where's John? The smile faded from her face. I'm not sure. I saw some of the goons taken behind the barn. It's probably best not to think about it too much. I can't help but feel like it's all my fault. They never would have found him if they weren't after me. Like I said, you'll be better off not living in the past and focusing on the future. I could tell she had some secrets of her own, but I didn't want to pry. So what happened here anyway? I remember seeing a bomb go off, and when I woke up, the entire world was different. I must have been out for some time. The world was already in a state of chaos when the bomb dropped, but as you can imagine, the bomb changed everything. 
Finkel Fredrickson, or the Finkel as they now call him, quickly rose to power, commanding the vigilantes by promising them power and control of their own. I've seen him only once. He's half man, half machine. They say he's holed up in a safe house hoarding resources, but no one can reach him. He lives on the far side of the uncrossable desert, so if you think you're going to defeat him, you've got quite the task ahead of you. I took a second to think about everything she had told me. Well, I did survive a nuclear blast. Defying the impossible isn't exactly a new concept for me. I could see a twinkle in her eye as she gave me a grin. Then I guess we better get to work. On days 10 to 11, I was feeling better and decided I should head out on my own. Thanks for all your help, Maggie. I'm glad to know there's still good people around. It was my pleasure, Zozo, but don't feel like you have to leave. You're welcome to stay here if you'd like. I would love that, but after what happened with John, I couldn't risk putting you in danger. Well, if that's the case, take my horse and head down the road. There are some abandoned structures that you might be able to use. I headed outside and hopped on Maggie's horse. Maggie had quite the setup out here. If the Finkel ever came for her, he'd be in for a heck of a fight. Off in the distance, I could see a large structure. It looked like a gas station. As I rode up, I saw some zombies wandering around. More of these guys, no surprise there. I charged up on the horse and attacked the first zombie. That's easy enough. After I downed the first guy, I turned and saw there were more, so I ditched the horse to fight them on foot. It would just be embarrassing if I got Maggie's horse killed. Let's go, you brainless trash heap. I landed a critical hit and took out the first guy, and then quickly took a couple swings to take out the other. These guys are so easy. Uh-oh. There was a huge horde coming right at me. Man, do you guys ever get tired? Get away from me. The horde chased me around as I tried to fight them off one by one. I kept hacking and slashing and finally took out all the guys outside. Whew, that was a lot of work. I hear more inside. Let's do this. I made my way inside of the gas station, fighting off zombies along the way. While I was fighting, I noticed there were some vending machines in here. This was also a huge space. If I could take these guys all out, it'll make a great base. I found my way into the next room and fended off a final attack from the remaining zombies. At long last, they were all defeated. Finally, now let's see if we can fix this place up. It'll make a great base. My first order of business was to head outside and cut down one of the massive trees outside. I was going to need its wood if I was going to patch up all the holes in this place. Once I had gotten the wood I needed, I started by filling out the entrance to the base with doors and planks of wood. Man, check out that roof. It's not going to work if I have all those holes in it. Anyone could drop in. I then got to work using planks of wood to fill in all the holes. It took a lot of time, but I couldn't risk a zombie, or worse, a raider getting the jump on me. With the roof filled in, I got to work on cleaning up the mess inside. I cleared out piles of rocks and patched up the holes in the wall. Next, I ran around the base and made sure to light it up. This place is looking great. Now let's see if there's anything in these vending machines. I took a look and was excited to see they were full of chips and water. I tossed some water to the horse and helped myself to a snack. What luck! Soon enough, I'll be able to track the Finkel down and hopefully make some positive changes in this world. On days 12 to 15, I made my way back to Maggie's house to return her horse. When I arrived, she was sitting in a chair outside her house. Good morning, Maggie. I found a great place for a base. Thanks for pointing me in that direction. I'm always happy to help, Zozo. In fact, I have another tip for you. There was an old weapons facility down the road. Word is that there's been some zombie activity, but there ought to be some good loot. If you have any hope of confronting Finkel and his raiders, your best bet is to scavenge for better gear. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the tip. I'll go see what I can find. I jogged down the path in the direction of the warehouse. I saw the terrain start to change. I must be getting close. But up ahead, I saw a group of zombies. These guys must be the zombie activity Maggie mentioned. I wonder if they picked anything up. I charged into battle and started fighting against the horde. That's when I noticed one of them was holding something unique. Hey, that guy has a machete. I could use that. This hunter's knife just isn't going to cut it much longer. <laughs> kept fighting and even took a few hits. It's a good thing I had this armor. It was keeping them from breaking the skin and getting me infected. All right, let's check out this machete. I picked the machete up from where I had been dropped by the zombie. This thing must have been brand new when he picked it up. On days 16 to 19, I could see the warehouse just up ahead. As I got a little closer though, I could see another horde of zombies blocking my way. But these guys were all dressed the same. Time to introduce you to my little friend. The machete, I'm talking about the machete. As I started to fight, I was close enough to see that these guys were all wearing hazmat suits. There must have been some kind of serious action that caused them to all get infected, even while wearing their suits. If I could get my hands on my own hazmat suit, I could navigate all kinds of toxic environments. Hey guys, I've got a joke for you. What do you call a row of zombies? A deadline. With my killer humor and fighting skills, I managed to take the last guy down. I kept pushing forward and made my way into the warehouse. As soon as I stepped inside though, I heard a terrifying sound coming from the ceiling. What is that? To my horror, there was some kind of mutated bear hanging from the ceiling, and it was looking right at me. There were some crates on the far side of the building. Maybe they would have some hazmat suits inside. Easy there, buddy. No need to panic. I inched my way forward, but it was no use. The mutant bear crawled right above my head and dropped down into the floor. Oh, why does everything keep hitting me in the head? This mutant bear was no slouch, and he did some major damage. 
even broke my helmet. Oh, if I keep taking hits and losing armor, I'm not gonna survive this one. The bear used his massive claws and swiped at me again and again. Thankfully, I was able to use the new machete to my advantage and take him down. These mutated monsters are brutal. That was way too close. At least it wasn't a Skylurker, though. Just then, there was the sound of thunder and some clouds rolled in. Then, the rain started to fall. Oh, rainfall! Maybe I can catch some water in a water bottle. I stepped out into the rain, but immediately started to get hurt. It was acid rain! Ah, it burns! That reminded me, maybe there was a hazmat suit in here. I headed over to the stack of crates I had seen earlier. Oh, perfect! There's a hazmat helmet in here. I dug through the other crates and found the rest of the suit. I put it on and saw it was also lined with armor, which gave me even more protection than before. Let's go test it out. I ran outside, and nothing happened. The suit worked perfectly. I even went and splashed around in an acid puddle with no problems at all. Looks like we're good to go. Let's get out of here. On days 20 to 22, I was making my way back from the warehouse when I came across a camp in the wilderness. I snuck up to the edge of an overlook to get a better look. It's the Wasteland Raiders from before. I don't see their leader with them, though. This was going to be my best chance to get the jump on them, so I snuck down the ridge and around the backside of their camp. Using some nearby sand, I put down a couple blocks to climb over the top of their base. Okay, it looks like there's just a couple guys down here. I think I can sneak up on both of them. I hopped down and quickly took the first guy out with my machete. It made a little bit of noise, but the other Raiders didn't seem to notice. It looks like you're up next. I snuck up to the other raider and managed to beat him down before he could sound the alarm too. After he vanished, I noticed he had dropped a couple of things. A shotgun? I can use this. And what's that? Orders. I opened up the book and saw it contained orders from the boss. That must be the Finkel. Looks like he's trying to expand his operation. I'm going to have to try harder to get to him sooner. With the shotgun in my inventory, I then snuck up to the corner and peeked around at the guys by the fire. This is for John! I blasted the first guy before taking out my machete to finish him off. You guys won't hurt anyone else again! I swung my machete and took the second guy out as well. With the camp cleared, I now had the freedom to scavenge the place for supplies. I went digging through the chest and managed to get some more shotgun shells, iron, and even found a stock attachment, which I added to my shotgun. It looks like I've got everything I can get from here, but I know there's more of them out here. I've got to take them down, and soon! On day 23, I was making my way across the desert when I saw something strange lodged in the land ahead. Whoa, is that what I think it is? As I got closer, I could see it was a giant sub. Submarine, that is. I'm not sure how this got here, but it's crazy to see a big sub all the way out here. Very cool label on the side, though. Looks like a bell. Sub and ring the bell? If that means something to you, I say do it. On days 24 to 29, I arrived back at the base and saw I had filled up with zombies again. Oh brother, I thought I'd gotten rid of all of these guys. I pulled out my shotgun and got to work. The zombies didn't stand a chance against my new weapon. One by one, I mowed them down. This time, you won't get back up. I made my way through my base, picking them off. I couldn't do this over and over again, though. I wouldn't have the ammo for that. I decided this base was going to need some serious improvements if I was going to survive the dangers ahead. Once the final zombie was eliminated, I decided to get to work digging out a bunker under my base. A nuke had hit once before. There's no reason one couldn't happen again. Imagine if the Finkel had a nuke. How would anyone feel safe? I managed to clear out a large space under my base, but I'd have to come back to this later. Next, I got to work on putting up a wall using all the cobblestone I had collected from digging my bunker. As I was making my way across the base, I came across the abandoned cars outside the gas station. This reminds me of something John had shown me. I should take a closer look at these vans. I ran inside the station and grabbed a car jack as well as some tools and brought them back outside. I moved the van onto the jack and took a closer look. The engine block is actually in great condition. I might be able to use this to get the van inside up and running. I headed inside the shop and installed the engine into the van. I also put on some wheels I had found laying around the station. I hopped inside the van. Well, I still need to find the key and get some fuel, but once I have those, I'll be able to get around the wasteland quickly. Excited about my new find, I went back outside and kept working on the wall. I wound out to the edge of the station and started wrapping back to where I had started. I was almost done when I heard a shout from up the hill. Help! Help! Hey, mister, help! I looked up and saw a group of desert zombies chasing a little boy down the hill. Hang on, kiddo, I've got you! I didn't have my gun on me, so I rushed in with my machete in hand. Whoa, these guys are fast! I took a few hits, and these guys were doing some real damage. Why don't you guys pick on someone your own size? I kept swinging and managed to take the horde out. Hey, kid, are you all right? I am now, thanks, sir. My family is still back at the outpost. The zombie came out of nowhere, and I don't know if anyone else survived. We don't have a moment to lose. I can help. Show me to your outpost. The little boy went running back up the hill. Hopefully, we can get there in time. On days 30 to 35, the little boy and I sprinted back toward his family's outpost. As we got closer, it didn't look good. The whole base was on fire and completely overrun by zombies. I'm not liking the look of this kid, but I'll see what I can do. Stay here. I charged toward the base as the zombies attacked. Your sleepwalking days are over, pal. As I cut through the first layer of zombies, I noticed the little boy had followed me. What are you doing? This is too dangerous for you. My family is here. I can't stay back and hide. Okay, just stay behind me and we'll keep making our way through. I cut down the last group outside the settlement and noticed one of the zombies 
zombies had dropped a gun. Check it out, it's an AK-47. Let's lock and load. I ran ahead, unloading the clip into several of the zombies. This thing could pack a punch, but the ammo was limited. I soon ran out and had to switch to my machete. Keep going, mister. We can get through. As I fought ahead, I couldn't help but notice that this kid was small, afraid. I could respect that. Eventually, we had fought our way into the main street of the settlement and started checking the buildings for survivors. I'm sorry, buddy. It doesn't look like there's anyone here. I'll keep looking. I fought off more zombies as I moved to the other buildings, but building after building was checked with no survivors. I managed to finish off the last zombie and then met back up with the kid. I'm sorry, but it looks like everyone was wiped out by the zombies. We probably need to hurry and get out of here, though. More of them could show up at any time. The boy nodded and we started making our way out. Just before we had left the settlement, though, we heard some crying in the distance. Help! Help! Is there anyone there? I think that's my sister. The little guy took off running in the direction of the cries. Moments later, he came running back with a small girl in tow. My sister was hiding in a box. Thanks for coming to help us, sir. I'm happy to help, guys. Why don't you two come and stay at my base? They agreed, and as we started to leave, I noticed there was a workbench nearby. This will allow me to make more weapons and ammo, so I quickly scooped it up and we headed out. On days 36 to 40, I arrived back at the base with the kids. I brought them inside the station and told them to help themselves to some water and food. You guys get comfortable. I'll get to work on building you a place to stay. I got to work removing the shelving units, then put down some wood planks to build a platform. Once the platform was in place, I went ahead and set up some beds and other furnishings for the kids and myself. Here's a place for you guys. I know it's new, but I hope you can be happy here. Everything was looking good, and I decided to go ahead and start working on a workspace area. I had been collecting a bunch of material, but until now, didn't have a space to use them. Soon, the workspace was complete. I was out of ammo, and my weapons could use some improvements, so I set my shotgun on the workbench and worked on giving it some upgrades. Once that was finished, I did the same thing with the AK-47. With that upgraded, I then used some iron, gold, and gunpowder to fashion some bullets. I also set my machete down and fashioned an electric-powered machete that would help me hit twice as hard. I'd like to see the Finkel try and mess with me now. Then I went outside and got started on a new project. I was feeling bad about everything that had happened to the kids, but I had an idea for something that might cheer them up. Soon, I had completed building them their very own playground. Check it out, guys. I made this for you. Wow! Oh, Zoldo, thank you so much. We love it. While the kids played on their new toys, I tried tilling the ground and planting some seeds. I was happy to take care of these kids, but scavenging for food wasn't going to cut it. We needed a renewable resource. After a while, though, the soil rejected the seeds. This isn't working. I think I have another idea, though. I made my way back into the bunker and got to work digging out an indoor garden. The soil was no good for growing wheat, but maybe a mushroom farm could survive. After a while, the mushroom garden was complete. And since we would have a new food source, it only made sense for us to have a place to eat the food. I worked putting it together a wing of the bunker for all of us to store the food we grew and of course eat it. Soon the kitchen was finished. Phew, that was a lot of building. This base is gonna carry us all the way to the end. On days 41 to 43, I decided to scout out a nearby town for more supplies. I also wanted to test out the new upgraded weapons. As I approached the zombies, I whipped out my electric machete and put it to work. Whoa, this thing slices through these guys in one hit. My new weapon was incredible, but I couldn't get too excited as I could hear a terrifying groan off in the distance. Where's that noise going? fought my way through the zombies and saw a massive mutated zombie standing outside an old shop. That's when I could hear some cries for help coming from inside. Oh dear, get away from me! Help! Help! Oh no, someone is trapped inside! Hang on, I'll help you! I ran forward with my upgraded AK in hand, ready to fight. The zombie saw me and started walking towards me. One of the other zombies was in his way, so the big zombie laid down and crushed it to death. Whoa, this guy isn't messing around. He took a couple more steps toward me, then let out a blood <laughs> Oh, my ears! I opened fire and started working on draining his health. That made him mad. In anger, he picked up a block of sand and threw it at me. I barely got out of the way. Eat lead, you beast! I kept shooting at him and noticed that every time he let out one of his screens, the new zombies would rise up from the ground. I wanted to focus on taking him down, but I kept having to fight off the new zombies. He kept throwing blocks at me and managed to hit me with one, causing temporary blindness. Whoa, what's this? I can't see! I fired blindly, and when my vision returned, a zombie was only a few steps away. Whoa, get back! How was I gonna beat this guy? It felt like an endless stream of zombies, and I couldn't get a hit on him. My health was draining quick, too. That's when I had an idea. Hey, Mushbrain, follow me! The little zombies were a lot faster, so I managed to lead them away from the big guy, causing them to group up. Now that I was out of the big zombie's range, I was able to start picking off the little guys one by one. No wonder you guys want my brain. Yours are worthless. Eventually, I was able to take them out and focus on the big guy again. Anytime new zombies popped up, I quickly took them out so I could focus my attention on the monster. At long last, he fell and disappeared. Phew, that was a close one. Now, who was calling for help? I headed inside the store and looked around. Hiding behind the counter was a guy dressed in trader clothes. My good sir, you were marvelous. Oh, uh, no problem. I'm just glad you're okay. After that brilliant display of fighting, how could I not be? Please, take this incredible item as a token of my gratitude. The trader threw out 
sombrero? Oh, uh, thanks. This is really, really nice. You are most welcome, sir. You have no idea how many people would kill just for that. But hey, just because we're good friends, I'm willing to give you something even better. A priceless weapon for a price. I wasn't feeling super confident in this guy, but if he had a really powerful weapon, it could help. All right, sure. What's the price? I have a permanent shop not far from here full of supplies, but a certain monster has taken residence there. If you could take care of it for me, I'll happily give you this weapon. Sure, I can do that. How dangerous of a monster are we talking? Based on what you just fought, it should be no problem for an accomplished warrior such as yourself. If you say so, I'll be back soon. On days 44 to 49, I arrived outside the shop the trader was talking about. This place looks abandoned. It doesn't look like anyone has been here anytime recently, but I guess I better take a look inside. I headed inside and saw more of the same. The shelves were all empty and there didn't seem to be anything here. I checked a few of the boxes and managed to scrounge up a few bullets. Well, I'm not seeing anything. The monster must have left. I guess I'll head back and tell the trader the good news. Just then, I heard a terrible noise coming from and the stream of fire came tearing through. Oh no, it's the Skylurker! I started to run as the Skylurker came bursting through the window, chasing after me. I jumped through the other window and tried to escape. Let's see how you like this. I returned fire using the bullets I just picked up from my AK-47. I could tell it was doing damage, but he was doing damage right back. The fire breath was really starting to hurt. My health is dropping. I better get some cover. I quickly scarfed down some food to try to regenerate my health. The dragon continued to shoot fire, but I managed to start getting my health back. You can't run from me. The dragon took off into the sky as I kept shooting. I was starting to believe I could actually win this. The dragon finally landed. After a few more shots, he landed the final shot. Whoa, that guy is powerful. I hope he's the only one of his kind. I headed back into the store to finish seeing if there's anything else I could use. I soon saw that there was a container of fuel on one of the shelves. Oh wow, this is just what I need to get the van going. I checked some nearby boxes and also found a full set of heavy military gear. I equipped all of the new armor. Check it out, my armor is completely filled up. I really wish I could have found this before I fought the Skylurker. It didn't look like there was anything else in the store, so I headed out to go tell the trader the good news. I couldn't wait to see what powerful item he was going to reward me with. From days 50 to 53, I made my way back to the trader. As I re-entered the town, I slashed my way through another horde of zombies. Out of the way, dopey. After cutting through all of the zombies, I entered back into the shop and saw the trader had nodded off in his chair. Hey, buddy, I'm back. The trader slowly stirred and nearly fell out of his chair when he saw me. You survived? I mean, you survived, just like I thought you would. I am definitely happy to see that you survived, just like I thought you were going to survive. I did. The Skylurker was strong, but I managed to take it down. I'm here to collect the powerful item you promised me. Ah, yes, the powerful item. Yes, I should have that. Let's see. The trader walked over to a chest and began rummaging through it. Uh, hmm. Yes, that, that should be good enough. The trader whipped around, holding a massive rocket launcher. How's this for a powerful item? Whoa, that looks awesome. I'm going to be able to take down tons of enemies with that. Ah, uh, yes. Maybe aim for taking down just one of those tons of enemies. This is quite simply the greatest and most powerful weapon ever made. So powerful that it can't survive more than a single shot. So use it wisely and not anywhere near me. He tossed it over and I saw it was called a Comet Fall. What a cool name. I'll have to save it for someone particularly powerful. On days 54 to 57, I was heading back to my base when I heard a strange but terrifying noise up ahead. What was that? It sounded like a Skylurker, but different. I kept running ahead when I saw something crawl over the top of the building up ahead of me. I stopped dead in my tracks. Is that, is that a zombified Skylurker? Sure enough, the Skylurker I had killed was just ahead of me, but had been turned into a zombie. It took off from the building and landed right in front of me. Okay, I know we had our misunderstandings. The Skylurker let out a loud roar. I couldn't take any chances this time. I'm sorry, but you made me do this. I pulled out the Comet Fall. If there was ever a time I needed some major firepower, it was now. Time for your trip to the underworld. For good this time. I pulled the trigger, the rocket fired, and nothing. The weapon was a complete dud. What the heck? The dragon let out another roar and started spraying me with his undead dragon breath. He was even stronger than before. Who does that traitor think he is? He's gonna get me killed. I managed to get some shots off, but it was no use. My only hope was to run away. The dragon chased me for a bit and my health was getting super low, but luckily I was able to get away without dying. On days 58 to 62, I finally arrived back at my base. The very first thing I did was start working on a bedroom down in the bunker. With the zombified Skylurker running around, I felt like anything above ground wasn't going to be safe. As I was finishing up the room though, I heard a squeaky sound behind me. Oh, where did all these cockroaches come from? I must have hit a nest or something because the whole bunker was filled with disgusting cockroaches. I killed a few of them, but had to get out of there. That was so gross. How am I going to clear the base out? We can't live in a place like that. Just then, I had a brilliant idea. It was going to be the perfect solution to the pest problem. 
problem. To get started, I headed over to the edge of our base where a rattlesnake had been hanging around. Don't mind me, sir, I just need your tail. I quickly chopped up the rattlesnake and grabbed the rattle from its tail. I then ran over to the crafting table and used some wood to fashion together a maraca. But before I could enact my brilliant plan, the little girl from before ran up to me. Zozo, my brother told me you had run into a traveling trader. I actually know who he is. He had come by our encampment before. Oh really? Let me guess. He tried to make a quick buck by selling everyone a bunch of junk. That's right, but it's actually worse than that. He works for those wasteland raiders who have been giving you trouble. He rips innocent people off and gives their stuff to the raiders in exchange for protection. But I know where you can find him. I knew there was something wrong with that guy. He's just as much a part of the problem as those raiders. I'm gonna have to teach him a lesson. On day 63 to 66, I made plans to go and find the trader at the raider base. But first, I need to take care of some things at my base, especially the cockroach problem. All right, hopefully this works. I started shaking the maraca, and several of the cockroaches came running up to me. They were really into my music. Hey, man, nice rhythm. Mind if we take a turn? I'm glad you like it, and I'm happy to share. But you guys need to know you can't stay here. It's a health hazard. No worries, my guy. We'll be on our way in a bit. I tossed the maraca over to one of the cockroaches, and they really got into it. A simple infestation had turned turned into a party real quick. Even I couldn't help but take the sombrero I'd gotten from the trader and get in on the fun. Thanks for letting us crash your pad. Take this as a thanks. I know you humans like this kind of thing. The cockroach threw down the key to the van. Oh, perfect, I've been looking for this, thank you. A little while later, the cockroaches had all cleared out, so I decided to try and get the van up and running. I took the fuel I had gathered and topped off the tank, then hopped into the driver's seat and turned the key. The engine sprang to life. It's working, it's working. Just then, the little boy came running into the room. Oh, we got it running. Let's open the door and go for a spin. Oh, the door, I completely forgot about the door. We don't have any power, so I don't know how to get the car out. I detect the power station up the hill? I think that's where the gas station gets its power from. Great idea. I quickly ran up the hill toward the power station. As I approached, some zombified guards came running out at me. Time to power down, boys. I quickly cut my way through the hordes of zombies and made my way inside. There were a few more inside, but I was able to take them out as well. Hmm, it looks like the power switch is off. Let's see what happens when I flip this. I flipped the switch and heard the machine start up. Some electricity started crackling as well. Okay, I think it's working, but let me go check this sign outside to see if the power is leaving the station. Once outside, I flipped the on switch for the billboard, and after a bit, it turned on. All right, it looks like it's working. Let's head back to the base. Back at the base, I hit the garage door switch, which opened the door right away. I hopped in the van, started it up, and drove on out into the wasteland. Time to show that traitor who's boss. On day 67 to 70, I made my way to the raider's main base. According to the kids, the traitor liked to hang out here. As I rolled up to their base, I saw the base was guarded by a large, heavy door. Well, I gotta get in there somehow. Time to go in, guns blazing. I revved the van engine and charged at the door. Looks like playtime's over, boys. I leapt out of the van as some of the nearby raiders converged to my location. There were a lot of them, but they were no match for my upgraded armor and guns. Take me to your leader. I ran across the courtyard and ran into another squadron of raiders. Using the dome as a shield, I ran around the outside, picking them off one at a time. Yeah, you guys aren't very smart, are you? Soon I had made my way around and started working through the base. I was doing well so far, but where was the traitor? It was starting to feel like just an endless stream of raiders. And just as I was starting to think I had the upper hand, there was suddenly a huge explosion. Whoa, where did that come from? One of the raiders had a grenade launcher, and he was letting me have it. I quickly ran for cover and made my way around the back of the building. I snuck around and managed to pick him off, causing him to drop the grenade launcher. I think I'll take this for myself, thanks. Now I was feeling really powered up. I moved to the next section of the base and started lighting them up. I launched grenades, used my AK, and blasted them with my shotgun. I was a one-man wrecking crew, and no one was going to stop me. On day 71 to 74, I was still fighting my way through the base when I noticed a familiar face on top of the boat. It was the trader. I've got another present for you. The trader threw something at me. It was a grenade. The grenade exploded in my face, but it was just a smoke grenade. Man, this guy didn't even have good weapons for himself. What a joke. Using the smoke as cover, I quickly moved to the other side of the area, launching some grenades as I went. You fooled me for the last time. I launched a grenade up at the trader. It hit him, but not hard enough. I had to get up there. I popped out of my spot and managed to pick off the remaining raiders. Now there was nothing between me and the trader. Don't you even think about running. I clambered up the back of the boat and climbed up by the trader. You feeling lucky, punk? The trader shook his head and quickly put his gun away. Okay, okay, ha ha ha, you've got me. Please, I didn't mean for it to all end up like this. Please, take everything I've got. You can have it all. The trader started dumping everything he had in his pockets. This guy had a ton of junk. You think I want your trash? Drop everything. He then threw out some emeralds, amongst other valuable items. That's everything, I promise. Is it really? The trader paused and threw out a few more items. 
Okay, okay, for real, that's all. Please, take a look, take a look. I step forward to take a closer look, but the raider managed to slip behind me and run off the boat. Oh, dang it. Well, whatever, he's not very tough anyway. I took a closer look at everything he had dropped. As I suspected, it was mostly a bunch of junk. Most of it, that is. What's this? An antidote vessel. Greatly reduces the duration of negative effects. Hey, this will actually help me. I dropped the antidote into my belt. All right, now we've just got to find the raider leader and get him to show us to the Finkel. On day 75 to 78, I kept exploring the base and finally found myself standing face to face with the raider leader. Hey, remember me? <laughs> what do you think, you're some kind of hero now? This wasteland doesn't have to be a horrible place to live. Help me reach the Finkel and let's stop this madness. Who said this was a horrible place to live? I actually quite like how things are. Then I guess I'm gonna have to remove you myself. I'd like to see you try. The raider leader pulled out a flask and drank down a potion. Suddenly, he grew into a bigger and stronger version of himself. Then he whipped out a minigun. Come and get it, small fry. The leader jumped down and started raining bullets from his minigun. I didn't see this coming at all. I had to get undercover. Why are you running? I thought you wanted to talk. I returned fire with my AK as I ran away, but I wasn't sure how much damage it was actually doing to him. It didn't seem to slow him down a bit. Looks like it's time to switch strategies. I pulled out some grenades and let him have it. I ducked for cover as I heard the explosion. Did I get him? I took a second to refill my health and thirst, then he popped around the corner. You can't kill me that easy. I kept running as he fired at me. I tried my shotgun as well as more grenades, but nothing seemed to slow him down. At one point, he got me down to one heart. All I could do was lean against the wall. Oh, he's too strong. Is that cowering I hear? You tried and you failed. You are the first and you certainly won't be the last. The leader jumped around the corner to finish me off, but I managed to barely slip around the other corner. Oh, that's enough running. This ends now. The leader charged around the corner. I had nowhere to run, but suddenly, an explosion. You keep your filthy hands off my boy. <laughs> Maggie came running into the courtyard, peppering the leader with a barrage of bullets. This woman again? Who do you think you are? I hurried and ran for cover as I heard Maggie exchange fire with the leader. I scarfed down some food and water so I could get back into the fight as quick as possible. My health was soon restored and I ran back toward the fight. Then I heard the unmistakable click of an empty cartridge. As I looked over the edge, I saw the leader had Maggie cornered. Looks like you're out of bullets, you old hag. Any last words? Zozo, it's up to you now. Maggie charged at the leader, but he took her down. Maggie! <laughs> First John, and now Maggie. This ends now! In a rage, I jumped down from the building and hit him with my machete. I was hitting him so hard, he didn't even have a chance to shoot his gun. I threw down a smoke grenade to hide my tracks. Oh, where are you? The leader stumbled around in the smoke, and then I charged at him again. It was time to end this. You're done! I struck the final oh. blow, and the leader vanished. As he disappeared, I noticed he dropped his minigun. I picked it up. It was my turn to run this wasteland. On day 79 to 84, I took a moment to reflect on Maggie and all she had done for me. I had laid a flower where she passed. Maggie was one of the bravest people I've ever met, and if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have survived nearly as long as I have. I owe it to her to find the Finkel and save this wasteland. You have my word. I had one last moment of silence, then left to search more of the base. There had to be a book or map somewhere here that could help me. As I checked the chest, I found what I was looking for. Map to boss. This should tell me how to cross the desert and get to the Finkel. Elated, I headed back to the van. I had also picked up some more gas and off-road tires, so I was going to have a way to get there quickly. Just one more stop in my base to prepare, and I should be able to end this for good. On days 85 to 89, I arrived back at the base. As I pulled up, the little boy ran out and opened the garage for me. It was good to see him again. There was no time to spare, so I got right to work upgrading my weapons. First off was my grenade launcher, which I was able to improve using a block of iron. I also improved the minigun, so I could have an even higher rate of fire. The Finkel isn't gonna know what hit him. With the weapons upgraded, I then moved on to the car. Using the wrench, I took off the wheels and replaced them with the off-road wheels I had found. This thing is turning into a real tactical vehicle now. The next step was finishing up my base. If anything happened to me out there, I had to make sure the kids would have a safe and secure place to live. The first step was making sure it was properly lit. I went into each room of the base, as well around the grounds and set up a lighting system. Now I can light the whole base up with just the flick of a switch. Before I could head into my bunker, there was one more major project for the exterior. Maggie had been an inspiration to me and she always helped me when I was in need. I built her a statue so that people for generations could be inspired by her bravery. With the statue complete, I headed to the bunker and built a blast door. Then I hurried and finished up the rest of the inside. The bunker was soon complete, including a proper armory and construction room. It was time to upgrade my armor. I grabbed all the supplies I needed and got to work upgrading my armor. Using many of the materials I had scavenged, I was able to increase the durability of my armor. With the armor improved, it was time to go. I took my new armor off the armor stand and headed out. From days 90 to 94, I made my way across the uncrossable desert. The winds were blowing hard and every now and then there would be a huge dust cloud that would blow by, making it hard to see where you were going. I can 
can see why they call this an uncrossable desert. If I didn't have this map, I'd be lost for sure. I kept pressing forward, narrowly missing large trenches at times. There were even pools of lava I could have easily fallen into. After I had been traveling for a bit, I saw an oasis in the distance. Oh, perfect. I feel like I'm about to pass out from heat stroke and all this tactical gear. Unfortunately, a fixed van didn't come with a fixed air conditioner. I pulled up to the oasis and pulled off my helmet for a quick dip. Ooh, yeah, I needed this. I don't think I have too much further to go, though. I was relaxing when I started to hear a strange noise. I jumped out of the water and pulled out my gun. What is that? It sounds like digging. The sound continued until all of a sudden, a sandworm erupted out of the ground and attacked me. Oh, whoa! I tried to shoot at the worm, but it had gone back underground. A moment later, it leaped out again. Oh, I could barely hit this thing, and it looked like it was getting bigger. The sandworm kept moving in and out of the sand as I managed to get shots in here and there. All right, that's enough. I took out my minigun, and as the worm left out, I unloaded, taking it down. Yeah, I'm not risking that again. I'm getting out of here. On days 95 to 97, I continued across the desert in the van and finally saw the tower come into view. It was a massive dilapidated tower, but at the very top, I could see trees. Trees, this has to be the place. How else could someone have trees except by hoarding resources? It was butt kicking time. I charged into the main floor as a group of raiders started to attack me. Where's Finkel? The raiders were relentless, throwing themselves into my path but they were no match for my firepower. I made my way to the elevator. I'm sure the Finkel was hiding on the top floor. As I approached the elevator though, I could see it was broken. Oh man, looks like I'm gonna have to take the stairs. Good thing I've been doing my cardio. I ran into the stairwell and made my way up the long and winding column. After what felt like an endless amount of stairs, I popped out onto an office floor. A group of raiders were waiting and ambushed me. It's going to take more than that to beat me. It was a good thing I had taken time to upgrade my weapons and armor. I was taking a lot of hits, but nothing too bad so far. As I cleared out a room of raiders, I noticed one of them drop something. Whoa, check it out! It's a rocket launcher! I was feeling absolutely stacked now. On day 98, I took a second to catch my breath before rushing to the final battle. It had been almost 100 days since I had a view like this, so I went and took a peek out the window. This world has been destroyed, but there's still hope out there. As long as there are good people supporting your cause, it's your duty to reward them with what they want. Time to finish this. On day 99, I finally reached the top of the tower and saw someone sitting in a chair overlooking the desert. Finkel, it's over. Your raiders are dead and you have nowhere else to go. You've lost. The Finkel chuckled. Zozo, is it? Ah, oh, sit. There's no need for any more violence. Haven't you been through enough? He was just an old man. How was everyone so afraid of him? Maybe I could reason with him. I sat. Look, there's a lot of good people out there. Surely there's a way we can all work together instead of for our mutual destruction. The Finkel paused for a moment. Do you want to know how I got this car? I used to believe like you did too. I believed people could work together. We lived in a world full of natural resources, enough for everyone to live happy lives. But was everyone happy? No! People were left in the streets to fight for every scrap of food. So that's why I did it. That's why I dropped the ball. I couldn't believe it. Finkel was behind the destruction of this whole world. Why would you do that? There were other options. And look at yourself. You're no better than the people you set out to destroy. You're right, Zozo. Because this is the only way things can be. So why shouldn't I be at the top? Why shouldn't I get what I want? You've lost your mind. So let me show you how I got this car. Let me show you the price I've paid for power. The Finkel clicked a button on his arm, and he started to shake. A burst of light and smoke appeared around him, and he transformed into a huge mutated cyborg. I'm sorry you traveled so far to die. I'm going to crush you like a bug. No one can stop me, not even you. The Finkel charged at me, and I had no choice but to run. This guy is crazy. I've got to get out of here. As he chased me, he broke through the walls. I tried shooting him, but it looked like it had little effect on his metallic cyborg skin. All I could do was run away. I might be running out of floors here. I'm gonna have to make a final stand. On day 100, I reached a large open room as the Finkel came storming up the stairs behind me. I was trapped. It's time to accept your fate, Zozo. I have the resources. I have the power. I have your friend. My friend? The Finkel let out a uh, hollow uh, mechanical uh, uh, laugh. John, is it? He's here. My prisoner. He keeps the farms operational. But who cares? You'll never see him again. The Finkel let out a shriek and punched the ground, causing a group of zombies to rise up and attack. But I wasn't worried. I knew how to deal with this. I quickly took aim and picked off the zombies. I couldn't have anything distracting me from my main target. Is that all you've got? 
I'll show you what I've got. The Finkel charged, trying to crush me with his metallic body. I took out my minigun and let it rip. It looked like if I could hit his human parts, I was actually doing a bit of damage. You're not as powerful as you think you are. He angrily hit the ground, trying to strike me with shockwaves. He managed to get some hits in, but I was holding my own. As we passed by the windows, I had an idea. Hey, Stinkle, bet you can't get me. He chased me close to the window, and I managed to loop back on him. I took out my rocket launcher and took aim. Your reign of terror is over. Have a nice flight. The rocket exploded near him, launching him backwards out of the window. As he fell, my thoughts turned to John. Was he really here? I had to look for him. As I looked over the edge, I saw the Finkel had survived the fall, but he was clearly very injured. You think you could kill a machine? I will never be stopped. Never. Just then, a familiar roar echoed, and the zombie Skylurker came sweeping in. No, not a Skylurker. The Skylurker opened its mouth and started melting the Finkel with its dragon breath. After a few moments, he was gone, and the Skylurker flew away. I quickly turned and headed up the stairs. I had to find John. As I reached the forest on top of the tower, I looked around frantically. At long last, I saw him. John! Zozo, is that really you? We greeted each other as old friends. Come on, buddy, let's grab this fresh water and take it to the people. With this, we can rebuild the world. We loaded the water up in a trailer and drove off into the desert, back toward the base. The world was a little bit safer, but this was a nuclear wasteland. Who knows what trouble could come knocking next. On day one, I woke up in a basket, floating down a river. Whoa, where am I? Who am I? The basket washed up on the edge of the river, and I hopped onto the shore. That's when I noticed I had a cane in my hand. I took a closer look. The cane of Moses, a reminder of his parents. I'm Moses, but I'm just a baby with three hearts. At least my parents gave me this cool cane that doesn't seem to have any special powers. I wonder where they are. Just then, I heard a splash in the water behind me, and a crocodile came jumping out of the water. Ah, I gotta go. A giant crocodile like that could eat a baby like me in one bite. As I ran into the desert, I soon climbed a hill finding a small village on the other side. A village? I'll bet there's someone here who can help me find my parents. As I ran into the village, I noticed there didn't seem to be anyone around. Hello? Anyone? Can anyone hear me? Hello? I had run through the whole village, but nobody was here. Another mystery to solve. It was soon getting late, so I decided that I'd spend the night here. Maybe I could find out what was going on tomorrow. On day two, I woke up to the silence of the abandoned village. If I'm gonna find out where everyone went, I need to be prepared. The house I was in needed some repairs, so I headed over to the trees to get myself some wood. Using the wood I had gathered, I made myself a stone pickaxe as well as some wood slabs. Then I used the wood slabs to fill in the roof. Next up, more tools. I headed over to a nearby hill and used my pickaxe to gather limestone that could be used to make limestone tools. As I was mining though, a husk suddenly appeared at the top of the hill. Oh no, I don't have any weapons yet. I hurried and put together a crafting table, then used that to craft a limestone sword. I turned around just in time. The husk and I had a fearsome battle and he brought me down to half a heart. Armed with my sword though, I was able to deliver the final blow. That's what you get for trying to mess with me. It was at that moment that I realized I didn't have any food. I had seen a wheat field earlier, so I built myself a bridge across the river so I could go to it. I was pretty sure I couldn't swim. I was just a baby after all. With my stomach growling, I quickly started harvesting as much wheat as I could. Suddenly, I heard something rustling in the wheat behind me and turned to see a hippo. Ha! Ah, oh wait, you're just a baby, like me. What's your name? Just then, I heard a terrifying sound and turned to see an adult hippo looking right at me. Get away from my little brother! He looked angry and I still only had half of a heart. I had to get out of there. I ran back across my bridge, breaking a couple blocks behind me. Once I had gotten away, I hurried and made myself some bread. Bread has never tasted so good. Later that evening, I heard a sound outside my window. When I looked outside, the baby hippo from before was out there. Hey, I'm sorry to bug you, but I wanted to apologize for earlier. My brother Hugo was kind of intense. I hopped down the side of the building. That's okay. He really scared me. You seem nice, though. I try to be. My name is Harry. Here, I brought you some fish to say sorry. I'll see you around. I thanked him for the fish and quickly got them cooking in the furnace so they could be ready for the next day. Then I used some of my remaining limestone to finish making a set of limestone tools. On day three, I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of footsteps. The villagers, they must be back. I hurried down the ladder to greet them when I was suddenly swarmed by a group of husks. Oh no, I forgot to fix the door. The husks tried to surround me as I ran out of the house. I could fight one of them off, but it wasn't looking like I could handle a whole group of them. Just as all hope was lost, Hugo came charging in to help. In no time, he managed to fight off all of the husks. Wow, you saved me. Thank you. No problem. Harry told me he stopped by and said you were a nice guy. Sorry for scaring you earlier. That's okay. Those husks should have been more scared. Feel free to stop by any time. After Hugo had left, I suddenly felt more strength returning to my limbs, and I grew into a teenager. And now I have seven hearts. The next day, I was walking around the edge of town when I saw someone taking a look at the basket I had spawned in. Just then, the crocodile that had attacked me showed up again, catching her off guard. Hang on, I'll help you. I ran over to her and started fighting off the crocodile. With my new strength, I was much better suited for this fight. I kept swinging my sword and was able to take him out. Wow, nice moves. I thought I was a goner for sure. I'm happy to help. Say, I was hoping you might be able to help me 
with something. The village over there is completely empty. Do you know what happened to everyone? Oh, yes, the people that used to live here. They're gone. Yeah, yeah, do you know where? Yeah, I do. They moved. Oh, really? All of them? Something bad must have happened. Uh, no, not bad. Um, they all live in the city now. My dad is actually the pharaoh there. Speaking of, you should come live in the city. It's really not safe out here. I agreed, and she showed me the way. I was getting tired of being attacked by crocodiles and husks every day. On days four to five, the princess and I arrived at the big city. The princess, whose name was Nubia, showed me around. Wow, this city is huge. It must have taken a long time for you guys to build everything. Nubia simply nodded as we walked closer to the palace. She was taking me to meet the pharaoh. As I entered the throne room, I could see the pharaoh sitting on his throne. Nubia, welcome home. And who do we have here? Father, I wanted you to meet Zozo. I was attacked by a crocodile, and he saved me when I thought all hope was lost. Nubia, what have I told you about wandering along the river? Thank goodness young Zozo was here to save you. Zozo, I am in your debt. Please, let me settle it by giving you a place to stay here in our prosperous city. Wow, that would be amazing. This is a beautiful city. I will give you one of our finest rooms. You can live next door to my son. Ramses, come say hello to our new friend. Ramses came running over with two servants behind him. I heard you saved my sister. Nice going. Although, don't get too comfortable. She's always needing someone to bail her out. Nubia rolled her eyes as the pharaoh led us out to a balcony overlooking the city. This city is my pride and joy. As our newest citizen, I just want to make sure you understand its history. Many years ago, I was born to rule and lead these people. If not for me, this place would be a disaster. So anyone who lives here should be happy and grateful to be here. I nodded, but man, this guy really seemed full of himself. But I did appreciate having a place to stay. I couldn't wait to meet all the happy people in the kingdom. Nubia, please, show Zozo around the city so he can see everything. Everything I've accomplished. Ramses, you join them. Go on. Ramses, Nubia, and I left the palace and they began to show me around. There were some really amazing things to see. There were monuments, statues, and lots of buildings. This was some of the best building I had ever seen. Wow, I can't believe your dad was able to build all of this. That's really impressive. Well, he didn't actually build it himself. The people from the desert villages built a lot of it. Yeah, but if dad wouldn't have given them direction and a place to live, they would have been miserable. They're much happier here. We continued the tour, but I started to notice that most of the people didn't seem to look very happy. In in fact, I thought all of them looked like they were hungry. I wasn't so sure about all of this. At the end of the day, Ramses showed me to my room. It was a lot nicer than the rooms of the people we had passed. He told me to get some rest, as tomorrow there was a special show scheduled that he thought I'd enjoy. I headed over to the bed and laid down for the night. On day six through eight, I followed Nubia and Ramses out of the palace and to the city coliseum. Ramses seemed pretty excited about the special show we were going to. We soon reached the VIP booth where the pharaoh was already seated. You can take my seat, Zozo. I like to get close to the action. As I sat, I noticed that Nubia didn't seem very happy to be here, but she didn't say anything. Just then, a door in the arena opened, and a gladiator came walking into the arena as the crowd cheered. Were we about to watch some kind of fight? Then the door on the opposite side opened, and a giant hippo entered the arena. Is that Hugo? Hugo was chained to a post, and the gladiator started to attack him. The crowd began to cheer. What is he doing? He's going to hurt him. Yes, my boy, that is the point. That's our strongest warrior down there, giving us all a little entertainment after a long week's work. But it's not even a fair fight. Hugo's chained to the post. He can barely fight back. Hugo, don't tell me you've Name the beast. He's no beast. He's my friend. I'm sorry, but I have to do this. I thought I saw Nubia give me a small grin as I jumped down into the arena. I ran up to the gladiator and hit him with my sword. What the? Where did this kid come from? My hit had managed to distract the gladiator for just a second, which let Hugo start to get some hits in. With the gladiator distracted, I quickly broke the post he was chained to, then jumped on his back. Enough! Several pillars rose up from the ground as the pharaoh rose from his seat. Zozo, we opened our homes to you out of the kindness of our hearts, and this is how you repay us? If you won't accept us, then we can never accept you. Leave now, or my gladiator will destroy you. You are hereby banished. This hippo is my friend. I can't support someone who would hurt him for their own entertainment. I'm sorry. I turned and rode out of the city on Hugo's back. How was I going to survive now? On days 9 through 10, I was wandering in the desert. Hugo had told me to stay with him, but I couldn't risk putting him in danger, so I continued on alone. But I couldn't feel too bad for myself, as I was suddenly attacked by a pack of hyenas. I'm definitely not in the city anymore. Get back, you fiends! The hyenas snapped at me, but I managed to hit them enough to keep them all away from me. I better hurry and find some place to set up camp. It's starting to get hot out here. Lucky for me, I soon came across some old ruins. There are all kinds of cool structures here. As I walked through the ruins, I also saw there was an oasis nearby. Oh man, this is just what I needed. This oasis was a beautiful spot to build a camp 
to live in, so I got right to work building myself a house. It wasn't anything big or fancy, but it was just right for me. I soon finished. Well, I might as well check out some of these ruins while I'm here. I hiked into some of the nearby ruins and started looking through the dusty crates. There were some basic food and resources, but the real gem was the golden desert armor. I kept looking through the crates and was able to find an entire set. This is great. I'm already starting to feel safer. I hiked back to my camp when I heard some sheep nearby. I gathered them up and put them in a pen. These sheep give me an idea. I found a nice plot in the desert and started working on a statue. I think this is going to look really cool out here. I'd love to hear what you think it's going to be. After a bit, part one of the statue was complete. On days 11 through 12, I woke up to something interesting outside my door. It was a note. Hello, I saw you come to the old ruin down below. I saw you build with such passion and enthusiasm. You show great promise. I would like to meet you. Come to the location marked on the map. It is in the mountains near here. Huh, this could be a trap set by the pharaoh, but I think it's worth the risk. They might be able to help me. With the map in hand, I made my way out into the desert. I had to climb a large hill, but as I reached the top, I saw a torch outside a cave. Inside the cave was an old man. Zozo, I'm so happy you've come. Hi, who are you? I used to be the leader of the desert people, but the pharaoh came and forced them to work for him. He says everyone is happy, but that's because anyone who says otherwise is never seen again. I knew something was off. I could tell the people in the city weren't as happy as he said they were. Are you going to save them? The old man smiled. In a way, but that work will be done through you. Me? How could someone like me ever defeat a powerful pharaoh? He is powerful, but he relies too much on his own strength. There are other ways we can defeat him. What do you mean? That city is his greatest source of pride. If we can destroy his city, not only will he fall apart, but the people of the city can rise up and escape. That city is nothing without the work of the people. It will be up to you to make things bad for him. I should also mention that there is a powerful item buried in this cave. You're not ready for it yet, but I know one day you will be. I'll do my best. I think I know where to get started. I thanked the old man and headed out of the cave. It was time to head back to the city. On days 13 to 15, I crossed the desert back toward the city. The city soon came into view, and I started stacking my way to the top of the city. If I was going to cause some disruptions, I needed to get a closer look at what was around. I ran along the top of the city and looked over the edge. That's when I noticed there was a water supply running through the center of the city. Hmm, if I could disrupt the water supply, that would definitely cause some problems for the pharaoh. But I can't cut it off. That would hurt innocent people. Just then, I had the perfect idea, but I needed to head back to the river. I ran back across the city top and headed to the river. Soon, I had reached the riverside, and I could see flowers on the other side. Need a ride? Hugo, perfect timing. I was just wondering how I would get across. I soon reached the other side and started gathering up as many roses and poppies as I could. I was going to need them for my special project. Once I had finished collecting as many as I could, I met Hugo back down by the river. Hey, I found this health regeneration necklace at the bottom of the river. I thought you might be interested in it. Hugo tossed out the necklace, which I picked up and equipped. He then let me hop on his back and gave me a ride back across the river. Time to get back to the base and start working on my secret plan. On day 16 to 19, I got right to work building a mill. I had a big project in mind, so I was going to need a tool to help me get all of the work done quick. The mill was soon complete, and I got right to work, adding all of the flowers I had gathered the day before to the machine. It didn't take too long, but I soon had a large amount of red dye. This ought to be enough dye. It's all coming together. Just then, I heard a sound outside and went to check out the noise. There was a group of tomb raiders outside. They must be here to raid the ruins. They caught sight of me and charged. I'm not a bad guy. Back off. The raiders were strong and nearly took all of my health. They had some good gear. I wonder if they found all of this in the old tombs. Thankfully though, I was able to overcome their sword swings and take them all out. As they disappeared, I noticed that they dropped some iron bars. Iron! This will help me be even stronger than before. Guess I'm glad they came here after all. Just then, I felt more strength surge through me and I grew into an adult. And check it out, I even have a beard. Oh, and more hearts too. I headed over to the crafting table and by using the iron I had picked up, made myself some new iron gear. If anything went wrong on my secret mission tomorrow, I would be ready for a fight. Then I went over to the statue and got to work on the second part. It might look like I'm finishing it, but I have a whole other part to do. Be sure to keep watching to see what it is. On days 20 to 22, I snuck my way back over to the city, ready to put my plan into action. But first, I had to make it there, as I was suddenly attacked by a group of wraiths. Ah, you guys are freaky! With my new iron gear though, they were going to have a hard time taking me out. I swung my sword and was able to destroy all of them. That was scary, but I've got a mission to complete. Soon I was making my way through the city streets. There were a lot of guards wandering around, but if I was sneaky, I could weave through the buildings. I had to get to the water supply. I almost got caught but finally, I made it to the source of the water. Halt! Uh-oh, looks like I've got company. A small group of guards attacked. There were a lot of them, but I had to see this through. They hit me again and again, nearly taking all of my health. I can't let them win. I must save the people of this city. I rose up and started swinging even stronger than before. I was starting to win. There was only one guy left, but he managed to get away. I better hurry. I'm sure there will be more guards coming soon. I ran back over to the water supply and started throwing the dye into the water. If I could turn the water red, people might start blaming the pharaoh for their lack of clean 
clean water. It took a little while for the change to take effect, but soon the water had all turned red. What do you think you're doing? I looked down and saw the guard had returned with the gladiator from the arena. I wasn't going to be able to run away this time. Who do you think you are coming back here? And what happened to the water? What have you done? The pharaoh is no hero. He's forcing people to work for him. It's not right. He needs to let these people go. No one's going to ruin our city, especially a little desert man like you. The gladiator attacked. This was their city's strongest warrior. This was going to be quite the fight. He had a massive sword that really packed a punch. It doesn't have to be like this. Surely you can see that the pharaoh is evil. My life seems pretty good. Too bad yours is over. My health was nearly gone, but I had to keep fighting for these people. I kept moving and was finally able to land the final hit. As the gladiator disappeared, he dropped his sword. A claymore, huh? This thing is huge, but it's as light as a feather. I took a look at the guard and he took off running again. What a wimp. I took a look at the water again. Well, I'm surely going to get the pharaoh's attention now. Just then, I heard a bunch of feet running. A whole battalion of guards were running right at me. That's my cue. Time to go. I jumped over the wall, and the guards ran up and looked down at me. Now I just need to wait and see how the pharaoh responds to my mission. On days 23 to 26, I was still making my way across the desert. Up ahead, I could see some orange rocks. Oh, I could use those for the next stage of the statue. I ran over and got to work mining them out. I've got a cool idea for what I could add to the statue. I think everyone will really like it. As I finished mining, I noticed there was a cave nearby. Maybe there are resources inside I could use. I made my way down into the cave and soon came across some iron ore. Perfect, this is just what I was looking for. I kept going deeper into the cave, mining more resources. Suddenly, the room opened up and there was a massive subscribe on the wall. Oh, wow. Thank you to everyone who has already subscribed. I'm having a lot of fun and I hope you are too. If you haven't subbed yet, I'd love to have you join the team. On days 27 to 31, I was out of the cave and heading back to my base. As I was crossing the desert, I saw a bunch of camels escaping from their caravan. Hang on, I'll help you. The camels went running off behind a small dune and I followed them to the other side. I soon saw that the animals had gathered at a nearby oasis. Hey guys, you were just a little thirsty, weren't you? Suddenly, the camels ran away and a giant crab came walking out of the water. Whoa, where the heck did you come from? The crab snapped at me with his pincers as I swung my sword. His hard shell was difficult to crack, but not too hard for my new sword. The crab was quickly defeated. Whew, now let's get these camels back to their rightful owner. I led the camels back to the grateful trader. Thank you, thank you, sir. Say, are you the one who changed the city water red? I'm glad someone is standing up to the pharaoh. I have a lot of good friends trapped in that city. I passed by there and the pharaoh was pretty mad. Oh yeah? I'm glad to hear it worked. Hopefully it'll make the people angry enough to rise up against him. Well, everyone is upset and he's mad, but he's made it even harder for everyone. He's also doubled security around the city. I'm afraid it didn't do what you were hoping. Oh no, I'll have to figure something else out. Ah, I know just the thing. The trader headed over to one of his chests, then returned and placed a strange box in front of me. Here, you can have this. Think of it as a thank you for rescuing my camels. The trader opened the box and a bunch of frogs jumped out. I didn't see how a box full of frogs, which now had no frogs in it, was going to be any help, but I didn't want to be rude, as he was clearly excited to give it to me. Wow, that is so cool! Thanks! I invited the trader to come stay at my base with me to sell his wares. The city wouldn't be safe for him if people knew he had helped me. He agreed, but needed to take care of some things first. I picked the box up and headed back to my base. What could I do next to stop the pharaoh? On days 32 to 35, I returned back to my base. I wasn't sure what to do next yet, but figured it would be a good time to empty my pockets and start smelting the iron I had collected. With the iron ingots, I then crafted a full set of desert iron armor, as well as a new set of iron tools. I had also gotten a few diamonds in the cave earlier, so I used those to make myself a new diamond pick. Whatever my next step is, I'll be ready for a fight. Just then, I heard the sound of a camel outside and met the trader as he rode up. Hey, glad you could make it. I was thinking about it, and I think it'll be a good idea if we build you a shop. Maybe people are scared to leave the city because they have nowhere else to go. That is a brilliant idea. I just picked up some fresh items, so I have plenty of things to sell. I quickly got to work building the trader a shop. If I couldn't free all the people from the city, at the very least I could give the ones who do escape a place to live. The shop was soon finished. Once the trader had settled in, I walked up to see what he had to sell. Hey, I hope you're all settled in. I was hoping you might have some kind of special item that could help me get back at the pharaoh. The trader gave me a confused look. What do you mean? I thought you would be able to do something with the frog box. Oh yeah, I mean it was it was really cool when you showed me it was full of frogs, but since they all had hopped away, I don't really know what to do with it now. Ah, I see. I may not have explained it very well. You see, it's an infinite frog box. Every time you open it, more frogs will come out. You will never run out of frogs. Man, this guy was really into frogs. But just then, inspiration struck. I had a new idea to get back to the pharaoh, but I was going to need some help from some old friends. On days 36 to 39, I had arrived back at the river where I met up with Hugo and some of his pals. Hugo, I had a question for you. I recently got this box that can create infinite frogs and I know just what to do with it. The problem is, I don't have a good way to get into the city now that it has increased security. Do you know a good way in? Before Hugo could answer though, the small bird on his back piped up. Oh, I know. 
know just the thing. Hang on one second. The little bird flew off. Where could he be going? Moments later, he returned with a much bigger bird. This is my friend. We're all sick of the pharaoh capturing all of our bird friends and keeping them in cages. The big bird explained that he could pick me up and carry me over the city, which would let me shake the box, dropping frogs through the whole city. That's a perfect plan. Meet me at the mountaintop near my base tomorrow morning. We've got some frogs to drop. On days 40 to 43, the big bird met me on top of the mountain. I hopped on his back, and we flew away toward the city. As we got closer, I could see all the new guards defending it. Let's see them defend against this. As we flew over the city, I started dropping frogs. Down below, I could see the city had started to wake up, with a few people roaming around the streets. As the frogs landed, I could hear screams as people began to panic. It looks like the plan is working. By the time I had finished dropping the frogs, the sun had fully risen, and the whole city could see something was wrong. I was too busy looking down at the people when I accidentally slipped and fell off the bird, landing in the water below. Oh, uh-oh, that wasn't part of the plan. I hopped up as a couple of townspeople ran over to me. Zozo, these frogs are disgusting, but we're so glad you're here. The pharaoh is so mean. We want to help, but don't have anywhere to go. Just then, I heard a shout. The guards were coming. Stay behind me. I have a safe place we can go. We ran for the exit as a group of guards charged at us. Looks like I'm going to have to fight my way out of this one. The guards were intense, but I was able to cut them down and keep pushing for the exit. Soon enough, we had fought our way out of the city and ran to the desert. I wonder if the frogs would be enough for the pharaoh to let the people go. On days 44 to 49, I arrived back at the base with all of the villagers. We went to have a chat with the trader. My goodness, Sozo. Look at all of these customers. They are, I mean, people. I'm so happy they were able to escape. So am I. They are here to join our cause. Hopefully, we can help everyone else escape too. But in the meantime, let's start building a place for you all to stay. Out behind my house, I got to work making a space for all of the villagers to build their homes. Once the area was prepped, they helped me to build their houses. We had a real town coming together. Soon, all the houses were done. Good job, everyone. This place is looking really great. I can't wait to get more people to move in. With all of the villagers moved in, I was feeling inspired to add the next part of the statue. With a little bit of help, I was able to finish the first part of the next section. Any guesses what I'm building next? After I was finished, the villagers came up to me with a real problem. If people were going to live here, we needed a way for everyone to eat. That's a good point. I think it's a good chance for us to strike back at the pharaoh too. I think we should go back to the city and bring all of their livestock here. That food should belong to you. The villagers agreed. The city would surely fall without a food source. This is a great idea. But I'm sure the pharaoh is going to have increased security. How am I going to be strong enough to get in this time. Eh, uh, Zozo, who are you talking to? I think the heat might be getting to you, but I did find something in the ruins that might help with your problem. Follow me. On days 50 to 53, the trader led me to the tomb entrance. He explained that the tomb seemed untouched, but he was too scared to go inside. Well, I'll go take a look. Hopefully we can find something helpful. I ran inside. Right ahead of me was a book on a pedestal, so I opened it up. Uh, yeah, this book isn't very helpful. If I can't even read the book, how am I ever going to get into this place? Wait a second, what's that? Just behind me was a button. I hit the button and heard a secret panel on the wall open. I headed through and entered a massive room. This must have been a pharaoh's tomb. Who dares enter my tomb? If you can defeat my guardians, then perhaps I will share my secret power with you. Suddenly, a bunch of gas appeared and started to attack me. Woo, scary. But that secret power sounds just like what I need. The gas were not very happy to see me and kept shooting fireballs. Unlucky for them, though, I was able to hop around and hit the fireballs right back at them. As I destroyed them, I saw that they were dropping gunpowder. Gunpowder? That gives me an idea for the next time we go to the city. I kept fighting until finally all of the gas were defeated. I picked up the gunpowder and took a look around the room. I soon saw a passageway, which led me deeper into the tomb. You may have defeated my gas, but I am not finished with you yet. Just then, I ran into a jackal, and boy was this guy strong. Those spears are way too OP. I was able to use my shield to block, but just a few hits from the jackal would take me out. I managed to eat some food and heal up, then began to fight back. It was a close one, but I was able to win the fight. I kept going through the tomb when I saw a small tunnel up ahead. Suddenly, I fell down a hole, landing in a small pool of water. What? How did you get this far? Well, you won't like this. Just then, a bunch of blazes spawned in and started to attack. One of them even managed to catch me on fire. The fire definitely didn't feel good, but luckily, they weren't as strong as they looked. I was able to defeat them pretty quickly. There was a staircase nearby, so I followed that. I had to be close. Just then, I entered another room and saw the mummified pharaoh appear. I made it! I'll take that secret power, please. You know, I thought about it, and I decided I want to keep it. Shazam! A bunch of mummies spawned and attacked me. They were slow, but strong. But I had made it this far, and nothing was going to stop me. The mummies were soon destroyed. Ah, uh, okay. I guess I'll just do this myself. Pharaoh hopped down and started to attack me too. You know, we don't have to fight. You can just give me the prize. Do you have any idea how bored I am? At least this is something to do. Hiya! Honestly, if this guy wasn't attacking me, we'd probably be friends. Soon enough, I had landed a bunch of blows, and he was nearly defeated. Okay, okay, I think you've proved your point. 
Go ahead and take the prize. The mummy pharaoh disappeared. I hopped up and took a look inside of his tomb and found a totem of undying, a set of raw armor, and Horus' ascension. I quickly put on all of the armor and equipped the weapon. Just then, the power began to course through me and I leveled up into a powerful, full-grown man. And check it out. My beard is legendary. Before leaving the tomb, I had to try out the new weapon. Outside the room, I ran into some more mummies. I hit them with the Horus' ascension, which sent them flying into the air. Looks like it's time to head back to the city and get those animals. On days 54 to 57, I emerged from the tomb, then returned back to my house to craft. At my crafting table, I put together some TNT. You know what they say, the best way out is always through. We're gonna blast our way right through the walls. I went to talk to the villagers and a few of them agreed to come with me to help. We traveled across the desert and soon came to the farm on the edge of the city. I set up the TNT and set it off. Fire in the hole! The TNT blew a hole in the wall and we ran into the farm. All right, you guys start wrangling the animals and I'll get us some hay. I ran into a nearby shelter and picked up a few hay bales. I ran back outside and handed them out to the villagers. With the hay in hand, they managed to round up all the animals and lead them away. Looks like they're gonna make it out. I might as well grab some more wheat before I leave. I quickly got to it, cutting up as much wheat as I could. I had just about finished gathering all of the wheat and seeds when a group of guards ran up. But look who was leading them. Ramses, what are you doing here? Zozo, you're the man from the desert? I barely recognize you. I'm so happy to see you again. You're not angry to see me? I thought you were here to attack me. No, in fact, I've been trying to join you. All of us here have seen my father's power and influence fading. Please, let us join your community. I couldn't believe my luck. Ramses had been so nice to me before, and I was happy to have him as part of our group. The more people we had, the better chance we had to free the rest of the villagers. On days 58 to 62, I was back at the base when one of the villagers pulled me aside. He was nervous about Ramses being there with a bunch of palace soldiers. Could we really trust him? Before I could answer, Ramses walked up with his guards. Don't worry, friend. You don't have anything to worry about. If I didn't come with good intentions, I wouldn't tell you this. The Pharaoh is actually putting together a large army and plans to attack. If that's the case, then we need to get prepared. Please, if everyone could give me a hand, we can build everything we need. Don't you think it'll be wiser just to leave things how they are? This is a nice community here. Attacking the Pharaoh will only end in failure. I've seen how powerful this army is. I think you lack faith, my friend. We won't rest until everyone has been freed. I'm positive we can find a way to win. Ramses didn't seem convinced, but he agreed and asked what we needed to do to get ready. First things first, we started to clear out some of the old ruins. This was going to be the perfect place to set up our farms. We had an army to feed, so we had to make sure we had a good farm. Next, we got to work building a barracks for all of the soldiers. This would give them a place to rest and get ready for the fight ahead. I was able to get plenty of help, so we were able to finish it pretty quickly. Then I met Ramses outside. Ramses, I know living in the desert is quite a transition for you. I can build you a special place if you'd like. That is okay. I will live in a regular house like everyone else. However, I wouldn't mind helping you out with that statue. Ramses then joined me as we worked on the next part of the statue. It was really starting to come along. As we worked, I mentioned that I would go speak with the old man in the cave to see if he had any ideas. When I mentioned the old man, Ramses asked to join me, to which I agreed. We would go in the morning. Soon, the next part of the statue was complete. On days 63 to 66, Ramsey and I headed up the mountain toward the cave. As we crossed the mountaintop, we ran into a bunch of spiders. What are these spiders doing all the way up here? Ramsey's and I sprang into action, fighting them off. Working together, we were able to defeat them in no time. It was nice having a good fighter to help out. As we approached the cave, I could hear the old man's voice calling out to me. Zozo, you may enter, but only alone. Sorry, Ramses. You'll have to wait out here. Ramses agreed, and I entered the cave. I know why you've come. The pharaoh is gathering his armies, isn't he? Yes. I was hoping you might be able to help us. I thought maybe that buried item you had mentioned before might be useful at a time like this? In fact, there is a hidden item that can help, but it is not the one buried here. I will give you the directions to the cave. The old man explained where I needed to go to find this item. Excited to have a special item for the fight, I was getting ready to leave. But before you go, Zozo, I leave you with a warning. I know your community has grown, but are you sure everyone can be trusted? I nodded, but I wasn't sure what he could mean. Maybe he was talking about Ramses, but he had done more than enough to prove he wanted to help. I would keep my eye out for any suspicious villagers. Outside the cave, I told Ramses all about the item and where we needed to go. He was just as excited as me, so we headed off to find the cave. On day 67 to 70, Ramses and I had entered the cave. Soon, we saw an interesting looking statue in the middle of the tunnel. Huh, I'm surprised someone took the time to build a statue deep down in a cave like this. Suddenly, the statue sprang to life and started to attack us. It's a good thing Ramses had come with me though, as together we were able to quickly defeat it. Nice one, Ramses. Let's keep going. We continued down the tunnel and eventually saw two more statues. We stood there for a moment, waiting for the
them to come to life. Huh, maybe these ones are just statues? I guess, whoa! The statues had come to life and started to attack. There were two of them this time, which made it harder than before. But even then, we still managed to fight them both off. I wonder how much deeper we have to go. I mean, what's next? Three statues? We continued until we saw a larger room. Inside was a huge statue, way bigger than the other ones. Well, I think it's clear what we have to do. Let's do this. Ramses and I got to work, attacking the big statue. His big arms landed some heavy blows as we jumped around, getting as many hits in as we could. We even had to run out of the room and hide to heal up. Thankfully though, we were able to get enough hits in and the giant statue was destroyed. As he vanished, we saw something left in his place. This must be that special item the old man was talking about. With this, we'll be able to beat the Pharaoh once and for all. Come on, Ramses, let's- Sorry, Zozo. Ramses hit me on the head, knocking me out. Before I blocked out completely, I saw him pick up the item. On day 71 to 74, I woke up to see that I was all alone. Oh, my head hurts. Ramses must have stolen the weapon and escaped. I've got to go make sure everyone is okay. I quickly ran out of the cave and headed straight to the old man. When I arrived, his cave was empty and all of his stuff was gone. Ramses must have beaten me here. What am I supposed to do now? Just then I remembered the buried item. I began digging around. Surely I could use whatever this mysterious item is now. I uncovered a chest and opened it to look inside. A note. You had the power with you the whole time. Use your power of hope, will, and the strength of your people to overcome any obstacle. It's just a motivational note? I don't need that. I need a weapon that can save everyone. Oh no, everyone! I ran over to the other side of the mountain and could see our town was in flames. Why would Ramses betray us like this? I should have listened to the villagers, the old man. They were right about him. I hurried and ran down the mountain to look for survivors. As I got closer, I could see several of the villagers and the trader came running up to me. Zozo, where have you been? Ramses returned to gather all his soldiers and they all attacked. I'm so sorry. Ramses knocked me out and took the special weapon we had found. That must have been what he was using. He had some incredible abilities and had turned into a monster, but somehow we managed to push them out. I've got to stop him before he can give the item to the pharaoh. I better get to the city quick. That's the thing. I don't think he went to the city. There's a fort near here. I think you should go there to face him. I thanked the trader for his help, then went into the desert. I sure hope I can get the item back. Back. On day 75 to 78, I could see the fort in the distance. I couldn't waste any time trying to be sneaky this time. I was charging through the front. As I entered the fort, Ramsey's soldiers tried to stop me. Good luck! You guys are all traitors! I ran through the base, using my main weapon to throw them high in the air. I felt like I was running through the base, flipping pancakes. You're gonna need a meal on this flight. One by one, I tossed the guards into the air and out of my way. At long last, I made it to the main tower and ran up the stairs. As I reached the top, Ramsey's was waiting for me. On day 79 to 84, I stood face to face with Ramsey's. He didn't look like a monster. I don't want to do this, but I can't let you go any further. Your story ends here. Ramses put on a battle helmet and attacked. Ramses, how could you betray me like this? I never wanted to betray you. In fact, I wanted to save you. You can't face my father. He'll destroy you and all the people you're fighting for. I thought if I could take the special item, you'd give up the fight. I can't stop fighting though, can I? Your father will never stop. And even if we can live in our village, there are still hundreds of people still being kept as his prisoners. Just give me the item and we can stop him together. It's too late. I've already sent it to my father. Just just surrender now, and we can be done with this. I don't want to fight you, but I can't let these innocent people be captured. I'm sorry. Just then, I landed the final blow, defeating Ramses for good. In another life, maybe we could have been brothers. I hope one day we can meet again. I picked up the helmet he had dropped and put it on. It was a sad day, but it was time to save everyone. On days 85 to 89, I arrived back in the village and met up with the trader. I told him everything that had happened and that the pharaoh now had the special item. He encouraged me to keep fighting, but first, we needed to fix the village. We all got to work cleaning up the damage in the village. The soldiers soldiers had really hurt the buildings, but it wasn't anything we couldn't fix. It took a long time, but soon everything was back to normal. I then headed over to the statue and got to work finishing that up. Before I went to the city, everything needed to be properly put into place, just in case I didn't return. Soon, the statue was complete. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be the first to go on our adventures with us. On days 90 to 94, I decided to take a walk around the base. I wasn't sure what to do next. As I saw the villagers tending to their crops, I noticed the ditches they had dug to bring the water in. Suddenly, I had an idea. I hurried to tell all of the villagers my plan. With the villagers on board with my plan, I gathered up as much sand as I could. I was going to need a lot of it if this was going to work. I also went back to the pharaoh's tomb to fight more gas and collect gunpowder. As a final step, I met back up with Hugo to ask for his help. He was pretty excited about what I had in store for the pharaoh and was happy to help. All his friends agreed to help too. Alright, everything should be in place. If pharaoh better watch his back, I'm coming for him. On days 95 to 97, I made my way back to the city with Hugo and his pals. Everybody ready? Charge! I quickly put on my armor and we ran into the city. There were even more guards here than before, but they were no match for my gang of hippo pals and powerful items. The higher they go, the harder they fall. I flipped guards in the air as we made our way toward the palace. As we got closer, storm clouds began to roll in, and lightning started striking the ground. It must be the pharaoh using the special item. We have to hurry. As we ran through the square, we told as many
many people as we could to flee to our desert base. The lightning strikes were getting really scary and hit some of the villagers. It even hit one of Hugo's pals. Luckily, he was able to shake it off and keep going. Soon, we were at the entrance to the palace grounds. On day 98, we entered the palace grounds and began fighting our way through. It felt like there was an endless stream of guards attacking us, but they couldn't handle the strength of me and my hippo team. Hugo, you know what to do. Wait here for me. I ran into the palace and managed to fight off the guards on the first floor. All that was left was to head upstairs and face the pharaoh. Hey, hang on a second. Nubia came running over to me. Nubia, what are you still doing here? Your father has become too dangerous. I know. After you stood up to him in the arena, it inspired me to do the same. I had always felt like what he was doing was wrong, but it wasn't until then that I felt like I had the courage to say something. After I told him what I thought, he kept me trapped here in the palace. It wasn't until you stormed the palace today that my guards finally left me alone. Wow, I'm sorry to hear things have been so bad for you, but hopefully we can bring an end to it soon. If I don't make it, the people of this desert will need a strong leader like you. Stay safe until this is over. Nubia nodded and ran off to hide. It was go time. I climbed the stairs and saw the pharaoh waiting for me. So, you think having a beard makes you a man? Please, you're just the same little boy I banished into the desert. Don't bring my beard into this. You must let my people go. You can ruin my water and fill the streets with as many frogs as you want, but I will never let them be free. Just then, the pharaoh stepped forward and activated the special item. There was a burst of fire and he transformed into a giant Egyptian monster. How do you like this? I was surrounded by a ring of fire and was suddenly hit by a bunch of lightning. Oh, to be honest, I didn't really like it. I couldn't wait any longer, so I ran forward and attacked. The pharaoh hit me back, which nearly ended me in one hit. Looks like it's time for plan B. I turned and ran down the stairs and out of the palace. What's wrong? Too afraid to fight? Hugo was waiting for me, and I hurried and jumped on his back as the pharaoh and his men chased after us. They were close to catching up, but we managed to stay ahead as we ran out of the city. Once we were out, Hugo really put on the speed, and we got far ahead. There was a dried riverbed, which we quickly ran across. As we reached the other side, I turned to see the pharaoh and his army stop on the other side. Don't try to follow me or recapture the people. If you do, I'll have no choice but to destroy you. Destroy me? Destroy me? <laughs> I don't think you're in any position to tell me what to do. The pharaoh and his army entered the riverbed, but I was ready to do my secret plan. I turned and hit a nearby button. The sound of explosions could be heard in the distance. The villagers had put TNT by the dam, which was holding back the water. No, it can't be. The water came rushing in, covering the pharaoh and his army. It looks like the plan worked. There's no way he's going to be able to escape all of that. Just then, I heard a splash behind me, and the pharaoh came rising out of the water. You may have destroyed my army, but I won't go down that easy. The river was my last plan. How was I going to defeat him now? On day 99, the pharaoh stood on the riverbank, looking down at me. Enough of these games. I won't have a little bearded man boy ruin everything I have worked so hard to build. My mind was racing. What could I do? Just then, I remembered the note I found in the old man's cave. You had the power with you the whole time. It couldn't be that simple, could it? Suddenly, a burst of lightning hit me, destroying all of my armor. What are you waiting for? I'm here to end this now. I looked at the staff I had carried with me. The staff had been with me the whole time. Now that I was a grown man with new power, I gave the cane a shake. There was a burst of light, and I grew into a massive, super buff version of myself. What? Where is this power coming from? I felt amazing. I knew that I was going to be able to fulfill my destiny. Just then, a ring of fire appeared, and the pharaoh hit me with lightning. It was on. The pharaoh and I swung our weapons, doing our best to get hits in. He was strong, but so was I. Uh, you may be bigger, but I still have my lightning. The pharaoh kept trying to hit me with lightning, but with my new abilities, I was able to dodge it. I couldn't dodge it every time, but it was clear he was running out of ideas. It was time to end this. This one is for my people. I leapt into the air and struck the pharaoh, which caused him to begin exploding. Soon, he disappeared. With the pharaoh gone, I focused my energy and returned back to my normal size. It was time to return to my people. On day 100, the world was finally free of the pharaoh's influence. I traveled to the city to meet with Nubia, who is now the ruler of the city. She was a nice ruler who let the people live freely, whether in the city or not. And she always made sure everyone was paid for their hard work. Our small village continued to grow, and I remained with those who chose to live there. Peace had been restored, and everyone could freely live their lives. On day one, I spawned in as Nemo. I'm so small, I better be careful. I also noticed I only had three hearts. This was going to be really difficult. Nemo! Huh? I looked behind me and saw my dad, Marlin. He was swimming out of a small cave towards me. You need to get inside. It's not safe. I hurried inside just as a scuba diver appeared. He took his net and snatched my dad. Dad! I tried to swim toward him, but he yelled back at me. No, stay inside. I'll be okay, I promise. The scuba diver swam away, leaving me all alone. I felt really sad, but it was getting dark. I needed to stay safe in the cave and wait until morning to go looking for my dad. On day two, I woke up to the sun shining into the cave. I looked around. Dad? Then I remembered what had happened to him. I got really sad again. 
I'll find you, Dad. I promise. I swam out of the cave to find materials to build some weapons. I managed to make a crafting table, which helped me to craft a pickaxe and sword. Now I feel more ready if that scuba diver comes back. I continued swimming in the reef and discovered that there weren't a lot of other fish around. Hey, get down here. Huh? I looked down and saw a shrimp waving at me. I swam down to him. What do you think you are doing? The reef isn't safe, especially closer to the surface. Not since the human has been coming around. Yeah, I saw him yesterday. He trapped my dad. I'm sorry. Do you have anyone else to look out for you? No, I'm alone. I could tell the shrimp felt bad for me. He scurried back into his hole and returned with some kelp. Here, take this. You need it more than me. Thank you. I swam carefully back to my cave with the food. I'm going to protect everyone. They all seem too scared and someone needs to stick up for them. I arrived at my cave, a plan starting to form in my mind. On day three, I gathered some more sand and even managed to find some gravel. I started to make a little base for myself around my cave. I wanted to make a dome so that the humans couldn't get in. I got part of the foundation done, but I needed to do some other things to get the dome figured out. All of a sudden, I was smacked from behind. I looked and noticed an eel. Hey, get away! I used my new weapon to smack him back. He got me down to one heart, but I finally managed to defeat him. You messed with the wrong fish. I felt my strength grow, and I leveled up into a larger fish. Hey, I have six hearts now. Yes. Neat. I also noticed that I could swim faster since my fins were bigger. Wow. I decided to call it a day. I was beat. On days four to five, I gathered some more materials to build the base. I managed to build a furnace and smelted some sand to make some glass for the dome. I was swimming around when I noticed some bigger fish trying to trap some colorful fish. I swam up to attack the large fish. Hey, get away from them! The colorful fish scattered and the large fish attacked. I managed to get a bunch of hits in and managed to defeat all the fish. Hey! Huh? I looked down and saw a fish lying on a rock. It was one of the ones I had hit with my sword. I guess he had tried to swim away. I swam down to him. What were you doing to those fish? We work for the scuba diver. He guarantees us food if we help him capture fish. That's awful. It's life. We need food to live. He tried to smack me again, but I managed to get a hit in. He yelled, and then he disappeared. How sad. How could he betray his own kind? I swam back to the base, contemplating what I had just heard. On days six to eight, I crafted some more glass for the dome. It was starting to look really awesome. I also used some of the materials to make myself a better sword and tools. If that scuba diver comes, I'll be ready for him. I went venturing out, being careful to avoid the surface. I came across a large mound of sand and began to gather it when I was hit by something. I turned and saw a jellyfish. He was ready to strike again. Nobody wants you here. I smacked him and before I knew it, he was gone. That was super easy with my new sword. I was feeling good. The reef was just a little safer already. On days nine to 10, I went venturing a little further. I managed to gather some more supplies when suddenly I heard some screaming. I swam toward the sound and saw a blue fish being grabbed by the scuba diver. Leave her alone! I drew my sword and managed to hit the scuba diver's hand. He let go of the blue fish who swam away. If I can't have her, then I'll have you. The scuba diver grabbed at me and almost managed to get me. I was fast, but he was faster. I swam away, knowing that it was my only chance to get out of this situation. I hid inside the cavity of a rock. The scuba diver retreated, and I let out some bubbles in relief. That was close. I didn't realize that the bluefish had swam into the same cavity in the rock as me. I swam out in surprise. Thanks for saving me. I don't know what I would have done without you. Of course, I'm here to try to protect the reef. I invited the blue fish back to the base where it would be safe for her. She happily agreed. I'm Dory, by the way. Nice to meet you. On days 11 to 12, I helped Dory to make a little home for herself. She seemed to really like it. I even said it reminded her of her old home. Where is your home? Actually, I don't remember. She was an odd one, but I liked her. I went out to gather some better materials in a nearby cave, but then a group of eels attacked me. Ah, get away from me! They were too strong, so I went to a different cave. I was swimming around for a while, but then I saw some iron. Yes. That's exactly what I need. 
I mined out as much as I could before heading back to the base. I made myself an iron sword, pickaxe, and some armor. This'll show them. I went back to the cave with the eels, and I attacked. In no time, they were all gone. Take that. I went into the cave, and sure enough, there was more iron. Cool, this'll set me up for a while. I went back to the base and made some more tools. With those, I made some minor improvements to the base. It was starting to look really good. On days 13 to 15, I went out to learn more about this scuba diver. I needed to find my dad and all the other fish he was taking. I swam around the reef to gather more information. More fish were out today, but not a lot. Hey, do you know where the scuba diver is taking the fish he's capturing? Everyone kept swimming away from me. Huh, I wonder why everyone is so skittish. I finally happened upon an older snail who was willing to talk to me. Everything was peaceful in the reef for a long time. Then one day, a large shadow was cast over us. We looked up and saw a monstrous machine churning in the water. It's called a boat. Boat? I said the word. It sounded weird to me. The scuba diver can't stay underwater like us, so he drives the boat. At first, he was just here to take pictures. Then one day, he started snatching fish in bags, or even shooting them with his harpoon. He is a bad man. I was grateful that someone was willing to talk to me, but now I was terrified. The scuba diver sounded really strong and capable. I was just a little fish. What could I do? On days 16 to 19, I woke up and couldn't find Dory anywhere. I hope she didn't swim off on her own. I went outside the base and saw Jacques waving at me again. You better hurry. The octopus just took your friend. Huh? Dory? Yes. She was swimming up near the surface and singing to herself. An octopus came by and grabbed her before she even knew what was happening. Jacques pointed me in the direction of the octopus lair and I took off. The octopus lair was more of a sandy hill covered with seaweed, but it was something. I hurried and swam inside to save my friend. Hey, it's you! I looked and saw Dory. She was with another fish who looked pretty beaten up. Watch out! I turned and saw the octopus try to attack me. I hurried and drew my sword before he could get a hit in. He tried to maneuver around me, but I was able to get some really good hits in. Before I knew it, he was gone. Just then, I leveled up into an even stronger clownfish. I felt my fins grow and I swam around to test them out. I was super fast now. I could create a wall of bubbles. I'm so happy you found me. Also, this is Gil. The other fish swam up to me. Thank you for saving my life. That was really impressive. Thanks. I am happy to protect the fish in the reef. We need it more than ever, especially with this scuba diver around. Are you going to fight him? I'm not sure. He's so strong and way bigger than me. I know of an item that could help. Huh? It was lost in the sea a long time ago, but it might be the answer to your problem. That was the best news I had gotten all day. Maybe there was a way to fight the scuba diver after all. I want to hear all about it, but you should stay at our base. It'll be safer there. Gil happily agreed to come with us and we headed back to our home. On days 20 to 22, we arrived back at the base, but it was being attacked by skeletons? Ah, oh, gross! I went at them with my sword and fought them off easily. They all dropped a bunch of bones. Maybe they would come in handy later. I was happy that Gil was staying with us too, but I wanted everyone to know that this was a safe place to stay. A statue would be a good idea. I came up with an idea, but I needed to gather some supplies first. I gathered a lot of kelp and even managed to find some sea cucumbers. Yes. Perfect! I knew I needed more for later, so I planted a few and then used the bones from the skeletons to make some bone meal. I fed the bone meal to the sea cucumbers. I won't be running out of those anytime soon. I went to work on the base of the statue. Can you tell what it's going to be? And if you like swimming along on our adventures, be sure to watch more of my videos by searching for Zozo. That's Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. And subscribe too, since we sure would love to see you around here more often. On days 23 to 26, some skeletons attacked again. I wasn't too nervous though, they were easy to defeat. They dropped more bones, but I noticed that another one dropped some sea lanterns. Wow. This would be perfect to make the dome more bright. They were looking really good. I started to place them around the base and inside the dome. It was looking brighter already. I was outside looking for some more materials when a yellow fish swam up to me. Hello! Someone told me that this is a safe place to stay. 
My family was taken by the scuba diver, and I don't have a home to go back to. I knew exactly how this fish felt. Please, come in. You are more than welcome to stay here. The fish told me his name was Bubbles as we went inside. I started on making some better houses for Bubbles and Gil. They weren't anything fancy, but they were safe. I made sure to smelt some more glass so that we could expand the dome out. It was looking really great. On days 27 to 31, I went to chat with Gil. I wanted to know more about the item he had told me about earlier. My grandfather told me about an old wise turtle that was a protector of the reef a long time ago. But like now, humans kept invading, stealing fish away, and polluting the ocean. The turtle decided to go to Poseidon to bargain for an item that would protect them. In return, he crafted the turtle a special trident. Poseidon? No way! I know, right? Anyway, the old turtle takes this special trident, but Poseidon says it will only work for those who have pure intentions to protect the creatures of the sea. Makes sense. It gave the turtle the ability to call the lightning down and control the water. Wow! But the best part was the last gift it granted to the wielder, the ability to walk on land like a human if needed. Wow. That's amazing! So, where is the trident now? That's the tricky part. After the turtle passed on, so many fish and creatures wanted the trident for themselves. They fought over it. Because of their greed, it was broken into three pieces and scattered across the ocean. There are rumors as to where they are, but nobody has been able to find all of them. This was a lot to take in. <laughs> My grandfather told me he had heard of one that was guarded by a shark near a shipwreck. It wasn't a lot to go on, but it was a start. I started out toward the shipwreck that Gil was talking about, though I was a little nervous about the shark. As I approached, I didn't see any shark. Then he came out from behind the hull of the ship. He's pretty big. I was nervous, but I knew I had a job to do. So I charged at the shark and attacked. He was taken aback and tried to get a hit in. He was a good fighter, but I wasn't doing too bad myself. After a minute, I could tell he was really struggling. I was about to make my final attack when he swam away. Huh, okay, I wasn't expecting that. I went and looked around the ship, but it was empty. I was a little confused. I wonder where the trident piece could be. On days 32 to 35, I swam out of the ship, but I heard someone calling me. I looked down and saw some crabs hiding under some coral. I swam down to them. Hey, are you looking for the trident piece? Yeah, how did you know? We've seen a lot of fish come this way. Not nearly as brave as you. Most have retreated. But this isn't the ship you're looking for. So I gathered. All of a sudden, the crab shrieked and scurried away. I looked behind me and saw the scuba diver. You're not getting me today. Then he took out a harpoon and shot me. It paralyzed me and I sank to the bottom of the ocean. Oh no. I struggled but couldn't get out. Then I saw one of the crabs crawl out of the sand and give me a milk bottle, which cleared the paralysis effect. Go! I swam toward the scuba diver, creating a wall of bubbles so he couldn't see me. He dropped something, and I hurried to grab it before racing back to the crabs. Hurry, you can come with me. The crabs rushed out of their hole, and together, we hurried towards the base. On days 36 to 39, we arrived back at the base. I realized that I had picked up a flashlight. Maybe it would come in handy later. I started on a little house for the crabs to live in. They were super grateful that I had helped them. Hey, the ship you're looking for is sunken into the depths of the drop-off. At least that's what we've heard. This was great news. Except it's guarded by a huge monster. Nobody has been able to get into the ship. Okay, less great news. But I needed to do some things before I left. I worked on the statue for a little while, planting new sea cucumbers as I went. It was starting to look a little more like what I wanted. On days 40 to 43, Gil told us that his friend Flo needed help. We invited her into the dome and heard her out. My friend Peach, she's a lobster. She was taken by some eels. Huh? They had been terrorizing her for food, but when she couldn't give them any more, they kidnapped her. I can help her. Just tell me where I need to go. Flo directed me to a small sunken statue that the eels like to hang around. She's probably there. Please, go help her. I promised I would, and I headed out. I made sure to be stealthy as I went along. After a while, I saw the statue Flo had told me about. It looked like a human, holding some sort of bowl. Sure enough, there were a bunch of eels and a colorful lobster sitting in the bowl. I charged. Hey, you give her back! The eels reared up and went to attack. There were a lot of them, and they were getting hits in. 
I barely managed it, but soon after, they were all gone. Thanks for saving me, mister. No problem. I'm a friend of Flo's. Oh, thank goodness. I noticed a small hole in the base of the statue and looked inside. There was a chest full of prismarine crystals and one shaped prismarine. Wow. Nice. I headed out with Peach back to our base. Once we arrived, Flo was super happy to see her friend. They thanked me and then I went right to making Peach a little home. I then made something for Flo as well. Then I took the prismarine crystals I had found and smelted them into shaped prismarine. Then I used that to make some new prismarine weapons and armor. Sweet, now I'm ready to take on that monster. On days 44 to 49, I swam to the drop off and looked down. It sure was dark down there. Oh wait, I have a flashlight. I took out the flashlight I had grabbed from the scuba diver and turned it on. It worked. I started to swim down into the depths. I was swimming for a long time when I finally started to see a ship. Then I saw something moving toward me. It was a goblin shark. Nope, not today. I took out my sword and braced myself. The goblin shark attacked, but I created my wall of bubbles, distracting it. I hurried and swam into the ship, turning off my flashlight. It was pitch black. Hey, is someone there? Huh? A voice was whispering from the corner. I didn't dare turn my flashlight on yet. I'm a friend. I'm looking for the missing trident piece. Is that what this is? I thought it was just a fancy stick, but I did manage to grab it. I snuck past the goblin shark to get in, but I haven't been able to get out. Why are you down here? I'm a treasure hunter. I heard there was some stuff down here, but nobody mentioned the shark. I'll get us out of here, don't you worry. Just follow the sound of my voice. Then, when I say swim, you swim. Okay. I found an opening and I turned on the flashlight. Swim! We swam up as fast as we could. The other fish behind me kept whispering to himself. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. After what seemed like forever, we finally got up past the drop off. I finally looked at the other fish. I bloat. He was a puffer fish wow. and he seemed really tired. He was also holding what I assumed was part of the trident. Here, take this, huh? I don't want it. He gave me the pole piece and I studied it. It looked like it had carvings on it. Hey, thanks for saving me, by the way. That was gnarly. Of course. How about we get back to my base so you can rest? Sounds good to me. And with that, we headed back to the base. On days 50 to 53, I helped Bloat get comfortable at the base, and then I headed back out to look for some more pieces of the trident. Someone had to know something. On my way out and about, I saw a huge crater in the sea bottom. There were sharks swimming all around including the one from the first shipwreck I had gone to. It looked like they had someone trapped in a cage of some sort. Hey, you let them go! I raced down with my improved swimming abilities and attacked the first shark. I was able to take him out and then went to attack his friends. After just a few moments, I was able to fend them all off. I went up to the cage and noticed another shark inside. Ah! I went to swim away, but he called out to me. Hey, wait, don't leave me. I won't eat you. I swam back to him, a bit apprehensively. You don't eat fish? Huh? No, fish are friends, not food. Oh, that's nice to hear. I unlocked the cage and let the small shark out. Thank you. All those other sharks were making fun of me and decided it would be hilarious if they put me in a cage. I'm so sorry they did that to you. He nodded. What brings you all the way out here? I told him all about the scuba diver and the legendary trident I was trying to put together again. I showed him part of the trident I had. The shark got excited. Say, I have something that looks like that. The shark, whose name I learned was Bruce, swam a little further into the crater. There was a little alcove that held a small chest. I opened it and sure enough, there was a piece of the trident. Yes. Whoa, thanks. No problem. The sharks found that here, but they figured it was some sort of fancy stick. But we kept it anyway. I tried to put the pieces together, but nothing happened. I would probably need all of the pieces before it would meld back together. I invited Bruce back to the base. We might need to expand it a little bit since you are bigger than most of the other fish living there. I'll be sure to help out. We headed back to the base, ready to make some big renovations. On days 54 to 57, Bruce and I arrived back at the base. At first, everyone was a little scared of Bruce, but after a while, they all started to warm up to him. They even helped me make some improvements for him. 
we built another dome attached to the main dome. This way, people could have more space for themselves. I also made myself a little chest to store the trident pieces in. I didn't want to carry them all the time and risk someone stealing them from me while I was outside the dome. I was about to make some more improvements to the base when Dory swam right up next to me. Hello, could I get your help with something? Sure, Dory. What is it? Oh, I just forgot. She swam away for a little bit, then came back a moment later. I remember. Could you help me find some purple shells? Huh? Purple shells? Yes, it's very important. It was an odd request, but I decided to help her. We ventured out together and found a dozen or so shells in varying sizes. We went back to the base, and I gave Dory the shells I had found. What are they for? You'll see. She left for a while, and I thought she had completely forgotten about the shells. It wasn't until later that she swam back up to me. I have something for you. She held out a necklace made of some purple shells. Oh wow, thanks Dory. I put it on. I actually felt happier. You're a good friend. Dory hugged me and then swam away. What a cute friend. On days 58 to 62, I gathered some more supplies for the statue. Flo and Gil even helped me with gathering and building some parts of it. It was looking really nice. We were heading back inside the dome when we noticed that there were some of the scuba divers' minion fish attacking the base. Get away, you traitors! I smacked them with my sword. I swam around and noticed that everyone was there, except Bloat. I looked in his house and noticed a note. It was from the scuba diver, telling him to look for the legendary item at the ship and to infiltrate my base. Bloat was a traitor! I hurried and went to the chest near my cave, and just as I had suspected, the trident pieces were gone. I went back to the base and told everyone that Bloat stole the trident pieces. Everyone saw how upset I was and started to all talk at the same time. It was a little too much for me, so I went into my cave to think. What am I going to do now? I looked at Bloat's note again and noticed something on the back. There was a map with a location circled. This must be where he's going next. I've got to stop him before it's too late. On days 63 to 66, I traveled to the location on the map. It was a rock formation with all kinds of coral growing on it. Then a fish emerged from the coral. He had blended right in. Get away from here! We don't want any more trouble! He tried to bat at me with his fins, but I backed up. Trouble? I'm here to stop all the trouble. The fish looked at me again. I'm looking for the third trident piece. I was led here with a map. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I do. But some other fish came by a little while ago asking the same question. In fact, some of them said they would be back. Just then, I saw the minion fish swimming up to us. I drew my sword. Stop bothering these innocent fish. I charged and attacked. Before long, they were all gone. That was impressive. I swam back to the camouflage fish. Here, I think you need this after that fight. Huh? He handed me a burger and said it was a Krabby Patty. Whatever that was. Thanks, so can you tell me where the trident piece is? It's hiding in the lair of the large glow squid. It's basically impossible to get to, but that puffer fish and his goons might have a chance. That must have been bloat. The fish told me exactly where the lair was and I swam as fast as my fins would go. On days 67 to 70, I made it to the lair of the large glow squid. It was an old underwater temple. Outside of it were some minion fish. They looked like they were guarding it. Then I saw bloat and a few more minion fish emerge from the large cave. I charged at them. You traitor, I thought you were my friend. Bloat saw me and got scared. He tried to hide behind the minion fish, but I easily took a few of them out. Bloat tried to swim away, but I smacked him with my sword. He looked at me angrily, and then he puffed up. I felt a sharp pain in my side, and then I blacked out. On day 71 to 74, I woke up. I felt really sick, and there was a pain in my side. I looked and saw one of Bloat's needles lodged in between my stripes. I pulled it out and groaned. Ouch! I knew I needed to check the lair, so I swam down and saw an alcove with a chest. It was empty. Bloat must have gotten the item before I blacked out. I didn't have much strength, so I ate some kelp. I felt so sick and knew I needed to get back to the base to rest up. I made the long journey home, wondering what my next move would be. On day 75 to 78, I made it back to the base and rested for a little while. Once I was feeling more like myself, I made some improvements to the base. I added to the domes and made some lights. I also started on a new dome in case we had more fish arrive. I was about to clean out Bloat's little alcove 
when I heard a weird noise outside the dome. I went out to see, and it was Bloat! What are you doing here? I was trying to sneak back in to get some of my things. Get out of my way. You traitor, you aren't welcome here. I lunged at Bloat, making a wall of bubbles to distract him. Then I slashed at him with my sword. I wasn't going to let him knock me out again. He was very disoriented, and before long, I took him out. Then, just like before, I felt my strength surge, and I leveled up into an adult clownfish. I now had 15 hearts. Yeah, I'm unstoppable! I looked up and noticed that Bloat had dropped something. Huh? I was hoping that it was part of the trident, but it looked like a paper. Hmm. He must have already given the trident pieces to the scuba diver. I looked closer at the paper and realized it was a map of where the scuba diver docked his boat. It looked like it was on a schedule and switched every couple of days. This is good information. Yes. I also checked out Bloat's alcove, and sure enough, I found some good stuff, like refined prismarine ingots and some healing potions. This is just what I need. I felt bad about Bloat, but ultimately, he had made his choice. Hopefully now, it would be easier to defeat the scuba diver. On days 79 to 84, I traveled to the next location where the scuba diver's boat was supposed to be. I looked around the seaweed field, and there was no boat. Huh, I wonder where it could be. Hmm. I waited it out for a little while, but then I noticed a little movement in the seaweed. I drew my sword in preparation, but then a little sea turtle popped out. Whoa, don't hurt me. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm looking for the boat that's supposed to be here right now. Oh uh, yeah, that usually leaves here in the early morning, so you're late. Okay, well, I guess I should go track him down. Wait, could you help me first? Something fell out of the boat when the scuba diver left. I've been tracking him ever since he stole my dad. I think that it might be important. I felt sorry for this little guy. So many fish and sea creatures were suffering just because the scuba diver was selfish. Of course I'll help. We looked through the seaweed for a little longer before I saw something partially buried in the sand. Hey, I found it. The little sea turtle swam over to me and we looked at the paper. It was a map just like mine with the boat docking locations, but there had been a change. Huh? The boat was heading for one other stop, and then, my reef! He'll be there in just a few days. Uh -oh. I need to go back and warn everyone. I invited the little turtle to come along with me. I learned his name was Squirt. Thanks for helping me. No problem. We'll get your dad back, Squirt. We made our way out of the seaweed and back to the base. On days 85 to 89, Squirt and I were about to reach the base when Jacques waved me over. I swam up to him. I heard you needed some help. From who? It doesn't matter. I just hear these things. You need a way to get on the boat, right? Until I can find the trident, yeah. Jacques went into his hole and then pulled out some sort of helmet. Huh? This could hold you while you're out on the ship. Wow, this is actually really helpful, Jacques. Thanks. He seemed really pleased with himself, and I invited him to live at the base again. He finally agreed. He had a lot of stuff hidden in his hole, but after a few trips, he was settled in. To thank me for helping him move in, he gave me a smithing table and some paintings. It was good to have friends. On days 90 to 94, I made some upgrades. I went to work smithing my prismarine sword using the refined prismarine ingots I had found in Bloat's things. It made my sword much stronger. I also reforged my armor. Wow, this is amazing. Too bad Bloat had to be a traitor. He would have made a good team. I also worked on some more improvements around the base. The domes were looking awesome. Hopefully, it would be safe enough from the scuba diver and whatever his plans might be. On days 95 to 97, we finally finished the statue. It looked amazing, and I was super proud of all my friends for helping me out. I was admiring the statue when Squirt swam up to me. That kind of looks like my dad. That's so cool. I love sea turtles. I always wanted to meet one, and now I have. Sweet, dude. Totally. It was a nice little moment. On day 98, I made my final preparations to get to the boat. Squirt volunteered to lead me to the scuba diver's boat. It'll be awesome, dude. Just leave it to me. I gave the map to Squirt, and we made our final preparations. Hey, before we go kick some scuba diver bum, be sure to subscribe. We want you to see the cool stuff we'll do next. And with that, we headed toward the surface. On day 99, we swam up toward the boat together. There were some minion fish along the way, but with my new sword, we took them out easily. We made it to the back of the boat, and I threw down the item Jacques gave me, which turned into a fish mech suit. I swam into the head, which was built like a fishbowl. 
letting me breathe even when outside of the water. I got on the boat with Squirt and we looked around. The boat was pretty big. It might take some time before we find our families. We looked around the lower deck and then went up the stairs to the upper deck. There were some fish tanks up there. Dad! I saw him immediately, his orange scales shimmering among the other fish. Hey, I told you to stay safe down below. No, Dad, I'm done hiding. The reef needs protecting, and I'm going to be the one to do it. He seemed taken aback, but then he smiled at me. I'm so proud of you. And with that, I broke the fish tanks, scooping the fish into buckets I found and throwing them back into the ocean. Hey, Squirt! Huh? I looked and saw a larger tank with a sea turtle. Dad! I broke that tank as well, letting Squirt's dad out. Rad, man. Thanks for the assist. Of course, Mr... Crush, man. Crush. Crush and Squirt thanked me and jumped overboard with the rest of the fish. I saw my dad looking at me from the water's surface. Look out! I turned around and saw some seagulls. They were trying to grab me out of the fishbowl. On day 100, I fought off the seagulls. They kept screeching at me, but I didn't care. I needed to find the trident. I maneuvered around the seagulls, and after a few hits, the rest of them flew away scared. How oh, pathetic. We turned and saw the scuba diver, no longer in his gear. But he had the trident in his hands. Uh -oh. He had managed to put it together. It's time for you to leave the reef. Not a chance. The scuba diver ran at me, ready to strike. I aimed for his hand that was holding the trident and hit him with my sword. He dropped the trident and I rushed toward it on the floor. All of a sudden, I felt an amazing power flow through my body. The suit powered up and grew in size. I felt so much stronger and faster. No! The scuba diver ran away toward a room. He shut the door behind him. Coward, come out and fight me! I thought he was trying to get away, but then I heard a loud noise. He broke open the door, revealing himself in an even bigger diving suit. He had one hand that shot harpoons, and the other was some sort of electric fist. The scuba diver was scary, but I wasn't going to let that stop me. This ends here. I charged, and so did the scuba diver. We exchanged a lot of blows with our weapons, but then I decided to have some fun. I urged the water to create a giant wave that rocked the boat. I also summoned the lightning to come down from the sky, striking the diver. He was looking pretty rough, and I wasn't making it easy for him. You're just a fish. I'm a human. You will never defeat me. I channeled the power of the storm into the trident before throwing it at him one last time, summoning a huge bolt of lightning. The sky boomed with thunder, and there was a huge flash of light. When it subsided, I saw that the diver was gone. I had defeated him. Yeah! I raised the trident in triumph before swimming back down to the base. Everyone cheered as they saw me. The reef was finally safe, and I was back with my dad. Everything was back to the way it should be. On day one, I spawned in the desert as a baby snow golem. I was all alone, except for a honey golem who was much bigger than me. I wasn't sure why I was here, or why I was so little. Where are all the other snow golems? What am I doing out here where it's so hot and dry? Before the honey golem could answer me, a guster blew toward us. Who are you? Who am I? I'm Gary the Guster. And there ain't a fella in the land who can take me and my Guster gang down. Just take a gander at what happens when you don't do what I say. And with one attack, he destroyed the honey golem I spawned in next to. How could you do that? You monster! Because I'm the baddest Guster around these parts. You got 100 days to rustle up 100 diamonds and bring the loot to me. Or my gang and I will burn the nearest village to the ground. And you with it. And with that threat, he disappeared, leaving me all alone. Oh no, I either need to gather Gary's ransom or defeat him. If I don't, there's gonna be trouble, but I'm gonna need to be a lot stronger before I can do that. On day two, I started making my way through the desert toward the village. If they were in danger from Gary the Guster too, I needed to get there and warn them. Maybe they could help me and we could keep each other safe. I realized I only had five hearts, so I would have to be careful on the way. As I was walking, a group of zombies appeared from out of a cave. What do you want? Just keeping an eye on things for the boss. I don't see any diamonds. Maybe we ought to teach you a lesson in listening. They attacked me, and I had nothing to fight back with. I was scared that they would take me down. I was way too small and weak to beat them right now. But just then, a bison ran up to me. Huh? Howdy there, little snow golem. 
You're a long way from home. I am, and I'm in danger. Well, hop on my back and let's mosey on out of here. I can take us somewhere safe. I hopped on the bison's back, and he carried me away from the zombies. Thank you. What's your name? Iron. What's yours? You can call me Zozo. Mighty nice to meet you. On day three, Byron the bison took me to his village. It was the same place I was trying to get to, so it all worked out pretty well. Except, of course, for the part where we had to all deal with Gary's evil plan. This is a nice village. Thank you for having me. Then, Byron took me to meet the mayor of the town. He was a golem like me. But he was an earth golem, not snow. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Well, howdy there, little snow golem. What brings you to our town? I quickly explained what I knew about Gary and his threat to destroy the village if I didn't bring him 100 diamonds. My no good scoundrel's been bothering us for some time now. Going on a few years. Maybe we can help each other out and bring him to justice once and for all. I would love to help, but how? Well, let's see. I reckon you'll need to make some tools. Get started mining diamonds and get a heck of a lot stronger, too. We'll do whatever we can to help you do that. This town's plenty big enough for more kind-hearted folks, after all. You can set up on the edge of town. Byron and I started to leave, but the mayor had one more thing to say. You know, this village needs a sheriff. I reckon you might just be the man for the job. On days four and five, I went out and punched some trees so I could gather enough wood to build a crafting bench. Then, I crafted some wooden tools. Once I had those, I could start gathering some stone. Hey, this is going pretty well so far. Once I had enough stone, I upgraded my tools from wood to stone ones, including a stone sword. I was ready to start building our base. Say, Zozo, if you're fixing to be the sheriff, let's say we build you a sheriff station with a jail inside. That's a perfect idea, Byron. We can use it as an armory too. It'll be the perfect place to help keep the village safe from Gary and his gang of goons. Then, I had a brilliant idea. Byron, every sheriff needs a deputy. Do you want the job? Well, shucks, Zozo. I'd be honored. With Byron chosen as my deputy, we got to work building our base, a couple of jail cells, and two rooms for us to sleep in. The mayor stopped by to admire our progress. This looks mighty fine, boys. Here, Zozo, this should help you get started. The mayor handed me a strong potion. I drank it and felt myself grow a little bit bigger, and I gained two hearts. On days six through eight, I explored the desert around the village, looking for more materials. While I was walking around, I saw a roadrunner being attacked by a nest of rattlesnakes. Hey, you leave her alone! I rushed at them with my stone sword and began to fight. They turned their attention away from the roadrunner and started attacking me instead. It was a tough fight, but after a long while, I knocked down the last rattlesnake. Oh, thank you kindly. The roadrunner ran over to me. My name is Rhonda, and you're my hero. Just doing my duty, ma'am. What are you doing all the way out here? I got lost in the desert. I was looking for help getting back to my nest. It's in a cave, you see. But it isn't safe for me to go alone. My eggs are in there. I need to get to them before something terrible happens. Well, that sounds like a job for the local sheriff. On days 9 and 10, Rhonda and I made our way to the cave where her nest was. I wanted my nest to be out of the sun, and this cave used to be safe. But when people started mining in there, it woke something up. Something terrible. This is it. Please be careful, Sheriff Zozo. I'll do my best. I drew my sword and crept into the cave. What are you doing in my cave? A werewolf jumped out of the shadows and roared at me. This cave belongs to more than just you. This cave ain't big enough for the both of us. He swiped at me with his claws and knocked me back into the wall of the cave. I dropped my sword, and when I ran to pick it up, he hit me again. Uh-oh, this guy is way too strong. Get out now, or I'll finish you off. I'll have to come back and face him again when I'm stronger. I need to go help Rhonda. I ran out of the cave where Rhonda was waiting. I'm sorry, he's too strong, but please come back to town with me. You can stay at my sheriff's station until we can come back. I'll help you get your eggs back, I promise. On days 11 and 12, I returned to my base with Rhonda. I built her a room, including a crafting bench and a chest. Thank you for the help, Sozo. It means the world to me. Of course, I'm happy to help. Now that we're safe, do you know anything about Gary the Guster? Not too much, only that he's got a hankering for diamonds and power and won't let anything stand in his way. He's hurt a lot of people, made himself a lot of enemies. If we all band together, maybe we can do something about him. That's what I've been thinking too. Glad we're on the same team. After my chat with Rhonda, I went mining for some more materials. I found iron and coal too. I made a furnace and smelted the iron, then used it to craft some iron tools and boots. 
Best of all, I crafted an iron sword. Then, I built an armory where I could store all of my new tools. This base is coming together. We'll be able to take on Gary and his gang in no time. On days 13 to 15, I wanted to find a way to get stronger, so I talked to Byron the Bison for some advice. Well, I reckon the best strength in the world is experience. You ought to go on a quest or two and get better at helping others out. Then you'll get stronger. Also, you'd best get yourself some armor for the job. Thanks so much, Byron. I gathered silver and crafted myself some armor. Then I headed out to explore the forest. Now it's time to find a quest. But where is someone who I can help? I looked around, but couldn't see anyone that might have a quest for me. How was I supposed to get experience if no one needed me to do anything? Then, I saw a pumpkin boss shaking an apple tree. Hi there, do you need some help with the apples? Hey, you're the sheriff trying to go up against Gary the Guster. Let me teach you a lesson. He attacked me, but I was ready. I had my new armor to protect me. And I had my new sword, too. I dodged his attack and slashed at him, knocking him back. After a lot of tough back and forth, I was able to win. I did it! I did it! Then, I noticed he dropped something. A shed snakeskin. Hey, I bet I can use this to craft something. I took the snakeskin back to my base and crafted a vine lasso with it. Wow, I can use this to wrangle bad guys and bring them back to jail. On days 16 to 19, I decided to explore some more and see what I could find. I ended up coming across an abandoned mine and looked inside. There was a chest in there. I opened it and I found an old diary belonging to a miner that left it behind ages ago. Gary the Gusta came through town again, telling us to give him diamonds. I heard a rumor that he's building a base not too far from here, but no one's been able to find it yet. I have my suspicions that it's out in the forest over yonder. Wow, so Gary's base must not be too far away. Maybe I can find it, but first, I'll have to get even stronger so I can defeat him. Before I could do anything else, I was attacked by a gang of Mandragora. This is what happens when you go up against Gary the Guster. But they were no match for my new armor and sword. Just like with the pumpkin boss before, I fought them hard and was able to defeat them. As a few of them ran away, I yelled after them. Tell Gary he won't be picking on people for much longer. On days 20 to 22, I traveled back to the village. When I got there, I saw some plague rats bothering some villagers. I fought them and took them out easily. Wow, I'm getting good at this. On the way back to the sheriff's station, I found some silver I could use to upgrade my gear and my armor. Yes. With that taken care of, I was feeling strong enough to go fight the werewolf and help Rhonda get back her nest. You again? I thought I already taught you a lesson. Well, I'm back, and I'm strong enough to fight you now. With my new armor and sword, I was able to hold my own against the werewolf. He knocked me back, but I didn't drop my sword, and I kept fighting. Then I pulled out my secret weapon, the vine lasso. I captured the werewolf in the lasso and started pulling him back to the jail. You're going to jail. You ain't got what it takes to bring down Gary the Gusta. He took out my whole gang, and I had to hide in those caves when he came to town. You go up against him, and you're toast. On days 23 to 26, I threw the werewolf into one of the empty jail cells. Well, Rhonda, you can go back to the caves now. Your nest is safe, and your eggs are waiting for you. Thank you so much, Zozo. I'll never forget what you did for me. And I'll be sure to come back and visit once my eggs have hatched. I can't wait. By the way, you should build a guard tower. It will help keep you safe here. Rhonda was right. It would be a good idea to have a guard tower so we could keep a lookout. I started constructing one right away. When the guard tower was done, I realized I needed some ranged weapons. So, I crafted some javelins, too. I can really defend this place now. On days 27 to 31, I decided to travel to a snowy area to see if I could find some more snow golems like me. If I could, maybe they could help protect the village and take down Gary. I was enjoying the cold and looking around for some other snow golems when I saw some snow beasts. They looked lost, so I sent them back to my base, and they went off to find it. Next, I decided to gather some ice to take back to my base. If I had it there, I wouldn't feel so homesick as the only snow golem in the desert. Even if I didn't find any snow golems, it would make me feel much better. When I got back to the village, Village, Mayor Earth Golem came up to me. Sheriff Zozo, we need your help. Gary's gang came through town and kidnapped some of our villagers. Oh no, of course I'll help. And I'll come with you. What kind of mayor would I be if I didn't look out for my own people? On days 32 to 35, the mayor and I went into the forest to find the kidnapped villagers and save them from Gary's gang. We spotted the horde of zombies and a bunch of villagers in cages. The zombies were laughing at them. Don't worry, everyone. You're safe now. We're coming to save you. I rushed at them with my sword drawn. The mayor followed me and tried to help fight too. One of the zombies knocked him down. Get away from him. I tried to stop them from hurting him, but the zombies destroyed the mayor. No! I swore I'd have revenge. 
In honor of the fallen mayor, I defeated the rest of the zombies and freed the villagers. But now the town is without a mayor. We need someone to lead the villagers. On days 36 to 39, I set off in search of a new mayor for the village. We need someone tough to help protect the villagers from Gary. I know, I'll go into the mountains. Only tough people can survive up there. So I went to the mountains and looked around. Is there anyone here who can be a mayor? Are you looking for help? Huh? I looked and saw Zeus, the king of Olympus, standing on top of a mountain. Wow. Yes, I am. Well, I need help with something. If you can help me, I can be the mayor in return. What is it? A group of gremlins stole my treasured guitar. Jamming on that guitar was the only way to pass the time up here on this boring old mountain. Please, get it back for me. It was a small price to pay to find a new, powerful mayor. I found the gremlins nearby, smashing the guitar into some rocks. Hey, that's not what rock music means. I fought off the gremlins and got the guitar back. Here you go, Zeus. Or should I say, Mayor Zeus. Thank you. I'd be happy to be the mayor if the villagers are all as kind as you. They are. We're trying to defeat Gary the Guster. Ah, Gary. He's asking for diamonds, I bet. Well, I can tell you where a very good diamond mine is, if you want. Yes, please. So Zeus gave me directions to the diamond mine. Things were really starting to come together. One way or another, I'd keep the village safe. On days 40 to 43, I returned home to the village and dropped off Mayor Zeus at his new house. Back at the sheriff's station, I decided to spiff up the place. I added torches and bookshelves for extra light and to give me and Deputy Byron something to read on our downtime. Once I was done, I checked in with Byron to see what he thought. Say, this looks great, Sheriff. But with so much new danger, we need more deputies. Let's make a deputies wanted sign. Great idea! I added a sign outside the station, new deputies wanted. And pretty soon, villagers started showing up to apply for the job. Six new deputies joined. I built a barracks onto the base with bunk beds, so they would all have a place to sleep. Gary the Guster won't know what hit him when we take him on. One of the snow beasts came to find me while I was working. We heard a rumor about an ice cave where another snow golem is living. You should check it out and see if he can help us. Wow, thank you. Another snow golem. It almost sounded too good to be true. On days 44 to 49, I journeyed to the ice cave to search for the other snow golem. When I got there, I couldn't see anyone at first, but then I saw a shadow in the cave. Hello? I walked toward the opening of the cave, but Gary the Guster appeared. Yeehaw, I knew you'd fall from my trap. I hear you've been rustling up a team to try and beat me. Well, I can't have that. You're such a bully, making people get diamonds for you. Why do you even need so many anyway? You sure do ask a lot of questions, Sheriff. I'll have you know it's my dream to live in a mansion made out of nothing but diamonds. I don't care how many towns I have to destroy to get them, neither. That's terrible. Never said I was nice. Now I gotta mosey on back to my diamonds, but I'm not letting you go that easy. Alpha Coyote, get him! Gary whooshed away, and in his place, there was an Alpha Coyote. He was pretty big and strong, too, but I knew I could take him. I drew my sword and got ready for a fight. On days 50 to 53, I fought hard against the Alpha Coyote. You might as well give up now. I'm so much bigger than you. You may be big, but I'm brave and strong, and I have the support of my friends to keep me from giving up. With a decisive strike from my sword, I defeated the Alpha Coyote. I did it! I won! Well, I won this battle. There's more to come. Hey, wait. What's this? I looked on the ground where the Alpha Coyote fell at the end of our fight. There was a journal. Hey, this has property of Gary the Guster inside. It must belong to him. Dear Diary, I built the best dang hideout this Wild West has ever seen. It's so sparkly, made up of all those diamonds I took from the villagers. And no one will find me here between the two tallest mountains in the region. They'll never get rid of Gary the Guster and his gang of goons. Hey, I know where those mountains are. When the time comes, I'll be able to find Gary's base after all. On days 54 to 57, I ventured deeper into the ice caverns. I wasn't going to give up my search for another snow golem now. I had to keep looking and see if there was really someone here, or if it was all just one of Gary's traps. In the distance, I could see the light of a fire. There was someone here! As I got closer, I could see that some of the zombies from the Guster Gang of Goons were gathered around the fire, and they had a snow golem with them. Oh no, I have to help him escape! I stayed back and out of sight, and threw one of my javelins at the zombies. I had the element of surprise, and they scattered when it hit. Take that, you undead outlaws! Hey, where'd you come from? 
This is our hideout and you're trespassing. No, you're the ones who are trespassing. Instead of getting into an argument with them, I decided to get right to the fighting instead. I rushed in with my sword and fought them with everything I had. Quick, let's get out of here. The zombies ran out of caverns, leaving me with the snow golem. I'll get you out of here. Not so fast. Huh? I turned around and there was an axe dix. You're not taking this prisoner without a fight, unless you've got those 100 diamonds for Gary. You'll never get those diamonds from me. I took axe dix down and let the snow golem free. Hey, look. Oh, it's a power potion. I drank it and grew bigger and I gained two more hearts. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much for letting me go. Gary has been taking out all of the golems, so there will be no one left to protect the villagers. I was so scared that I was the only one left. Well, now you know you're not alone. Come back to my base with me. We've got a whole bunch of people to help. Gary won't get away with it this time. On days 58 to 62, I worked on improving things at the base. The sheriff's station was pretty great, but it could still get even better. The villagers had all the food we could need, but we needed to make way more tools and weapons. I expanded the crafting area and the armory so we'd have lots of space for more equipment. Then I headed off to the area Zeus told me about, where I could find lots of diamonds. I went down into the mine there, and sure enough, there they were! Yes. I used my iron pickaxe to mine the diamonds and took them back to the base. I used all those diamonds to make diamond armor, a pickaxe, and a sword. Next, I thought about how I might need to gather extra food while traveling to new places. A fishing rod could help me catch fish on the go, so I crafted a fishing rod to help me, in case I ever needed it. On days 63 to 66, Mayor Zeus came to visit me at the sheriff's station. What can I do for you, Mayor? Did you get a chance to check out the diamond cave I told you about? I did, thank you. There were lots of diamonds there. I used them to upgrade my gear, though. That's okay. I thought you might need to do that. I wanted to tell you that I heard about another cave with lots of diamonds to mine. Really? Thank you. That's great news. Happy to help. I'll keep an ear out for more diamond news, too. I really missed my old friend, Mayor Earth Golem, but Zeus was doing his legacy proud and seemed to really care about the village. I set off to the new cave to mine for more diamonds. Inside, I saw a group of little Kados. I could hear them whispering to each other. I'm telling you, the boss is out there somewhere. Huh? Boss? Are they talking about Gary the Guster? He's a werewolf. He's tough. Not as tough as Gary. There's no way he survived that attack. We're doomed. We'll be next. Wait, these must be members of the werewolf's old gang. I wonder if they'll try to fight me. Hey, are you the sheriff? Why do you want to know? We hear you're trying to fight Gary the Guster, and we want to help. Really? That would be great. Yes. If you can help us rescue more of our old gang, we promise to all help you out. They're in an underground base deep in these caves. You got it. Go back to my base at the sheriff's station, and I'll come meet you when I've rescued your buddies. Also, your old leader is there in jail. Sorry about that. On days 67 to 70, I traveled deeper into the caves in search of the underground base. If I could find more of the werewolf's gang, that would be even more deputies to fight with me. Look at me, turning outlaws into good guys. Mayor Earth Golem would be so proud of what a great sheriff I'm becoming. Before I could celebrate my progress anymore though, I spotted a Nightwalker mage holding another group of little Kato's prisoner. Those must be the rest of the gang they were talking about. How can I get them out of here? He looks pretty dangerous. I don't know if I can fight him and make it out. I started looking around for a way to sneak by the Nightwalker mage, but I couldn't find anything. I guess I'll have to be brave and try to fight him, even though I'm scared. I thought about my friends and how they'd all faced so much danger with me so far. If they could do it, so could I. I attacked the Nightwalker mage and he flew into the air to dodge my attack. This looks like a job for my vine lasso. I tossed it at the Nightwalker mage and caught him. I pulled him back down to the ground and while he was trapped, I attacked him with my sword. He broke free, but not before I got a good hit in. The Nightwalker mage teleported behind me, but I spun around and got him again. It was a pretty intense battle, but eventually I was able to win with the help of my vine lasso and my shiny new diamond sword. Thank you, stranger. I'm no stranger. I'm the sheriff. Oh no. Are we under arrest? No, I'm here to save you. Go back to my base at the sheriff's station. Your friends will be there and you'll see that everything is going to be okay. On day 71 to 74, I traveled to a river to try out some fishing. I hadn't done it before and I wanted to get good at it in case I needed to catch a fish in a hurry. As I was walking along the river, I saw a strange message on the ground. If you're enjoying this adventure, find more Zozo videos by searching for Zio Zio. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Hmm, that's pretty weird. Anyway, back to fishing. I caught a few fish and I was feeling pretty good about myself. But then, Gary the Guster showed up. Sheriff fishing on the job, eh? 
Should be out there mining for my diamonds if you want that village of yours to survive. Why can't you just leave us alone? I will, once you give me what I want. That's not fair. Life ain't fair. We rushed at each other, and I pulled out my sword and my vine lasso. You think you can lasso me like cattle? I'm no cowboy. I tried my best, but it wasn't enough to defeat him. I didn't want to run, but I needed to stay alive to get stronger and to help my friends. So I turned, and I ran all the way back to my base. Next time, I'll be ready. On days 75 to 78, I got to work on my base again. Now that I know how strong Gary is, after trying to fight him again, I know we need to make the base even better. Byron had a great idea for how to improve it. What if we build an underground bunker? Somewhere we can hide out if we need to, if he comes to attack us before we're ready. Perfect! I got to work building the bunker, and before long, we had a great big underground hideout to go to if Gary attacked before I was strong enough to beat him. After I was done, some of the little Kados from the werewolf's gang came up to me with a book. It's the magic book to help you get bigger and stronger. Wow, thank you! I tried some of the magic from the book, and sure enough, I grew bigger and gained more hearts. What an amazing gift! They really are good guys after all. On day 79 to 84, I decided to test my new strength on some mobs. I went out into the desert with my sword and my lasso and found some skeletons to fight. Taste the lasso, boneheads! I rounded them up and took them all out. After I defeated the last of the skeletons, a desert lord came up to me. Is he going to try and fight me too? But to my surprise, he gave me a gift instead. Thank you for getting rid of the skeletons. They've been making so much trouble here. As the lord of this desert, I present you with this sharpness enchantment, which will increase the power of your sword. Awesome! So now I'm stronger, and my sword is stronger too. This is great! On days 85 to 89, I came back to the base, only to find it under attack by an army of zombies. Of course, this has got to be the work of Gary the Guster. There were so many of them, it would be dangerous to get close. Thankfully, I had some of the javelins I made earlier. You're about to find out why you don't mess with the sheriff, zombies. I threw javelin after javelin until I had the zombie gang on the run. With the help of the rest of my deputies, we were able to run the undead outlaws out of town. But it wasn't just my base they were interfering with. The zombies were causing trouble all over town while I was gone. One of the villagers ran over to me and told me that while the zombies were ransacking the town, they took one of his chickens. Don't worry, villager. I'll have that chicken back to you safe and sound. I chased the remaining zombies out into the woods, and I saw the chicken running along with them. That must be the villager's chicken. But the zombies had such a head start now. I didn't know if I could catch up to them in time. Wait, the javelins can come in handy here too. With a few well-placed throws, those zombies were done for, and the chicken was free. Come on, little chicken, let's get you back to your owner. I brought the chicken back to his owner, who was so happy to see him. The villager thanked me for getting his chicken back, and felt terrible that he didn't have anything to give me as a reward. Don't worry about it, the only reward I need is knowing I did a job well done. On days 90 to 94, I followed the trail of zombie footprints and destruction, until I finally found a cave with a sign out front. Get out of these parts or face the wrath of the Guster Gang. This has got to be it, their secret hideout. I better check it out. I snuck into the cave and saw that it was empty, except for one strange figure standing there, like he was waiting for me. Who are you? I'm the Soul Leader, and I'm here to make sure you don't mess with the boss's plans no more. Why would you work for him? What he's doing is wrong. He's hurting so many people, all because he's greedy. Nothing wrong with a little greed. It's a doggy dog dog world, Sheriff. We're all just trying to get fed. But isn't it better to be nice, to help others, and know that they'll help you in return? What kind of sucker helps people? That ain't this kind of down. But it could be. Enough chatter. Turn and draw your weapon, Sheriff. I drew my sword and my vine lasso, ready for a fight. After all of my recent experience, I was feeling pretty good about it. But when the Soul Eater rushed at me, I knew I was wrong. This wasn't an ordinary fight. He was incredibly fast and strong definitely the toughest fighter of the Guster Gang I had met so far. I didn't have much time, I had to think fast. I ran backwards away from him and pulled out a javelin. Let's finish this! On days 95 and 97, I continued battling the Soul Eater in the Guster Gang's secret cave hideout. It was pretty close, but putting some space between us and throwing a javelin helped me to do some crucial extra damage and get the advantage I needed. While the Soul Eater was recovering, I tied him up in my lasso and rushed him with my sword. Oh, this can't happen. You're weak. I'm strong now. With the Soul Eater beaten and not going anywhere, I decided to look around the hideout for anything I could use. Hey, a battle axe. 
Awesome! You're coming with me. I turned back to the Soul Eater. And so are you. Let's get you back to the jail, and you can start talking. I took the Soul Eater back to the sheriff's station and put him in the other cell there. Tell me what you know about Gary the Guster. Fine. I can draw you a map to the diamond castle he's building. Is that what you want? Yeah, that would be great. Then you'll let me go? Only if you promise to try being a good guy. If it gets me out of here, then sure. Here, Sheriff. No tricks. It's real. Now I knew exactly where to go to get Gary once and for all. On day 98, after I got the map from the Soul Eater, I decided to walk around my base and check in on everything. All my new deputies were doing great, settling into their duties. As I was seeing what the deputies were doing, I heard someone come to the door. It was Rhonda, and she had a bunch of baby roadrunners with her. Children, this here is Sheriff Sozo. He helped me get back to you when you were still eggs in the nest. I owe him a lot of thanks. Oh, Rhonda, I'm so glad you and your babies are doing well. You're a hero, Sheriff Zozo. Never forget that. Next, Byron came to talk to me. Sheriff, it's been an honor to be your deputy. Thank you for giving this old bison a chance to help save my village. Take this potion of strength as a token of my appreciation. Thank you so much, Deputy Byron. Mayor Zeus stopped by to see me next. I never thought I'd be a mayor, but you believed in me. I believe in you too, Zozo. Don't forget, fellows like Gary are driven by greed and nothing else. Friendship and goodness are so much stronger, and they'll win in the end, every time. Remember that. It seemed like everyone believed in me, and with amazing friends like these in my corner, Gary wouldn't stand a chance. On day 99, I followed the map I got from the Soul Eater. It was now or never, with only one more day left before Gary would come to collect his ransom. There was no way I was going to let him destroy the village. As I was walking there, a pigeon flew by overhead. Huh? You can do it, Zozo! Thank you, Pigeon! I reached a massive castle made of diamonds, surrounded by zombies and skeletons. He has this many diamonds already, and he wants even more? This guy's the worst! There were so many enemies outside, I wasn't sure if I could take them all on by myself. But then, my trusty Deputy Byron the Bison showed up! Didn't think I'd let you do this without your first deputy, your right-hand man, did you? Day 100, Byron and I fought our way through the zombies and skeletons and headed into the Diamond Castle. There were so many of them, it was a miracle we got through. How can this guy afford to pay all these goons and build a Diamond Castle? We've got to keep fighting, Zozo. We're almost there. You're right, Byron. We can do this. Inside, Gary the Guster was sitting on top of the Diamond Throne. Well, well, well. Look what the cat dragged in. We're here to end this, Gary. Your reign of terror is over. Well, ain't that a hoot. Listen, little sheriff, you can't fight the wind. I'm a force of nature, and I ain't going nowhere. Too bad. We're here to shut you down. I pulled out my trusty vine lasso and got ready to wrangle Gary. But before I could, he threw sand in my eyes and I dropped it. I couldn't see what I was doing. I'll be your eyes, Zozo. Dodge the left. He's gonna attack. I listened to Byron and dodged. It helped me avoid Gary's hit. Hey, that's cheating. Blinding people before a fight is cheating, Gary. And Gary didn't let up. I could feel the force of his mighty winds trying to blow me away. But Byron was still there to help. Rush at him with your sword. Straight forward. You can't do this dance forever, cowboy. I don't have to. What in tarnation? I rushed at Gary with my sword, and Byron ran at him too. Together, we dealt one huge blow, and Gary dissolved. He was gone. Is it really over? It's really over. Let's say you and I get back to the town and rustle up some celebratory grub. That sounds good to me. You make a darn good sheriff, Zozo. And thanks to us, Gary the Guster and the Guster Gang would never hassle another town again. On day one, I spawned in as a fire spider. Oh cool, I got eight legs and four hearts. But whoa, I'm not a regular spider, I'm a fire spider. That means I have to avoid water no matter what. I should probably look around. I started testing out my new abilities. I can jump high, run super fast, and climb up walls. Woohoo! Just as I was jumping from tree to tree, a swarm of tarantula hawks started to attack. Ah, where did you come from? Quickly, I jumped off of the tree and started running away. But these guys were fast. They even took out some of my hearts. Ouch, I need those. Realizing that I couldn't outrun these guys forever, I decided I needed to fight. I wonder if I have something that could help me fight these tarantula hawks. Just then I looked into my inventory and saw I had an item, web shot. Throw at your enemies to attack or stun them. This should work. Quickly, I put this ability into effect and started throwing webs at the tarantula hawks. Whoa, this is awesome. I managed to bring down several of the tarantula hawks with my web shot until there was only one left. He quickly fled before I could take him down. Ha, and stay out you flying fiend. I proceeded to look around a little more before I decided to call it a night. On day two, I woke up hungry and decided to make my first web. I placed it in the tree and waited. 
Soon, I caught a fly. Mmm, tasty. Then I went and took a look around. I stumbled upon a hole in the ground and decided to check it out. Maybe I can find some more fire spiders here. Well, I couldn't find any more fire spiders. I managed to find some stone, but I couldn't mine it because it required tools. I better go get some resources. Just as I was about to leave, a bunch of badgers started to attack. Ah, hey, what's the big deal? These guys were tough, but I managed to fling web shots at them and managed to defeat them. They dropped some loot in the process. I picked up a stone pickaxe and sword. Oh, these will come in handy. With the pickaxe, I mined the stone and even found some iron that I could use for later. Wow, this hole is great. After checking to make sure there were no more badgers, I decided to set up camp in the hole. After clearing out some space, I set up a little place for myself and even started to build other houses just in case some more spiders were to come. On day three, I climbed out of the hole and started gathering wood from the surrounding trees. Just as I was about to bring down one of the trees, I heard a noise. Hey, stop that down there. Suddenly, a pigeon flew down from the top. What do you think you are doing? Oh, sorry, I didn't know anyone was living in this tree. Well, there is. You can't just go around destroying everything you see like some kind of barbarian. I didn't mean any harm, I promise. He sighed. Just be careful next time. Just as the pigeon was talking, a falcon came out of nowhere and started to attack. Oh no, not this guy. You better run, little fire spider. Instead, I used my web to attack the falcon and knock him out of the sky. Oh, thank you so much. That falcon has been attacking me and my friends for a long time. You're most welcome. I'm always looking for ways I can help. Why was he attacking you? He is a servant of the Lizard King, the evil ruler who enslaves animals with fear. Oh no, that's terrible. This Lizard King sounds like he's a real handful to deal with. My name is Percy, and I would be happy to help you with anything you need. Thank you, I could use help. You know, I have a place that you and your friends can stay to keep away from falcons. It's underground, and I'm still building it. Would you like to come? Most of the time, pigeons don't like living underground, but that sounds like the safe idea. On days four and five, I helped Percy put together some houses for him and his friends. This place is going to look great, Zozo. A safe haven away from the Lizard King. You're right. I'm going to have to see if I can get more critters out of danger. I also don't know where any fire spiders are. Well, in the meantime, I will stay here and continue working. Before you go, I wanted to give you this. Percy gave me some iron armor and a sword made from the iron I had found earlier. I thought it best for your journey. Take care, my fiery spider friend. Thanks, Percy. I will return. Soon, I was off to find the Lizard King, when all of a sudden, the tarantula hawk I fought on the first day returned with even more of his friends. We shall have our revenge on you. They all started swarming me with their stingers. Ouch, leave me alone. With the new sword, I managed to defeat most of the tarantula hawks, but the main tarantula hawk was heading right for me. I will defeat you and take you to the Lizard King myself. He was tougher to beat than the other tarantula hawks. I even took some damage from him. You may be strong, but I won't be defeated. Dodging his blows with my speed and jumping ability, I kept on striking him until at last he was defeated. As he disappeared, he dropped some bronze armor as well as a beaker of poison. If I'm going to come in contact with any more of the Lizard King's minions, I'm gonna need this. On day six through eight, I continued my journey to find the Lizard King. Along the way, I managed to find a village. Hello, anyone here? I went through all the buildings, gathering supplies where I could find them, but could not find anyone. How could an entire village just vanish like this? I started hearing what sounded like voices from one of the center buildings. Maybe there are some villagers still here. After following the voices, I discovered who was in the building. It was the Lizard King. He had on a huge crown and had big red eyes. Yikes, those are gonna haunt my nightmares. Gathering up what courage I had, I charged towards the Lizard King. Hey, why are you being so cruel to all the creatures of this land? They just wanna live peaceful lives, free from bullies like you. The Lizard King looked at me with those red eyes. The tiny fire spider who defeated my tarantula hawks. You will pay for your actions, attack! Then all of a sudden, the floor started shaking and from out of the ground spawned a giant desert centipede. Uh-oh, this could be bad. The centipede was strong. It had over 20 hearts and it was quick. It's a good thing I can jump and climb or this thing would surely take me out. Then I remembered I had the beaker of poison and prepared to use it on the centipede. Just as I was about to use it, the centipede attacked and knocked the beaker out of my hand, shattering on the floor. Oh no! The centipede grabbed onto me, shaking me around with its mandibles and shaking the hearts out of me. This is not good. Just as I was about to lose my last heart, the Lizard King commanded he let me go. That's enough. I still need subjects to rule. You really thought you could defeat me? Huh. Come back again when you are worthy. <laughs> that fight did a lot of damage to me, and all of a sudden, I blacked out. On days 9 and 10, I awoke to a different location. It looked like one of the houses in the village, only it was really damaged and there were webs on the walls. Ah! Spiders! Oh, wait, I'm a spider too. I climbed around the damaged house to see if any more spiders were around. Hello? Any other spiders around here? Regular or fire type? Any will do. Or anyone? Preferably ones who don't want to squish me? 
I looked around a little more and eventually I spotted what appeared to be a small, normal spider. Hey, where am I? Oh good, you're awake. It's good to see you up. Where's the Lizard King? Where's the centipede? You fought the Lizard King and his centipede? It's a miracle you're still alive. When I found you, they were both gone. I was really worried you weren't going to wake up, but couldn't not help a spider in need. We brought you here to look after you. We? Who's we? Well, me and my brothers and sisters. Huh? Brothers and sisters? There's more of you? Oh yes, at least 700. We live in dark, shadowy areas near here, under the protection of Daddy Longlegs. Would you like to meet him? Sure. Oh, and what's your name? Marcy. I'm a jumping spider. Indeed. Lead the way, Marcy. On days 11 to 12, Marcy led me to a secret passageway where we climbed down into a dark hall. Through the hall, we came upon the cave of Daddy Longlegs. It was surrounded by several different spiders of all different types and sizes. Daddy Longlegs, here is the fire spider who fought the centipede. He has healed and wishes to meet with you. Proceed, good spider. I am Zozo, and I come to help fight against the evil of the Lizard King. You are indeed brave, Zozo, but I am afraid the Lizard King cannot be defeated. Huh? What do you mean? How can he not be defeated? He controls the predators of the animal kingdom, forcing us spiders to live underground. Any attempt we have tried to fight against him, he takes out numbers of us. I'm afraid it's too risky for our survival. I understand your concern, Daddy Longlegs, but we cannot keep living in fear. Someone has to do something. If nobody else will, then I will. But I know together we can do better, be stronger. Some of us might be squashed in a moment, but surely he can't stop all of us. Then I could hear Marcy cheering from the back. Huzzah! Huzzah! Her cheering led to all the other spiders starting to cheer as well. Huzzah! Daddy Longlegs looked convinced and agreed to help me. All right, Zozo, you have made your point. I will send some spiders to help you on your journey. Perhaps we truly can defeat the Lizard King. Three spiders volunteered to help me on my quest. First was Taylor, a massive tarantula. <laughs> yeah, dude. Then there was Bruno, an orb-weaving spider. Do you need a web? I got a web. It's a nice web. Did I tell you about my web? This guy really likes his web. Yeah, man. Finally, there was Scarlet. She was a black widow. I can turn anyone's life into a tragedy. Well, I hope that will come in handy for us. Nice to meet all of you. Together, let's take this guy down. On days 13 to 15, we arrived back at my whole base. I didn't know how Percy and his friends were going to take there being more spiders, so I proceeded with caution. Hello, Zozo. Hey, Percy. Wow, you got a lot of work done. This base is looking even better than I thought it could. Thanks. I managed to convince some other birds and animals to come make this the new home. You've done great. Hey, I wanted to tell you something. Sure. What is... Oh, more spiders. What the? What are these animals doing here? They look tasty to me. Yeah, dude. Before this tension was to become a battle, I had to calm down both sides. Listen, in order for us to defeat the Lizard King, we must stay strong together, no matter what species we are. Also, no eating the birds. Yeah. All right, sorry. After that was over, I managed to get everyone working together to create a giant statue of our hero. I hoped it could be seen as a symbol of justice and goodness for all walks of life. Can you tell what we're building? On days 16 to 19, I got a chance to meet all the new members of the base. Hey, how are you? Good to see ya. Welcome. I even ran into some unexpected guests. Oh no, the badgers again. Wait, we're sorry for attacking you earlier. We just didn't have any other place to go. We saw how you built this place and your friend Percy said it was okay for us to stay. So wait, we're all on the same team? Yep, we're also really sorry for attacking you earlier. It's all right. I guess I can understand you being scared of someone trying to harm you. Welcome to the base. I have said that no matter our differences, we've got to work together to defeat the Lizard King. Thank you. Just as I was going around meeting new people, I saw Marcy run in looking for me. I am delivering gifts for you for your journey. These are from Daddy Longlegs. Marcy presented me with a new silver armor and sword with a special ability, poisonous attack. Wow. What would I do without you and Daddy Longlegs? This will be great for my journey. Thanks, Marcy. You're welcome. Say, this place is pretty nice. Do you think I can tell the other spiders about it? Sure. It's not quite finished, though. But maybe when I'm done, you guys can come see it. There's a lot of you, so I've got to make sure everyone is really impressed. Deal! On days 20 to 22, Taylor, Bruno, Scarlet, and I were off to catch the Lizard King. On the road, Scarlet spotted some signs up ahead. We should be careful. It looks like we are entering into the realm of the ants. Ants? Are they dangerous? They attack in numbers and can overwhelm any creature bigger than they are. Even someone like Taylor? Yeah, dude. 
well then we will definitely be cautious. I can't imagine anything worse than being dogpiled by a bunch of creepy crawlers. We scoured around for a bit, when all of a sudden a giant zombie praying mantis arose from under the ground. Gosh, he must have been attacked by the ants. Those guys are vicious. Yeah, now we gotta put him out of his misery. Bruno started making a web net to trap the praying mantis in, and Taylor threw it over to the mantis, trapping him. I think we got him. Just then, the mantis started tearing his way through the web net. Don't worry guys, I got this. I jumped toward the praying mantis and started using my new sword. Say your prayers now, mantis. Within a few strikes, he was finally defeated, and I felt something inside me start to change. I increased in size and even had more hearts. My attacks felt stronger too, infused with even more fiery goodness. On days 23 to 26, we finally got to the ant hill. We need to be cautious. The ants could attack if we are spotted. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not interested in becoming a zombie fire spider today. Just then, a fireball flew overhead. It was the ant guards, and they were shooting at us with trebuchets. Ah, oh, talk about fire ants! All of a sudden, Bruno started working on what appeared to be a giant slingshot. Oh, great idea! Scarlet had some TNT, as well as some flint and steel. We decided that would work perfectly for returning fire. Bombs away! We took out the trebuchet and sent the ants running into their hill. Way to go, team! On days 27 to 31, we decided to go inside the hill. Wow, these guys have been busy. Inside, we found a lot of cool items that I could use for the compound and the statue. Glowstones, I can use these. As we journeyed deeper into the caves, we saw a hidden message on the wall. Subscribe? Huh, that's not a bad idea, honestly. Yeah, dude. A little further, and we began to see what appeared to be a story by the ants. Apparently, the queen ant was tricked by the lizard king, and now he has a puppet queen acting for him. That's terrible. These ants should not be under the control of a puppet ruler. We need to do something. All of a sudden, something occurred. Ants began to crawl out from the walls. Get back! I mean it! No matter how hard we fought, the ants were too numerous, and they captured us. On days 32 to 35, the ants led us to the deeper parts of the ant hill. Where are you taking us? I kept trying to talk to them, but they would not respond. It was as if something was wrong with them completely. Hello, can you hear me? Eventually, we came to what I suppose is their throne room. The queen ant sat there looking sinister. Spiders? How disgusting! You will make a fine specimen for the Lizard King. Though my children and I are getting hungry. I'm getting pretty tired of creatures telling me they want to eat me. How about I give you something to eat instead? I looked up and I could see what looked like a chandelier made of glowstones. I fired a web shot at it and the whole thing started to come crashing down. No, not the chandelier! I fell hard onto the queen ant, squishing her. Whoa, what a way to go. On days 36 to 39, we began leaving the hill. The hill was even bigger than I remembered, as we wove through many different hallways. We got lost more than once. Man, how could one place look the same at every turn? When we finally decided on a place to go, more ants came toward us. If we couldn't get out, we'd be in real trouble. Stay back, we're armed! Well, technically lagged. No, please don't hurt us, and we don't want to hurt you. Okay, well then what is it you do want? We are servants of the true Queen Ant. When you defeated the other queen, we finally freed her, and she wanted to thank you. Well, that's very nice of her. I'm glad she's back on her throne. Feel free to come back anytime. If you have any questions, please let me know. I did have one question. How do we get out? Oh, right. You go up, make a left, and climb out of the big hole in the top. Okay, that seems simple enough. Thanks. No problem. You can climb, right? A uh, spider. Oh, <laughs> right. On days 40 to 43, we thought it would be best to get back to the compound and put these glowstones to good use. Percy was doing a great job building places for the new creatures finding out about this place. If there is one thing we birds know, it is how to make a nest to come home to. You're doing great, Percy. I also thought these could come in handy. Glowstones, excellent. It was starting to look a little dark here. Right away, we got to work using the glowstones to create light fixtures around the compound. I also made sure that these were built strong enough so that no one could get hurt if they were damaged. The last thing we'd want is for there to be another queen ant situation. No one likes to get smushed. When a spider builds something, it is made to last. Also when birds, badgers, and other wildlife chip in on the building, it definitely helps in the long run. On days 44 to 50, I continued working on the statue. I'm really excited about this one and feel like it's coming along really well. Can you tell what the statue is yet? All of a sudden, I could see a little jumping creature appearing in the horizon. Marcy, it's good to see you. Oh, Zozo, I'm glad I found you. I have terrible news. Huh? Oh no, what's the problem? The Lizard King attacked the spider base with an army of scorpions. Scorpions? Really? Yes, they are one of our biggest enemies. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. I really didn't think he'd be bold enough to take on the entire spider nest at one time. I'm sorry I couldn't have stopped him from doing this. 
So am I. I wanted to tell you so you won't have to have the same fate. Now we have nowhere safe. Wait a minute. Why don't you all come live at my base? Wait, really? Are you sure you won't mind all of us living with you? Of course not. Besides, us spiders need to stick together. Plus, I've got plenty of room here. There's no limit to the amount of houses we can make for everyone. Ha! Huh, I see what you did there. I better go tell the other spiders right now. Quickly, I got started gathering more materials and supplies to start building for my new neighbors. I took a good long while to gather the stuff and start building, but it was all worth it. On days 51 to 53, all of the spiders arrived. Whoa, there sure are a lot of you. Welcome. Among the spiders appeared Daddy Longlegs, and I went over to greet him. Hi, Daddy Longlegs. I'm glad to see you're all right. You're all welcome here. Thank you, Zozo, for doing this. You have given the spiders and many others hope. It was my pleasure. The spiders sure are honored and lucky to have a protector like you. Oh no, Zozo. I may have been their protector before, but you are their protector now. However, if you need advice, I will always be around. I will definitely appreciate that. I know you've seen a lot of spiders in your day. I'd never be able to lead anyone as well as you have. Afterwards, I introduced Daddy Longlegs and the other spiders to the rest of the compound. They got along pretty well. I love seeing everyone so happy to make new friends. On days 54 to 57, the whole compound got together to start building walls so no intruders could come in. When most of the building was completed, we decided we should celebrate the new compound community. Daddy Longlegs prepared to give a speech. I am truly thankful that we can all live in harmony thanks to our magnificent friend, Zozo. Oh guys, I appreciate that. While Daddy Longlegs kept speaking, no one noticed a group of scorpions sneaking up behind him. Daddy Longlegs, look out! But he didn't hear me, and one of the scorpions stabbed him in the back with a stinger. Oh no, Daddy Longlegs! The spiders began attacking the scorpions while I tried to lead Daddy Longlegs to safety. Just stay here, you're gonna be fine. No, Zozo, it's time for me to go. What? You can't go, it's not over yet. It's okay, Zozo, take care of them all for me. I will. I stayed with Daddy Longlegs until the end. When I checked back, the spiders won the battle. Sadly, it was up to me to share the sad news. On days 58 to 62, the whole compound worked together to build a memorial for Daddy Longlegs. Rest in peace, Daddy Longlegs. You will be missed by us all. I promise I will do what needs to be done. While we were sad at the loss of our friend, we all realized we needed better fortifications. We spent a good portion of the days building up the walls and putting up watchtowers. I was so embarrassed that we were attacked when we thought we were safe. They should protect us, but I just wish I could have done more. Don't go blaming yourself, Zozo. Nobody could have guessed what was going to happen. To take my mind off of all of this, I went back to finish the statue. Maybe this could give us some more hope. Now can you tell who our spider hero is? It's the most famous web slinger of all time. Spider-Man, of course. Just as I completed it, Scarlet showed up and told me a messenger came to see me. We ran to the gate to see it was the ant from the ant hill. Hello, what are you doing here? We heard about your attack. We are sorry for your loss. Thank you. It has been hard for a lot of us. Our queen wanted to give you something for your loss, as well as your fight against the Lizard King. Huh? The ant handed over a wrapped gift and told me to use it wisely. I couldn't wait to see what it was. I will definitely treasure this. Thank you, and thank your queen for me. I shall, and you are most welcome. On day 63 to 66, I opened the package to reveal a bunch of potions. Inside there was a health upgrade potion. I took it right away, and I gained eight more hearts. I took a look at the other potions. Stinger Shock can cause your enemy to be paralyzed and allow you to either heal or attack. Boy, if I ever run into that centipede again, I am gonna use this. I met with my friends and told them that this would be my final mission. Be careful, Sozo. I will. I promise to return. We have lost too many friends for me to fail. Good luck, Zozo. Go end this monster, once and for all. Yeah, dude. I said goodbye to my friends, and then I was off. All I could do was hope that I would see them again soon. On day 67 through 70, I journeyed off to find the Palace of the Lizard King. I first traveled toward the abandoned village where I first fought the centipede. I don't see him anywhere here. While I continued to look around, I spotted what appeared to be an ancient door. Huh, I wonder how long this has been here for. There was an inscription on the door that looked a little faded. I will with water when it rains. When sunlight comes, the water drains. To climb me is to achieve great gains. I quickly realized that it was a riddle and began putting it together. Uh, I got it, a water spout. The answer is a water spout. With this proclamation of the answer, the door cracked open to reveal a chest inside. I opened the box to show a full set of diamond armor and sword. I quickly put them to good use. Yeah, dude. I think I've been hanging out with Taylor a bit too much. On day 71 through 74, I traveled into the rainforest. 
Just as I was scurrying along the ground, a group of howler monkeys started throwing bananas at me. Oh, whoa. Uh, at least it's just bananas. One of the monkeys was huge. He must have been their leader. I started throwing web shots at him, trying to knock him out of the tree. You are not defeating me today. I managed to knock several monkeys out of the trees, forcing them to run away. The big monkey was the only one left. You might be strong, but you won't get me. With one last web shot, I knocked the monkey out of the tree and cornered him. Where is the Lizard King? Where is his palace? The big monkey gestured over in a direction. Afterwards, I went off that way. You know, that monkey looked kind of familiar. Nah, yeah, it was probably nothing. On day 75 to 78, I journeyed along until I came to a river. Uh-oh, it's my old nemesis, water. The river was way too wide to try and jump, and I didn't want to risk falling in, so I decided to build a bridge. I was halfway finished when out of nowhere, who was to turn up but the scorpions again? You guys, I'll make you pay for what you have done. I readied my sword and prepared to attack. This is for Daddy Longlegs. I charged at the scorpions, and they leaped forward to attack me. They were strong, and I could tell they were trying to push me back into the water. But with my new armor, I could hold them off. I'll take you all on if I need to. Then I remembered I had the potion and quickly used it against the scorpions. Take this! The scorpions began to move slower, and I could see their attacks before they could make them. Block, stab, slice, gone! One by one, I took out each of the scorpions. I gathered a new item, scorpion tail, used to attack or intimidate enemies. Also, it can be used as a disguise. When all that was over, I continued making my bridge to get across the river. On day 79 to 85, I finally finished my bridge to cross the river. When I got to the other side, I found that the only way ahead was through a narrow ravine, but the entrance was guarded by two scorpions. Man, these guys are everywhere! While I could have attacked them, I remembered that I still had that scorpion tail in my belongings. I quickly put it on and approached them. La 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 la, just a disgusting scorpion out for a stroll. The guards didn't seem to mind and proceeded to let me through. Well, that was easy. While journeying, I wandered into an open field that looked pretty desert-like. Well, this is a weird place to put a desert. All of a sudden, I heard rumbling and could feel the ground shake. I knew right then what it was. Suddenly, the centipede bursted out of the ground, just like last time, and lunged toward me. It was time to take my revenge. Bring it on, leggy. That centipede was still fast and dangerous, but I was much more confident this time around. Oh, no, you don't. I even used the scorpion tail to make a couple of hits, but it broke in the middle of the fight. So much for disguising myself again in the future. Take that and that. Finally, I took out the potion again and used it for the finishing blows. I'm worthy enough this time. Prepare to be defeated. The potion worked, but the centipede was still quick. Furiously, I used everything I could to finally defeat it. Just then, I started feeling tingly. Ooh, I like this. I changed into a bigger and more powerful fire spider with even more hearts. All right now, Lizard King, prepare to meet your match. On days 86 to 90, I continued on my journey. I was feeling really confident until I realized I had just walked straight into quicksand. Oh, come on, who thinks of quicksand? Suddenly, I started thinking of ways to get out. All of a sudden, I could see Percy flying overhead. Percy, I'm glad you're here. I can see that. How can I help? Maybe you can pull me out, catch this chain and start flying. Good idea. Hit me. I threw the line towards Percy and began flying, pulling me out of the quicksand. Oh, that was close. Thanks, Percy. What are you doing here? I wanted to see how you were. You saved my life so many times before, and I guess I just wanted to repay you in some way. Well, you definitely did that. If it wasn't for you, I would be in a really sticky situation. It can get risky at times, wandering around out here on my own. You are definitely welcome, my friend. I will let the others know of your progress. Just before he left, Percy warned me about something he saw while flying overhead. Be careful, I saw what appeared to be a gang of bullfrogs coming in your direction. They must be heading to the palace of the Lizard King. Bullfrogs, you say? Those things will gobble spiders up in one bite. I'll be sure to look out for them. Thanks again, Percy. Take care. On days 91 to 94, I finally ran into the bullfrogs. Wow, those guys are big. I didn't know bullfrogs could get that big. For the most part, they didn't seem to notice me. That's until one of them apparently spotted me and started shooting his tongue at me. Yuck, I don't need you tasting me. He was strong though. He even took out a couple of my hearts. If I didn't make a move, I was going to be one toasted bug. I can't just keep fighting this guy forever. I knew I had to outmaneuver him, so I jumped into a tree and waited for him to get bored. Luckily, he didn't seem to be the smartest of creatures, even though he was so tough. Serves you right. I didn't come this far to become a spider snack. On days 95 to 97, I followed the bullfrogs to the Lizard King's palace. They might have been strong, but they weren't very smart. They led me right to where I needed to go. Wow, this is gonna be a lot. As I got closer to the gate, I spotted a message written on the palace roof. Subscribe. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Be sure to subscribe and like this video for more content. I go on a lot of adventures and would love to have you follow me on them.
I tried to get through the front gate when a horde of gecko soldiers started to attack. Out of my way. I got a king to fight. I smacked the heck out of them until finally they were all defeated. This guy really loved his amphibians. On day 98, I ran inside through the palace corridors to find the Lizard King. Wow, this place is pretty ornate for a lizard. Hey, that armor looks kind of familiar. Huh? Oh yeah, I almost forgot that I had an adventure as a knight. That was a journey. You guys should definitely go check it out when you are done with this one. Through different rooms, I would occasionally have to battle some of the gecko soldiers. Don't you guys have anything better to do? Despite looking all throughout the palace, I couldn't seem to find the Lizard King anywhere. I was getting disappointed and even losing a little bit of hope. I turned around and I could see what appeared to be the ghost of a long-legged spider. Daddy Longlegs? Is that you? Yes, Zozo, it is I. I told you that I would always be there to help you. Don't give up. You are so close to the end. You're right, Daddy Longlegs. I must continue. I'm scared, though. I'm just a fire spider, and I don't know if I'll defeat the Lizard King. You may be small, but you have the spirit of a giant spider inside of you, and it's time to let that spirit out. I'm going to grant you the power that made me so big. Something started to happen. Magic energy filled the room, and I felt myself changing once again. I transformed into a gigantic fire spider. I had so many hearts now. Thanks, Daddy Longlegs. On day 99, I finally landed in the throne room. The Lizard King sat on his throne with his big red eyes staring at me. Well, well, if it isn't the itsy bitsy fire spider who defeated my minions. Looks like you aren't so small now, but I bet you're still weak. Come to face me at last? I will do what I must. Then you will croak. Just then, he flipped a lever, and the bullfrogs I had seen earlier came in. Oh no, not these guys again! Then I remembered I still had the potion, and was about to use it when one of the frogs grabbed it with its tongue. Guess I'm gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. Using my wall-crawling abilities and spider jumps, I dodged attacks from the frogs and gave them some damage. It looked like my attacks were super-powered with fire strength now. Soon, all the frogs were defeated, though I could swear I missed one. Now it's just you and me, Lizard King. So be it. He charged toward me with lightning-fast speed, giving me strong blows that did cause some damage. You should not have fought against me, Spider. I am the Lizard King. Oh yeah? And how do you taste? What? Just then, the last frog I thought I missed shot his tongue out, grabbed the Lizard King by the tail, and sucked him into his mouth. No! I became hesitant because I didn't know how the frog was going to respond. Hey, you're that frog I fought with earlier. I'm sorry for hurting you. Truce? The frog just looked at me, then suddenly spat up the Lizard King's crown. He croaked, then proceeded to hop away. Well, I guess that means truce. On day 100, I returned to the base to see everyone there, waiting for me. I told them all about what happened with the Lizard King. Wow, I didn't even know frogs could eat lizards. Neither did I. Guess he learned something new every day. Zozo, I'm glad you've returned. Yeah, dude. The Lizard King is defeated. Now we're free. This would not have been possible without you, Zozo. Thank you, from all of us. Now we can go back to living our lives in peace. And now we have a new home for spiders of all walks of life. Then there came a commotion at the gate. Huh? What's going on over there? Suddenly, a loud croak could be heard. Frog! No, wait. I think I know him. Turns out, it was the frog from earlier. Come by to say hello. I'm glad you could come by. Just one rule. No eating anybody. The frog agreed, and I proceeded to introduce him to everyone. This had been quite the adventure.